morning to you, Cod fans. It's the final day of the online qualifiers, and today we lock in our bracket for the Major 2 tournament in Miami. First up, it's the 100th oh, match of the season. The LA Gorillas have one final shot to salvage anything out of this split, but they'll have to go through the juggernaut Atlanta phase. Next, Boston Breach hope the luck of the Irish is on their side today and position to land in the winner's bracket with a win over the surge. And it's the clash of the Titans in our monster matchup. Optic Texas versus the New York Subliners, both undefeated at 6-0. They face off tonight for bragging rights and the top seed in Miami. It's all coming up right now on the Call of Duty League. Class by the thief. What a brilliant moment for the newcomer on this Boston Breed squad. I don't have a clue as to how he's managed to survive. Shanti versus the world. It's going to be the most unbelievable turnaround. They've managed to pull it away. The ultra, no hope. What a round. seconds to go you've got to be perfect here from optic texas they need to get across pretty much unscathed into the point we go there's still potential here from optic i think i might hear a cruise missile in the sky i think awakening might have gone on this spree right now but no control and no dice three players on the point the app the extra kill it's a 3v3 gotta go you gotta go if you're rocket you're locking it down if you're optic texas make it one kill from shotzi lins can he find the clean up here it's dashi to find one more can they lock it in in time it's a three versus 12 in the end from optic Round number five goes their way. Head in your hands moment for Rocker. Series on our hands now. Optic Texas. Send us to a map for. Welcome in, ye lads and lasses. We've got a great day of Call of Duty coming your way. Chris Bug alongside Anthony Wheeler are here in the middle. It's Rosalie Parker, and she's going to tell you why Optic doesn't suck. Well, they don't suck because they got really good at search and destroy. That was so good. Thanks, that was man. really good. I, I've been working on that in my closet for a little bit. Uh, let's <laughs> talk about the games we got today. We've got two unbeaten teams with 6-0 records facing off to find out who takes home that number one seed. That's coming up at 6 o'clock, and it features this squad, a team that was down two games to Minnesota. That final round of control, they started their clutch-up series, and it was one of many. They have been on a perfect run coming into today with a flawless 6-0 record. Yeah, since that reverse sweep, it has just been all optic tech. Texas. But I will say, even though the search and has been getting better, their hard points are still looking a little bit wonky. They lost both of them to Toronto. And I think the reasoning behind that is because they were forced to play a three lane map in Skid Row. So it gives these teams a little bit of hope in some of these series. Yeah, I mean, aside from that match, their hard points have been pretty good. I, I love what I've seen from these guys. I mean, the goal throughout this stage for Optic Texas was to fix the search and destroy. It's what held them back in stage one. They could have very well found themselves in a championship match. And now they seemingly have figured that out. I mean, you're talking about a team that couldn't retake or win in a man down situation that's now top four in the league in that same regard and now they also get bombs down at a faster rate top five in the league so these little things that they did so bad have been so much improved that they are a contender for a chip this tournament everybody trying to show they deserve a championship on optic and the same has been true for hydra for a while the world champion goes toe to toe with shotty alley how do you see this gunfight going down i mean this is going to be an absolute battle for the ages and i can't believe we're running out the weekend with this because shotty has single-handed been that guy for Optic Texas during this split. He has been incredibly consistent and making a lot of very clutch play for the reasons they're winning some of these maps. Now, while Optic is 6-0, they've basically played a bunch of teams underneath them. New York Subliners are also at 6-0. The big difference, they were able to take care of Atlanta in a 3-2 three, or sorry, 3-2 game. Optic able to take care of their opposition in Toronto previously. Who's the stronger team right now in your eyes? It's very hard to say. I would probably go with New York slightly because I feel like everybody's performing so well. They've had an easier time in their last two series, just double back-to-back 3-0s. And then versus Atlanta phase, that was such like a trademark win. That's what yeah. they needed, right? You win both s and and you got the number one and number two search and destroy player in the world currently in Kismet and Hydra. Everybody's playing well. Sib's actually leading the team in hardpoint. He's been turning it completely around in the respawn, which is why they picked him up. So for the New York Subliners, it is a perfect storm, and today's their final match. And they've been handing it, handing it to teams. It's been 3-0 after 3-0 after 3-0. The only team that was able to get a map off of them is 
is Atlanta going to that game number five? And it was their search and destroy that won them that series. So it's going to be a battle of that game number two in that series today. All right, New York is looking flawless. They're at the top of the leaderboard, 18 and four in map count. Two games to Atlanta, two games Sheesh. to Boston, and they are perfect everywhere else. As you can see right behind them in our standings, Optic is at number two spot. Phase is at number three. And if Optic beats the subliners, Phase stays there. If the subliners beat Optic, they jump up to that number two seed, Toronto. You're basically set, sitting there at fourth. And this is all on the assumption that Atlanta phase is about to bibbity bop LAG, our worst team in the league. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for calling yeah, that one out. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, Gorillas, zero points so far this stage, going up against a very tough Atlanta team. But another squad that desperately needs points. You see Boston there at seventh seed. They're 12th overall in the league. If you're looking at stage one and two combined, this team only has four wins, 40 points. They're going for a third of their stage, and this could set them on the right track with the winner's bracket start come Miami next week. And it's so confusing, right? Because Boston Breach has been looking so much better. They went to a game five versus Optic Texas, but they get 3 0 by a team like Vegas Siege and, and go to a game five against a team like Minnesota Rocker, who hasn't found any success when it comes to this split. So for Boston Breach, I'm worried they might be playing a little bit down and up to their competition and need to find a little bit of consistency as we head into major two, because we do not want a repeat of their home major where they got. Bibby bopped right on out. Man, was any concerns here for Boston? Do you think Surge has a chance? Uh, yeah, actually, Surge does have a chance. You know, for, for the Boston Breach, I just feel like they've had no opportunity to find a flow. Like, if they were to, you know, come in and get that win versus Vegas, they could have got some momentum, put themselves in a way better spot. But then they had to play Texas and Atlanta, right? Yeah. Those are very tough matchups. They also went to a game five with Texas that they end up ultimately losing. For them, it's been the search and destroy from stage one and into stage two. They're last in the league, and there's a lot that they need to work on there. So for Boston Breach, it's just like hoping today you can come out, beat a team you should beat, get in the winner's bracket, and then finally try to get some momentum going forward. They took that Optic team to a round 11 in search and destroy game five. But if you're looking at the opposition who thrashed Boston, well, it's Atlanta face. A 3-0 beating. Atlanta has been on a heater after dropping an early series to the subliners. This team has rattled off four straight wins, Allie. Four straight wins, and they're all 3-0s. That means they are 3, 6, 9, 12, and 0 right now when it comes to map count in their last four series. They're after that loss to New York in that game five, they have literally just been on a revenge tour. They are not giving any signs of a weakness against any of the teams below them right now. Yeah, this is like Atlanta phase. They're, they're so smart. Even the way that their coaching staff like approaches things, you know, coming into this stage, uh, obviously the search and destroy, it was like not as great as it was in years past. They've worked on that. They've played every hardpoint map every search and destroy map. They've also been dominating on controller undefeated there, 11 and one on defense. So everywhere that you could point to, to where like, let's work on this headed into the major, they have done that while also smoking everybody. So for Atlanta phase, I mean, the preparation is there, right? They've hit the ball. Now it's just where is it going to land when they get to the major? All right, Atlanta looking for their second major two victory in back-to-back -back seasons. Come Miami next week. A BZ and Simp on the short guns. You got the long ones there on Selium and Draws. And if you want to see the short guns and the long guns, you can watch them all in person, Allie. Where do you do it? You scan the QR code. Make sure you see it in person down in Miami. We literally head out in under 42 hours. You guys will be there on the weekend starting Thursday. Make sure you still get your tickets now. That's right. Scan that QR code to join us. Miami Heretics Major 2 Tournament presented by Gamergy. Nameless is going to be there. You can see him in person, touch his hands and stuff. Here's a look at the schedule. We've got three <laughs> matches, including that Monster Energy matchup of Texas Optic versus the New York Subliners. Who will finish with the number one seed? We find out in just a few hours. But coming up next, we got your first battle of the day. Atlanta Phase puts their top three seed on the line, taking on the bottom of the league and LAG. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty Store. Check out all the awesome in-game rewards you can earn for free just by watching the Call of Duty League. What's on tap this weekend? An all-new lineup including a weapon blueprint, emblem, calling card stickers, and XP tokens. Just link your YouTube account now to start earning.
I have a plan. Crazy with the rage, dangerous and rage. Oh, Fuck the fuck, go for one, go for three, go for three. three. I ain't want to take a light, look into my eyes. Oh my I'm God, God. I'm coming for the prize. Do you really want these problems? I put you in that coffin, but I'm one. never tossing. You put this in to stop it. Hungry for the beef, leave you obsolete. See my line deep, see me in the streets. You, you want the heat, yeah. <laughs> Time to get the party started here on St. Patty's Day. We're opening things up with the Battle of Atlanta versus L.A. And it's not the team that won the Battle of L.A. It's L.A.G. taking on one of the best in the game. Let's start here with FaZe. Why is this team so good? And what do the Monster Friends say are the keys to victory here today? Well, I think Ant made a really good point earlier that they are a team that is just getting very in the nitty-gritty of what they need to focus on and work on. And they're getting better without sacrificing any of the other game modes. So when it comes to the Monster Energy pregame, it's only going to be positive things about Atlanta FaZe because there's not much that they need to do at this point. They have an incredibly deep map pool. They're very strong in all game modes. They're on a 12-map win spree. And they need two map wins to hold the record. And the current record is by Cold War FaZe. So they're just Yo, continuously that's pretty dope. Y'all remember Cold War FaZe? Because that's terrifying. <laughs> that's where we're <laughs> headed towards. So, yeah. Yeah, if they set that record, they're going to be feeling good. That is the battle as Atlanta is gearing up. I don't think they need too many tricks to get the job done today, but their opposition might hear Allie. Final thoughts here about FaZe. Is this a trap game? Could they throw uh, it here? I No, I don't think they can throw it here, especially with the way the ARs have been looking on Atlanta FaZe. They've somehow gotten better. All right, speaking of the ARs, we saw a much better matchup out of Assault, but it was still the same result, a beatdown of the Gorillas. Today, can Diamond Con, Fame, Estriel, and Assault, put it together against some of the greats. I'm not even trying to make people laugh. Hell no. They, they, this team is probably headed towards reconstruction after yeah, this major. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, they got to match up their last one versus Atlanta phase, and they're going to go to land and be in the lower bracket. They're 1-15 in, in respawn. They've been terrible there. The search and destroy, I mean, it's been all right. 3-3, three and three, like, they've won a couple of big games there, but it's just not enough. It's not a professional-level team. Uh, LAG, they've, they have fallen apart, lost confidence. So you can see here in our Monster Energy pregame, 1-15 in, in respawn modes. Minus 45.1 average margin in hard point. It ain't even close. One in 13 in control, attack rounds, communications not there. People aren't getting kills. Everybody's negative across all the respawns. Nothing is going right for them. So for today, they need a legitimate miracle. I'm just gonna let that marinate for a moment. <laughs> oh, brutal honesty out of my guy Wheeler to start the day. We got sub base, high rise, high rise, invasion, invasion. Will we get a game five and a chance for LAG to steal a match? Stats say no, but anything could happen here in our qualifiers. The only thing interesting of note here for Atlanta phase, I would say, is the sub base is the only hard point this split that they have not won, and we're kicking things off there. So if they win that, they're gonna feel confident on damn near every map. All right, it's tough here, Scuff. Predictions, I'm gonna get the first pick them in as we are going to make this official across the board. I'm catching up to you eventually, Nameless, but right now this is just my 63rd me? correct you pick. To me too. Where are you at? You're at 67? 64. Six, 64? Am I, okay, I can't see yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll catch up. <laughs> Not worried. Respectfully, uh, I will dye my hair purple if LAG win this series. I'm going Atlanta face. Wow. Atlanta face. You're putting your hair on the I'm line? I'm putting my hair on the line. She's putting her hair on the line. Keeping the face colors or not, it's time to find out. We got shift and study on the mic. Fellas, take it away. Yeah, thanks there, friends. Uh, I, I will say, Pocket, the uh, Irish accent, tippable, to say the least. Very nice. Well done. Well, 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 well way to start the uh, the day. Uh, Jay, I think the desk is absolutely right. This is kind of one of those matchups that for Atlanta, it's just, you know, confidence building. They've only won sub base once, but it was against LAG back in qualifier stage one. So it feels like that should be a pretty casual series for FaZe fans. Yeah, every time Atlanta face those sub base into the map pool, they're trying to test it out versus <laughs> all the lower teams. They never play it versus anyone in the top four. So now you're going up against literally the worst squad so far in stage two. Nothing is going right for the Gorillas. We're talking about a seven game loss streak in hard point, six in a row for control. You taught, you heard it from the desk. They cannot win a damn respawn. And if you're playing against Atlanta face, it's not going to be easy, but you know, 
it can't get any worse. You can only go up from here. So that's the thing you got to ride on if you are the Gorillas. You got local area network coming up next week where they were able to get a nice little placing at Boston. So anything can happen. You just got to get some, some kind of confidence to stand on in this match. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just to kind of throw a little bit of sunshine over towards LAG, at least Destrial's been a really positive spot for this squad since he's been on the squad. He's holding the best KD on the team. It's nothing to write home about here in this stage, just a .96, but that in itself is already way better uh, than the rest of his teammates. So some options there when it comes down to, like, trying to, you know, see what this evaluation process is going to look like for LAG. Uh, this matchup is one of those I think you're just trying to, again, like, get the fundamentals back down, see if you can find a couple of positives to take away because, you know, being candid, this this should be a cruised map here, or series rather, for the Atlanta phase. So, see how things go. LAG in the white, Atlanta phase in the respective red. And it will be kind of a little scuffle over towards the water ramp just to get things started here for phase. And it's all going to be about these fights right early on over towards the P1 side. And Atlanta phase coming out on top in all the engagements besides one. So Domicon now has his hands full. Great shots to take down Celium. This is a guy who I wanted to put a lot of focus on. Because throughout stage one, he was their best player. He was always putting up the numbers. But in the last series that I watched him play, pretty sure he had one map where he put up 1,300 damage. That's not the DC that I know. And he's already turning that page starting off 4-0. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, you know, we watched Diamond Con in the past. He had a great stint whenever he was playing through challengers. He also was kind of like a product of a lot of weird situations. You think about that New York team. He came in, filled in for Clayster while he was going on his mental break back in Cold yeah. War. That kept him from being able to compete at challengers champs that year, where he would have, I think, been definitely a part of a championship caliber team so it's just one of those careers that has been very very odd as we rotate over towards p2 phase here first now if you do remember phase really struggled rotating against teams like optic on land in this map and that's got to be their focus today oh yeah main focus is everything on this map we're talking about struggling and holding struggling and rotations and already the holds is not going to be good enough as lag find themselves keeping it contesty in towards the p2 but atlanta phase with the numbers able to reinforce their way back in they find all the kills in the feed and now with only 30 seconds Seconds left. It's start. It's about that time to start getting aggressive up on the map, taking more ground to try to flip those spawns. Yeah, it's, you know, and we'll kind of throw a little diagnosis in towards this. It is just a bit bizarre with this Atlanta face team who has been so good everywhere else. I mean, you talk about their map pool and it's literally differentials of 20 plus points per map. And then you see sub base and on average, they lose it by 70 points. So it just feels a bit bizarre that they kind of have not figured out a solution for this map yet. But a good start. Five in a row here for Sip. Tries to control over towards Snop Snow. Not going to go to find the kill. And that at least alleviates LAG from having to deal with an early cruise missile. Yeah, and now if you are LAG, you are in an opportunity to get some much needed time. The rest of Atlanta phase are just roaming around the middle of the map, trying to take those power positions through bottom tunnel, through top snow. And as long as you take care of Dross and the guy who's trying to flip those spawns, you're in a great setup. As DC is able to find two, now you just got to cut down the rest of Atlanta with their all spawning all the way across the map. This has been a great hold from LAG. Yeah, yeah perfect 30 seconds to this point. Zellium, the next contestant. Fame trying to shrug off a stun, and they will not be able to read Zellium playing over towards that little front office. So Faze, a chance now through mid-map. Trying to contest this hard point from the front. Spawns are staggered for both teams. So really, it's just not what can Assault do on the old time. Not too much, just finding one elimination. Faze will spawn, and that will gift them the back 15 seconds. Oh, yeah, they're going to walk away with that final 20, and LAG would just step ahead off the rotation, making sure a couple players are able to ease their way out through warehouse side. Now you're going into a P4, which is very, very difficult to try to break on in. But when you're getting kills off the rotation, it's going to be a lot easier now because Assault spawns all the way across the map. The trade comes in on Estrio. Now all of Atlanta phase are already by the hill. Yeah. And you've got it easy. Popping up through the water. Should have two in front of him. Turn, though, from Diamond Con. Okay. Moment of recovery here for LAG. They do still spawn in. But a couple of elimination through mid-map means that FaZe can quickly get on their move towards trying to break this from the front. Draza over towards the backside ramp at P2. Tough gunfight with Fame. A lot of the environment getting in the way from Draza being able to lock every shot needed. And with that, LAG have been able to reinforce. Now it just comes to can they find the eliminations to actually hold this. And Estriel Deep will make life a little bit easier for the players in and around the hard point. Celian trying to find the final shots, but Estriel gives him a battle back. And here we go for LAG. This is perfect. This is a perfect response. This is why you rotate early. You set yourself up for that next money ill, and you get a full 60 off the response. And now Atlanta phase are on the back foot because you had a couple players who were able to spawn close towards that next hill, but the read comes in from Jaza. He's able to take down two from top warehouse. And now if you are fame, you just got to wait. Wait for your teammates to get into the play. Probably get a couple kills to make it easier. But LAG, they're blowing this game wide open, man. They're up currently yep. by 30, and if they can get a nice early break onto Atlanta phase here. Atlanta phase now have to start actually playing god phase playing a little bit of a different setup here though around p5 mostly trying to flush out the salt selling has got deep over 
over towards stacks and off spawn lag will get the isolated to find the kills now you got a 2-2 split look at the minimap lag can hit this from both sides simultaneously fame and estri on one side dc assault the other draws it just looking for a corner to hide it he's got good cover from selium but that's the only cover he gets lag using that split spawn setup as a way to break through early it's still 25 seconds to play for this is perfect man you use that split spawn you get blessed with one and you make it count so now can you hold on for the rest of this 20 seconds as they're finding all the kills in the feed i can only imagine sitting at 0 6 the probably the vibes are not going to be there but they're currently in the lead of this hard point let's step aside and go to a listening with the gorillas and i'm not gonna lie i'm walking away from that listening happy as hell because they sound yeah. great lag do not sound like they're a team that's owens owen six throughout this stage they currently were able to find a nice break at p2 and now blow this game wide open atlanta phase playing from the back foot and they are slaying the bits everyone is finding a kill at the right time the gorillas are playing great right now Absolutely. I mean, the breakthrough P2, near flawless, the first attempt. Now you've got an opportunity to get some early time recovered here at the, the last hard point on this side of the map. And look at the spawns, too. Yeah, absolutely. Atlanta kind of staggered at the moment. You've got fame on rotation to new. Individual gunfights not quite going as well as you would have liked if you're LAG, but still you put a lot of pressure on FaZe here. But all things told, a good moment here for Atlanta to start creating some opportunities to come back into this game. Yeah, they're going to walk away with this final 15, but the Gorilla said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We were able to get a flawless hold at P4 by rotating early and putting us on the preferred side. And they're going to give up that final 20 to try to repeat that again. All of Atlanta face trying to break through that water side. You're going to have a BZ slowly trying to work through the warehouse as he's coming off the old hill. But right now, the Gorillas have created layers to where it's going to be very difficult for Atlanta Face to even get close. Hopefully, Draza has a couple of swim routes. Shout out Michael Phelps. Yeah, Draza, he's the only one really left in part of this play. He's stuck in the water. Time to time, a couple of shots come through. Decent response from Draza, but all things told, he's just flat out overwhelmed. Sip now from the outside, looking to try to go up towards top maze. Assault playing from the top snow position. He's already kind of sitting here just safeguarding anyone through the middle of the map. And once again, wow. he just got to walk away and say, LAG's playing this map flawlessly. And it's one of those things that's like almost surprising to see how clean it is considering their record, especially in hardpoint on this stage. Yeah, they've only won one hardpoint, and it was on Karachi versus Optic Texas. Everything else has been a smoke show. They're currently on a seven game losing streak, but you better start playing a lot more sub base. This is how you're going to run and play. Well I know Atlanta FaZe don't play this map, but just the way that they are playing it, easy off the rotations, setting up those layers to create it more difficult for Atlanta FaZe to even get close towards the hill. That's another great hold at P4, and now they're only 20 points away from walking away with map number one. Yeah, sure could. Zip, playing just inside server. 
draws the opposite side of the map just again just trying to make things punishing here for lig before they could even see the hard point and so far it would be mission accomplished first 20 seconds absolutely guaranteed here for Atlanta. now you got a little route coming out of simp who's been running this rival nine i'll say for pretty much the entirety of this map yeah. I haven't really seen him pull an mcw out yet hasn't really needed though 24 and 20 making life tar for this LNG break, but still the kills are good. And now Diamond Con steps on in. That'll neutralize the hard point. And Assault could essentially just play Gatekeeper backside warehouse. And that might be just enough to win this game. As long yeah, as you're able to keep Atlanta phase away from this hill as much as you possibly can. Estrio and Fame wow. combined for three in the feed. 240 has been breached. All four dead. LAG are going to take map one. Wow, dude. I mean, this is... I call it what it is. This is kind of a slamming here from LAG. Yeah. Everyone ends essentially on a streak. A couple players got to four in a row there at the end. And it's just one of those things like, it's not just the fact that the scoreboard at the end of the map is so convincing for LAG. Think about how many times they broke really good looking yeah. setups from Atlanta, man. It just feels like, where has this been for LAG? And you can just tell like Atlanta phase, they don't play sub base and they're probably going to continue not playing sub base because they can't really figure it out. I can tell you yeah. right now, one fix that they got to make, you got to have someone running a third AR. You can't have two rival nines roaming around this map because there's so many power positions that are held by head glitches with those MCWs in hands. It makes it a lot more difficult to even maneuver around. Obviously, Jossa didn't have the best performance in that map number one. Sip's the only one that goes positive, but it was LAG time and time again ahead of the game, starting yeah. off on the better side for the hill. When it, as soon as it pops, but then instant breaks for Atlanta phase. They struggled on rotations on this map. They struggled on holds, and LAGs took advantage of both of those categories, and now we're up 1-0 in the series. That's wild, man. Flat out. I mean, again, I, I, you could go back and take a snapshot of a couple of Atlanta phases setups and just look at it kind of as a freeze frame and say, hey, this is a really good setup. This should work out, no problem, for at least a hold, maybe 40 seconds. And it just never ended up being that way. I mean, the first P2 was solid for Atlanta, but the second time out, it was right during that LAG listening. They break it on their first attempt. And kind of the same thing when it comes down to you get the back docks, LAG respond to a couple of Atlanta's plays, try to open up the spawns around the back. It just felt like they're playing a really complete, very really composed game from start to finish on all fronts. And this is why this map is an issue for Atlanta Bay, because whenever you think about them on any other hard point, it's very easy to get a couple breaks on certain of these hills, besides probably Skid Row. But on a map like Subbase, it's very punishing if you don't find success breaking early on, because yeah. you're spawning all the way across the map. You only get one other opportunity to try to break on in, and if you lose that second opportunity, it's a full 60 to the opposing team. So I think if you are Atlanta Bay, it just has to be a little bit more fundamental play. We have to be the team there early and not rely so much on our breaks and our individual skill because the yeah. teamwork is simply outclassing them on some base. I really want to highlight the fact that you hit the point of the individual skill tally because let's be honest, this is probably one of the most talented teams in the CDL in the question. history of Call of Duty. And let's be candid, a lot of the times that we do see Atlanta pull back tight maps or make comeback efforts, it's off of one of the individuals really taking over. So sub base maybe doesn't give you the same opportunity to have that largely because like you mentioned it is a very clear-cut middle death row if you want to call it right down the middle of the map and if you're spawning on the other side of that it can be tough to break through so yeah you kind of see it here in the game flow chart first p2 good for atlanta second time around also not bad at all but largely speaking the trends and patterns continue to keep popping up in favor of lag yeah, it was both those P4s. When you start off yeah, on a P4, yeah, yeah. you're able to chain that to a P5. Then you get over to the P1, you keep it scrappy. An early break in towards P2. Everything was just going right for the Gorillas. And they also shut down Atlanta Phase from breaking that map count record. It was held by Cold War Phase. And unfortunately, that cut short in that map number one. But now you are forced to respond on a high-rise search and destroy where Atlanta Phase, this is one of their sort of weaker S&D maps because they played it twice recently one was versus miami they go all the way to around 11 they able to clutch on up but then, then the next time they play it was versus the subliners where they got bebop boots clean 6-0 <laughs> so i think if you are in land of phase you obviously want to work work on a couple maps that you don't really play versus these top teams to make sure you're well polished going into the major but i don't think they were expecting them to be down 0-1 in this series so you have to respond here in snd yeah yeah I, I also didn't have you saying bebop boop on my bingo card for today <laughs> but i'm really happy that you have it's just interesting because I, i'm glad that you brought up the fact that this is not really been a beacon of success for Atlanta in terms of their search and destroy, which they've been great at search all year long. But the more curious point is, this is a team that on this map ranks third in opening dual win percentage, first in post plant win percentage, second in retake percentage. So it's just like, how, how are they not winning this map when you're top three in the league in a lot of the major categories when it comes to things like first bloods and being able to play off the bomb in both sides. It's just kind of crazy to think about, you know, especially considering how successful they've been just across almost every other map in search.
surge. Oh yeah, in search, the only team that they're basically losing to is New York and Toronto. Everything yeah, other more, than yeah. that <laughs> is Atlanta Face dominating in search and destroy. So you gotta come out and just work on a couple of things. Obviously, the last time you played this was a clean 6-0. It was multiple first bloods that went in favor of the sub blinders. You cannot allow that to happen today. And then, like you said, when I mean, when you're on the defensive side for Atlanta Face, you just can't allow LAG to get that bomb down for free. Because for them, yeah. they're usually really great at retaking, but sometimes a couple players can play too fast, and the timings are just a little bit off on high rise. So you got to play together if you are Atlanta. All right, there could be something to be said about, yes, they're great at finding first bloods, but maybe we need to see that conversion percentage in 4v3 situations going up just a touch. Here we go. This is a very standard break off for the side of Atlanta phase. Lots of focus throwing nades over towards A. Two players hitting down low towards this bottom blue position. LAG have kind of flushed this out. One nade gets tossed and Assault is watching this the whole way. Yeah, Assault's watching it. He also has great cover fire from SGO as they're going to go for the bait and switch down low. Put their teammates in the man advantage. Fame also finds a freebie onto Selim. It's now a 1v3 left up the sip. Don't put it past him. This guy has yeah. some ice. Slips kind of underneath on one. Looking for the isolation to Estriel. Pistol out. Decent shots, but Estriel gets a little side spin, and that's enough for him to finish off the round. Pretty clean stuff, and I think a lot of that is, again, Assault gets a really good read on that Atlanta push through bottom blue. Yeah, that was just good teamwork from LAG. You hit the early nade onto bottom blue. You get that early info, and then you have the team shots, the crossfire set up through underground. To put yourself in the man advantage, you know, on the, on the first round on high rise, it's very difficult to attack over towards A. You don't have any trophy systems. That pro pay tank might not be your friend on that round. So Atlanta phase did not decide to risk it, and LAG blind countered the hell out of them in round one to be up 1-0. Yep. What are we going to get from the offensive side? Keep your eye on Estriel. Not only has he been one of the beacons for LAG generally, but Search and Destroy has been one of his biggest prowesses in his competitive career. Kind of go back towards like when Modern Warfare 2019 came out, Estriel was still playing Black Ops 4S and D-Chats. So, I mean, this guy was grinding throughout that year before he was eligible to play Challengers, and it's been good for him so far this year. BZ, a little bit of an offer out here defensively, almost gets one, and that's actually enough for Selium to follow up and find first blood. Yeah, that's good stuff from a BZ to at least put a couple shots into fame, set up Selium to find that first kill. So Atlanta phase now in the band advantage. It's already been 40 seconds wiped off the game clock. LAG have barely left their spawn, but they're just waiting if Assault can get any information as he's pushing towards the big defense. Sell taking long range shots and no, did not see Assault at all. So the little pop through almost leads to a second engagement favoring LAG, but it'd be easy there for quickly for the trade. 3v2, numbers advantage for FaZe. Estriel working alongside Diamond Con, both running ARs, you'd assume. And Estriel's in a pretty decent spot here, top heli, but all oh, as he jumps down, him and BZ pass like two ships in the night. Neither player has seen each other, and this may work out for Estriel. He's going to get the information on towards Sip, plus the read onto Abizi down low. Does he isolate the 1v1? Shoulders come through. Abizi! Oh, 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 oh. Impressive shots from the low ground. Secures the round for FaZe. Yeah, you could just tell. Abizi's very, very comfortable in those situations. <laughs> Estriel, oh, probably if he had a rival not, he's a little more confident in that gunfight, but Abizi slide, slide, slippery side. Able to line up the gunfight with the rival nine. And Atlanta phase <laughs> able to respond on the defense. BZ gets it done all around blue. He gets that early shot to set up selling for the first blood, finds a train, the trade around propane take, and then eventually finds the final two kills on the round. So BZ getting activated early. The slide, slide, slippity slide. In my mind, I was actually going to the shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, yam, shimmy, yay. I like that. It's a good one, too. <laughs> We're too old for this broadcast, my guy. First blood for LAG. Abizi kind of forced to have to make a play here now all of a sudden. I mean, if you're going to open this up offensively in a very early 4v3, you need this hit towards A to produce something. Hey, Mike got a read on it, and Fame Whoa. reads it perfectly. As he knows, there was no one up towards the B Street. We already have underground, so they have to be trying to hit out through blue. Fame is not going to slow down. He finds wow. his second, and then his teammates on the right side of the B Street find the final. You find the first flood, you get a read early on on where the pressure is coming in, and then Fame reads that play to perfection. Gets it all done for LAG to secure the round. Dude, this is polished from LAG. Flat out. I mean, this That's is really well constructed. First bloods look good. I mean, that one a little bit different because it's kind of across the map. There's no option for a trade, but hey, they're playing well with numbers. So flat out, this is looking really good for LAG. I just remember LAG throughout stage one. Whenever they played against the top teams, they always stepped up to play against them very, very tight. So that's exactly what I'm expecting here. And so far, they have shown it. Yeah. As they are now up 2-1 in the search and destroy. All our pressure up to the B Street. Another first blood. Great team shot to take down Sim. 
already in the man advantage. And with that left side wow. B Street control, S G is able to find a second as well. I mean, what do you do here in a 4v2? I mean, I mean this, every option is available here. Estriel has not seen the BZ down low, but looks like there may be some communication trying to teamwork him out, and that will work. Selium now left kind of over towards the green tarps. He should get caught on the cross, and I mean, let's just call it what it is here, bud. I, this has been in, in pieces right now for FaZe. Yeah. They're getting absolutely outplayed from the word go every round, it feels like. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Atlanta phase are looking like they're trying to play with no respect. That's two rounds in a row where they're just instantly solo challenging up to the B Street. And you know that at least a couple players from the Gorillas are contesting you every single time on that side. So just giving up that first free kill, you're allowing the Gorillas to take a lot of map control by pushing up the left side, and they also find a second through underground. They're just playing great team Call of Duty right now. Atlanta phase, get it together, baby. Get it together. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say. Draza 1 and 4, Simp 1 and 4. They've also been the byproduct of most of these first bloods from LAG's hands. This time, a little bit more patience coming out from FaZe. Just trying to feel out what this LAG defense wants to do. But kind of the same thing can be said on the other hand. I mean, LAG not really getting too aggressive anywhere. Astral just again playing down low in the pits. And honestly, there's just no options here for Atlanta to find a first blood unless a random nade strikes. Yeah, because LAG are simply not giving anything up. They have yeah. everything cut off. Right street, underground, left side, B plus two. So you cannot work your way up through this A side. You can only try to commit over towards A. I'm pretty sure the Gorillas at least have a couple tacks to contest this, but Diamond Con in a perfect position is able to spot Simp, but all of Atlanta phase are here. Mm. Yeah, that's a little tough. Diamond Con thought he maybe had a first blood for free but then gets kind of isolated, not being able to convert on the kill. So couldn't go one for one fame. Not sure if he really saw much from that bottom blue position. Bomb will be successfully planted at B. Selim follows up with a nice elimination on towards Astral. So trying to retake this into 2v4, both LAG members are going to play this on opposite sides of the map. And while Selim was ready for fame the entire time, last one left assault, and he will be taken care of quickly by Simp. Much better there for Atlanta. There you go. That's teamwork. We're talking about everyone conga lining up through the B Street. You solo out Diamond Con for the first blood, and then you allow Abizi to work that bomb plant and just keep everyone right next to each other to always trade. The fact that Selim also got a read onto fame. <laughs> when he was playing such a nice angle, I'm definitely going to use that in rank play later. It's like, that's just what he does, man. Like, Selim has a beamer on him. Atlanta face secure the round. That just simply comes down to what? Diamond Con getting isolated, not being able to yep. find the first blood for him? and multiple players from Atlanta yeah. phase on that side, not just one. Yeah, true, good point. Okay, so note it could be something we look for next time Atlanta finds themselves on offense, but first have to solve the difficulty, which has been this defensive side. A little bit of aggression here. Draza sit, team working down elevator alley, and then a little bit further, but the propane tank takes care of Draza, also gets tags on towards Sip, so another first blood gets tallied for LAG, and wouldn't you know it, they're already hitting over towards the A side of the map. Yeah, they find the first blood with a great nade onto Draza. Has not had fun so far on high rise, but now LAG flipped the map on its head. You would think Atlanta phase are now on the attack and LAG are on defense, but <laughs> they are just waiting to try to catch a couple players from Atlanta working this deep pinch. It might fall into the yeah. hands of Diamond Con. Cell has seen this rotation, but no one has any idea that Diamond Con was lingering over towards green tarps. Trade from Simp is good. And hold on a second here. This is a very winnable 2v3. Cell continues to get a read on this play from LAG. So as he starts to work back and Simp joins him, well, uh -oh. never mind. Forget it. It's <laughs> <laughs> about to say they're gonna have a really good angle to watch this cross, but not when you fall off the map. Yeah, he had such a good read and he couldn't believe it was so good that he just gave his life <laughs> up for free. So now Simp left in the 1v3. It's gonna check the first kill. Great read onto assault. 30 seconds left, 1v2 now. Tough to break through this. No utility at all. Fame throws a shoulder, surely has seen him. That's real. Yeah, same thing can be said. Clean shots, but Estriel just able to find pieces of Simp before he can duck behind cover. So, yeah, a little bit maybe. Again, I think that 2v3, very winnable for LA. Oh, yeah. Pending, of course, that Selium doesn't fall off the map. It's tough to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simp finds still. If Selium's still alive, it's a 1v1. You know, you like your odds right there if it turns into an Estriel v. Selium. But LAG again. Just open up with that first killer, this time on the Draza. You saw it for Atlanta phase. They made the adjustments. This time it was two over towards B Street decided to try to isolate Diamond Con, but the nade just hit to perfection to shut down that teamwork aspect from Atlanta. Now they're a couple rounds behind. LAG starting to take firm control of this search and destroy. Estriel responding with a great map number one, followed by great map number yep. two so far, sitting at six and two. And they're going right back to Old Reliable. Double yep. child of right street, another first blood in their favor. This is legitimately the same set of three defenses in this map so far for LAG. Decent trade from Simp, but again, the pressures are mid-map. 
keeps the numbers in favor of LIG, and Atlanta just has not had a response for this. Outside of the one round where they were able to isolate Diamond Con because he takes some early shots, this has been LIG dominance defensively. No chance here for Simp. I, I mean, they haven't been able to break this down at all. Bro, I'm telling you right now, Alan, like, how many times you gonna have to learn your lesson to challenge over it. towards B Street? Like, Draza, we've done it multiple rounds now. It's time and con and assault always getting the better of you. Can we try to push blue or some? Let's go underground because B Street is not your friend so far in this map. Wild seats. I mean, flat out, it legitimately has been almost a copy-paste every single defense of what the LG setup is gonna be. I don't know. Maybe this is one of those things we're just trying to figure out what our B hit's gonna look like if we have to play this map, but it hasn't been good, <laughs> tell you that much. And now a wide gap on the scoreboard. LAG have tons of rounds to kind of play with here. And keep in mind, like, this isn't just, you know, take this from Atlanta's perspective. Like, a, a win for LAG really doesn't do much for them in terms of stage two, but an extra 10 points could go a long way towards oh, yeah. playoff things at the end of the year. Yeah, because they're sitting at 50 right now. They were like one of the teams after the Boston event sitting around that mid top eight area. But you want to try to make up those points when you go 0-6 in this stage. St. Fame gets the first blood, <laughs> but Selium with the read able to respond with two. That is a very impressive double from Cell. I think about 99% of the league would have absolutely been traded out right there. Clean shots on the follow from Draza, finally getting himself involved defensively, but that is a save of a play from Selium, who flat out was getting looked at from multiple angles. For him to find the trade, stay at low HP, and then get the second, unbelievable. Yeah, he always, he always figures out a way to win some insane gunfights. So you know when's, you know who's even more shook right now that's currently in the green room in Columbus? Allie, because you heard what she said <laughs> on the desk, right? LAG yeah. win this series, she's dying her hair purple. Oh, Allie, you better lock it in. Dude, I have to imagine she's already on Amazon looking to see what the uh, <laughs> the best at-home die kit looks like. <laughs> we'll find out, though. This map is not over yet, friends. And here we go, Jay. You freaking profit. Here there it is. Something different. Wow. This is what they did in round number one. Now, remember, last we were here, Assault had a friend. Oh, <laughs> this time it's Estriel. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Again, there's just nothing that Atlanta could do. And now they're instantly put in a 2v4. I'm really, I want to see the replay on that nade because it looked like it exploded from top middle and somehow some way killed them from down low. But I might just be wrong. It's instantly a 4v2 now. Left up to Draza and Selium. The ARs for Atlanta phase. Draza gets spotted. Selium does find the kill though. So it's still a manageable play. Nope. Domicon binds him. It's a 1v3 now. Madraza has quickly isolated, found to a 1v2, fame over the middle of the map, hold Ooh. on, we have an option here, Estriel playing from the backside of the ladder, coming up from behind, we'll find the kill, and I mean, come on, it tells the story itself, LAG's defensive setup never really foiled, outside of the one round that Diamond Con just gets a bit isolated outside on scaffold, this was round one, literally, you could go back and round, watch round one, this is the exact same setup, Double hit down low, double frags come through. Estriel gets rewarded with the double. I mean, it literally, that was what happened. It's like the most poetic ending. Round, the beginning is the end here. This is Ouroboros, right? Uh, now. LAG knew every single time we challenged me towards B Street, you were gonna get first blooded. But if you're not B Street, you have to be working your way through underground. Just great teamwork again on full display for the Gorillas. They did it in map number one. Every single time, every single round for high rise, they got it done. And now they find themselves up 2-0 when this team can only win four maps throughout this entire stage. You're going up against a top dog in Atlanta phase. And now you find yourselves up 2-0 in this series. All right, LAG, like what kind of people are you? What kind of team is this? Because these guys, they show us something one week and then completely something or nothing the rest of the weeks. Like what kind of thing? You need to keep this up right here. All I'm saying, Jay, I said this yesterday. Look at the calendar. It's March Madness this time. Baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, OK, let's just call what it is still here, friends. We still have a high rise control and two invasions. These are three maps that Atlanta particularly does enjoy. So there is an opportunity here. But I'll tell you flat out, LAG is coming out looking comfortable. And I don't even know how you manifest that after what they've done so far in the stage. But hey, we're here for it, quite literally. And so are you. But for now, we have to send things to a brief break. We'll talk about what's coming up with the high rise control next. It would have to be a reverse sweep for Atlanta. Otherwise, Ali, you may as well hit the add to cart and buy on that purple hair dye. We'll see what happens when we come back. Upgrade your game 
with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Respectfully, uh, I will dye my hair purple if LA do win this series. I'm going Atlanta face. Wow, Atlanta face. You're putting your hair on the I'm line? I'm putting my hair on the She's line. She's putting her hair on the line. You could say it's becoming a little bit of a hairy situation here. LAG up 2-0. Yes, I will forehead later about that comment. That is very bad wordplay. Jay, this is mind-blowing, brother. Flat out oh, yeah. to kind of harken back to the old nameless motto. I mean, the sub base clean for LAG. The high rise also looking good. And now possibly a control for them to 3-0. But I wouldn't necessarily bank on it quite yet. What you can bank on, though, is having a great time in Miami. And look, we've been saying this literally for the last handful of weeks. If you're even thinking about it, just do it. Yeah. In the QR code, go. It's going to be awesome. Not going to lie. It's, it's spring break, Jay. Beach season. It's going to be a blast, man. You get to watch Call of Duty. Anything can happen. We've seen it last major where New York were eliminated first, and now they're one of the top dogs. And now, all of a sudden on our screens, we're even witnessing a miracle in the Gorillas currently up 2-0 versus Atlanta phase. So make sure you guys scan that QR code and make your way out to Miami because it's going to be a blast. But back into this series, we go, Allen. LAG are up 2-0, dog. They could only win four <laughs> matches before this series started. And somehow, some way, they're doing it versus a top three team in the game one map away from securing their first victory of the stage can they get it done the pickups you see that 1.8 wow out there? that had to be parents that had to be parents <laughs> family, you know some family members family. yeah wow 
Those 1.8% are looking mighty smart right now, but we'll still, again, have to see. I saw some people on Twitter making some bold claims about a phase reverse sweep being a guarantee. I don't know, maybe a little bit of hopium being passed around in the community. We'll see what goes on here on the control. Opening route for Astral download through pit completely unguarded. I mean, he has got a freebie on Decelium. Okay, had to hesitate for a moment there, but the kills are perfect and LAG are all over B. And they already had the sack going. The first segment is about to get complete, and now it's on Estriel. How much can he hold off? Well, I see to complete in this B point. As he behind enemy lines, he's able to take down the first. The trade does come in, but that might be B done and dusted. And let the phase not even close. Already time going to be extended. And now you have two minutes to work with to get one set of kills if you are the Gorillas. They only have one kill, Jay. I mean, what is happening? Assault. Back through back stairs, eventually dealt with then Here we go. Okay, face. Couple eliminations. Three for two go to the trades. Follow up onto fame. Also good. So now you've got some helo control over towards the outside at blue. You've got elevator lane also covered. And phase with a couple of kills could very instantly put this into a spawn trap. Yeah, they're already in the trap. LAG have not been able to find their way on out. You got a couple players who maneuver their way out of the left side window, but Atlanta phase know where that pressure's coming in from. They're just continuously filling the gaps. Setting up crossfires, finding kills left and right. Draws on two, make it three in a row. This is the scary thing about Atlanta phase because they have been turning up. They probably the best team currently in control just because simply when you get put in a trap, they do not let you out. This is for the best players to ever touch Call of Duty. And now you're trying to break out of a spawn where there's only three exits. Yeah, not looking particularly good. This is wow. Okay. So moments there where it looked like LOG were about to get away with highway robbery here in the first round, but it's not over yet. Still 60 seconds to play with it. Fame gets an unbelievable triple. Now off the regen, it's going to be a 2v2 over towards A, but Estriel and Fame can't quite reach over towards the zone. And with that, everything kind of reestablishes a mid-map fight. Yeah, even with Fame finding those three kids, he found them on his side of the spawn. So Atlanta Fame is able to spawn right up, reinforce through that left side street and just keep Gorillas off currently. Only 35 seconds left. They're finding a couple kills around the map. Finally, they're going to be able to put that game clock to a pause. Because they're working up on its first segment. And you already have a couple players trying to set up a couple pinches. But the nades are hitting. The stuns are hitting. You're able to take them off. DC last player on. He drops. And now Estriel has to get a lot done with only 25 seconds. Yeah, and if he's following up an assault means that this hit for LAG will be limited to just a couple of individuals. Estriel also dropping means it has to come down largely to fame. And he has kind of snuck through a touch, but he loses his 1v1 versus Selium. So moments there where it looked like LNG were going to be able to possibly recover, maybe even get away with a tick of progress at A. But it looks like this will be limited to just the three that they were able to tally early on over on the B zone. Still one more chance to slip on. But yeah, kills are very clean. Phase is set up around the A zone. Absolutely perfect. So it's just the three ticks tallied off the opening round. Yeah, you're happy with that if you are the Gorillas, though. You said you had a perfect start to the round. You get that early B progression. So you're currently up by three segments. But then when you allow Atlanta phase to get a clean three to four dead, puts you in the trap, the ARs to get set up in those power positions. I just want to just keep you at bay in your spawn for two minutes. So pretty sure Draza ends that round on four in a row. I think so too, yeah. He's starting to have that turn up because the first two maps did not treat him kindly. But we know about that guy. He's a grinder and he's never going to give up. 11 and five start, two of earning a cruise. Yeah. Big kind of rubber band match here for Draza after the top opening, like you already mentioned. Just kind of making sure nobody plays on the outside. A little information towards Diamond Con. Good team shots come through. And FaZe will kind of earn this elevator position. Abizi also just jumping up the backside of the ladder has Astral completely isolated, but Astral gets one. And then Assault Deep is able to take care of two. So trades once again favor LAG. And now you've got Fame pushed up a little bit further to try to kind of create some chaos in the Atlanta spawns. And that's enough for everything to kind of, again, start shifting trends back over to LAG's camp. Yeah, now if you are Atlanta FaZe, it's already been 30, 40 seconds wiped off the game clock. You have to maneuver your way up through the map. Try to earn some segments to be completed. As they're putting the pressure on towards A, Draza has 47 HP left. He's just going to assist his teammate to try to complete this first segment. But here come LAG all spawns and nays. Nothing is going to hit because the BZ is just getting it done in B. They're completing yeah. both points at the same time. Yeah, and this is just, again, you have to kind of pick and choose your off spawn, what you want to do if you're LAG. The elimination on the BZ kind of forces the defense's hand to try to have to play over towards A, but the same can be said for Atlanta. 
double stack for a moment. Draws him, able to secure the second ticket progress. So Selium just kind of playing a bit forward. First line of scrimmage established here for Atlanta, but it's a full flood from LIG coming out of spawn, but no one tracks Selium, and he's able to take down two. Sip, final 1v1, not needed. Sabizi who finds the kill, the extra 60 is good on A, and Sabizi's already over on the B zone. Yeah, so A's gonna be done and dusted. Beezy, like you said, is already on that B zone, but it's LAG trying to at least play a couple exit kills and they find three in the feed. So now it's only on Celium. Cannot afford to die in this situation, but at least you made it up for it in the segment column as a team. Currently up by one, but if you can walk away with the sack around, you're basically going to call GG. Yeah, pretty Just much. Waiting for your teammates to try to push on out before Celium makes a play. Oh, he slipped through. The timing here pretty decent, but does get caught. Fame able to finish him off at just a couple points worth of health remaining. So, like you mentioned, the extra tick gives them an advantage here in this opening set of offenses for both teams, but this round is far from over. 12 plays 12. Minute 10 on the clock. Long range shots good, but once again, trades end up coming out in favor of LAG. Escher, the last one surviving, now taking a step forward, trying to again get close to the spawn, oh. but doesn't get a great read on it. And now Atlanta off to the races, trying to play through V Street. Yeah, he was trying to play the timings, but everyone from Atlanta phase just buddy up, up through that right window, find that free kill, but then two players drop as well. So it's still the Gorillas up by one life in the kill feed. Make it none. All tied up at eight as Simp finds a double through by the man. And this is where the stack is going to be in. Can Estrio through the middle of the map with the rival not make a play happen? He's only able to take down one. But now you have to get close if you are the Gorillas. Second Whoa. segment already complete. Huge second elimination for Fame. Now steps into the spawn. And oh my goodness, Fame on a bit of a heater here. Already at 16 eliminations. But still Atlanta with four lives remaining. Plenty of time to structure oh. and set things up. But an unfortunate propane explosion. Leads to Draza, your furthest offensive member forward, dropping. And you can start to feel the air leaving the lungs here for this Atlanta offense, trying to finish this third ticket progress. Diamond Con still on. Doesn't have a particularly great amount of support nor help, but trades are decent here if you're LAG. This is still not over yet. Simp and Cell working together. Have to find success from one or the other, and that could open the doors. Now it's just Diamond Con on top of the site. Sell him up top, jumping on in. Clean shot, but fame there to help. Four seconds on the clock. Can Sip find a way to cross through mid-map? No, not going to happen, and LAG will hold out of the defensive round. Whew, wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but they are able to hold on. They got a little bit of assistance right there from Selium with the date on the Draza. No more respawns left for Atlanta, so Sip and Cell tried to get it done. They put make it a 2v3, but... Team shots from Diamond Con and Fame able to take down Cell, and then a 1v3 for Simp with no time left. The Gorillas are able to secure the defense, but now you're down by two segments. You have to make those up because you know on a map like High Rise, actually every control in general, you prefer the defensive side. So that's their main focus right now. We got to get these segments complete. Yeah, absolutely. Trophy system down, focus over towards this B street, and the trophy comes down right at the nick of time. It's going to really just default to who wins the long range gunfights. Two for one exchange has Atlanta in the supremacy Ooh and Fame tries to isolate. Not going to work out. Estriel only needed a bullet to finish off the kill, but again, Atlanta's defense off the races here early. Yeah, good stuff to hold down that early pressure over towards the B street. Sam was able to find a double before getting traded. Now all of the gorillas trying to fight their way out through blue side, but a BZ, everyone from Atlanta get a perfect read on whether pressure is coming in from a clean four dead. And now all of the gorillas trapped in their spawn. They've only found two kills on the round so far. And this is going to feel like a very bad sense of de deja vu here. Yeah, it's going to have to be an underground aye, aye, aye. terrestrial and assault. And a BZ is watching it. Door pops. He's going to step in towards it. Maybe just a bit off timing, though. Doesn't make a difference. Simp up top. It will at least keep tally on this play, making its way through. And again, there's not a lot of time here either. So Estriel would have to essentially go rogue and be a hero here for LAG. Fame on the B zone pauses the clock at 23.6. But again, it's one of those situations that you still have a lot of members deep over towards your spawn. And there's just not a great option anywhere in the map here for LAG. Yeah, it's not good because the rest of Atlanta phase, they know where the pressure's coming in. Simp with another double. Last player out is going to be Estriel. He falls and it's not a single segment going in favor of the Gorillas. They only have 15 seconds left. Your last hurrah trying to get in over towards this B point, but the ARs are cutting you down. Draza putting down shots, just keeping DC at bay. And with only four seconds left, Atlanta phase with a shutout on the defense. 22 lives remaining, by the way. Yep. Seems pretty casual. And look, you know, it, this is obviously, as we kind of get through this series, we kind of talked about it before the break. The series, map-wise, starts to look a lot better for Atlanta than the first two. But in particular, when we talk about their control, their differential in finding advantages in the life count 
is astronomical oh, yeah. across the board. They're and the best control team in the game. The yep. Best control team in the game, man. They have figured it out this year. Obviously, they've always figured it out every single year. Last year, I'm pretty sure it was Toronto Ultra on top, but Atlanta Faze were always able to contest them. This year, they have just been running away with that mode. Just simply due to them outslaying. Like, they're always outslaying the hell of their opponents in control. And you're starting off with an initial two piece out of a reverse pain. They can do no wrong. Atlanta Faze yeah. are thinking about that reverse sweep already. You kind of saw it before we loaded into the map. Right after the break, lots of smiles, lots of laughter still for Atlanta. And I'm sure that will continue if this keeps up. Abizi, oh boy, he is slippery to say the least. Finally dealt with, but you've got high ground control now for Atlanta. Progress being made over towards B. LAG, a couple of decent trades opens up the door for the defense to start to get established. And they do also take out Simp on the point. So clock will continue to tick, 26 playing 24. And I think the best thing you can do right now if you are the Gorillas, because you're guaranteed offense on that round number five. Try to get someone to earn a couple cruise missiles because that could be the, the situation where you can work your way out of spawn when you go a clean four to five dead because they're just instantly dropping every single time. So you got to find a couple cruise missiles. Obviously, you need to win this around by taking them off of that B point as the first segment is already going to be complete. But you have a lot of other gorillas with those tacks coming on spawn ready to throw them at that B point. The BZ up and over. Oh, my. Nearly able to do all Ooh. the damage needed, but... Assault, Estriel, bounce right back. Okay, only two ticks of progress getting tallied here. Block at 30 seconds. And the life count starts to develop here for LAG, marginal as it may be. Assault on four. I was about to say, you kind of need to play for a cruise missile here, considering your lack of offensive success and the guarantee that you will be playing around five offense if we get to that point. But that gets the ninth. And Atlanta have worked their way back out of spawn. And Abizi, this seems like he's got nine lives. This is, he's taking gunfights. He gets down to one HP. This doesn't get finished off. And finally, fame through the wall. We'll deal with it. Also getting a second through mid means that LAG can continue to contest this B zone. Yeah, but they have not worked that B progression over towards the B point. So it's going to be Atlanta phase able to extend that time. No one was able to jump into the point and just decap that third segment. So now basically all tied up in lives. Atlanta phase are currently pushed out of the spawn, but Estri all spawn is able to find a double. Fame with the third and get a perfect read onto the last player. All of Atlanta phase forced to come out of base again. Yeah, another force spree gets taken away from potential resources for this round five again if we get there still opportunities though for atlanta not fully spawn trap but being tested estriel over towards the previously captured b zone has gotten a look at a lot of this atlanta offense but now he's had to reset and he's got absolutely no idea that atlanta are all around him still doesn't make a difference draza gets taken down a bz deep simp also playing through underground that would have to be kind of the muse for success here for atlanta if they were to open up some opportunities here at a bz continues to absolutely shred two in a row for him 24 seconds on the clock eight plays eight and a chance to pause the clock here and you already see simp though he's thinking a couple players are going to come all spawn but all of the gorillas actually spawn underground so you're going to try to reinforce while simp is cutting ghost off Right through bottom blue. Fame starts it off with the first kill. Abizi finds a trade, but it's DZ jumping through underground. Sith finally gets a kill behind enemy lines, but it's all for nothing because the gorillas with the clutch spawn through underground were able to break their way back on in. No more respawns for Atlanta. This is going to go to a round five. Can anyone even touch this? You have to smoke salt first. Hello? And, oh, okay. No ammunition breath for Selly. A moment for Draza could get in, but not for long enough to extend the play. So we're gonna get around five. A couple of heroic moments from LAG defensively, sure. But the problem has been the offense. Outside of their opening break off in round one, they really have not found any success towards A. Yeah, yeah, and it, it just has to be the start off. You can't go four dead right off the rip because then you allow the players to get pushed up towards top heli, to get pushed up up through your B street and even take control underground. So if you're in the gorillas in the first 15 seconds is your most important to try to close this out in the 3-0. You have to try to maneuver your way out. Don't allow Atlanta face to take all those power positions. So it simply just comes down to the first 15 seconds for me, Alan. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we've seen it now. Two defenses in a row for Atlanta that they've been able to establish a very significant spawn trap. You cannot allow that to happen. And how about this? LAG off spawn, taking a lot of their attention towards the middle of the map here. With maybe an opportunity if they find kills to step in towards A. First shot's good from Fame. Back onto four in a row, but caught by Ibizi. Trades are decent. Clock pauses early, but it's an even exchange. Astro would have to win a key 1v1 here, and oh, just gets enough help from Assault. So here we go. Two players on. First tick is in. 
Simp and Cell clearing out everything else though. And it's only just a BZ who falls due to his own hand from the pro paid. And now you've got Simp in your spawn on five in a row. Yeah, Simp's in your spawn, but again, they get those underground spawns. So they're able to make their way on out. But Draza this time has that read. So now all of the gorillas again, fighting out of their spawn. Yeah, Simp who was able to earn himself a cruise missile. And now with 50 seconds left, you just have to get a couple kills. If you don't yeah. find any, yeah, it's going map four. Well, a couple players do get through. Draza caught. Okay. Spawn trap largely denied, but sell. Oh, you sneaky beaver. Already gotten around the back. Simp up top has thrown a couple of the shots. Has everyone looking his direction. Cell still not part of the play as of yet, but doesn't need to be now. He finally gets involved, and that's enough to clear off any progress at B. Clock continues to tick. 30 seconds remaining. Cell's now back into your spawn. Oh, he, he just... One of those things, man. One of those things. We've seen it now three in a row. LAG is having a real tough time keeping track of Atlanta players as they start to threaten their spawn trap. Yeah, it's all good. You know, like you're going up against the best control team in the game. You can't keep up with the slay. You have two players who are basically double negative. And all the AR players for Atlanta phase, even a BZ at moments, everyone's sitting on positive. If you're not able to keep up in the slaying in control, you are definitely going to walk away with the L's. There's only 9.4. They're able to pause the game clock with Fame trying to make a heroic play over towards A, but he gets cut down. Now it's Diamond Con's turn at the B point, but Atlanta phase have the numbers. They have the tax. With only eight seconds left. You best believe they're going to apply that pressure. Yeah, you think so. Sim off the cruise missile being earned. Calls this in, forces everyone underground. Now time is an issue. Team kill does come through though. So a chance to continue to extend this play over towards B, but again, it's just so much overwhelming pressure from Atlanta defensively. Final kill comes through. It's just fame on the other side of the map. Just trying to do what he can to hold on to this 2.2 seconds, but five lives remaining. It's a heroic effort to say the least, but it's not going to be enough to make any significant plays happen in, in Atlanta. Clean on three straight defenses with some, honestly, some great moments offensively as well. Dice map there from FaZe to kind of get back into the series. Yeah, that's good stuff from Atlanta FaZe to get it done on their best mode. They walk away with the round number five, stay alive a little bit longer in this series. And this is what gets me scary because when we were talking about the series, knowing that we had this one, I was telling you, Alan, that the only way I see this actually being a series is if the Gorillas went up 2-0. But sure. the only reason why I say that, because they had to guarantee go up to it, because the next three maps, we're talking about the high rise control we just watched, the invasion hardpoint, and also the invasion search and destroy. Those are all bread and butters for Atlanta phase. And we said it even before the series started, Gorillas were only able to win one hardpoint throughout this whole stage, and that was Karachi. So now you're going into two maps where Atlanta phase definitely prefer them. This is probably a series that's far from over. Yeah, it's, it definitely feels that way for sure. And it's just kind of bizarre how the map selection process has kind of come through. Because like you mentioned, Atlanta playing their worst two maps in the first two. And then they get their best two maps in the last two. Plus, their preferred control. It's just tough. And I think it's generally to, to veto against this Atlanta team because their map fluency is so wide across every single mode. But, you know, for I think for LAG, again, there are moments throughout this map you look at and say, okay, like we're working with something here. Yeah. It's just, I think, again, it, they lost track of a player here or there when they're on the offensive side. You know, Selium gets free. He gets into the spawn, finds a couple of spawn kills. Simp does it maybe in the second round as well, where he kind of gets slipped by and no one tracks him. And now he's on a possible cruise missile early. It's just every time LAG work through the full focused spawn trap of Atlanta, there's one player to survive and just continue to put the pressure on to a point where it's just insurmountable. Yeah, and that's very difficult because if you are the gorillas, you have to be able to keep track of those kills. But unfortunately, they weren't getting a lot of kills basically out of the ARs. Assault and Domicon did not have the best performance. And on the opposite side for Atlanta phase, Selium and Draza finally came alive in this map number three. This is what makes Atlanta phase so scary because when everyone is on point, they're one of the most difficult teams to take on down. When you get Draza to play at that high level that everyone expects him to play alongside Selim, who barely dies on the map, you know what you're going to get out of the Tiny Terrors. And we saw it on full display in that map number three. And now we're going into a map number four where they are activated. Like I said, this one might be far from over. Yeah, I agree. The thing is, we know we have gotten at least a number of reps out of LAG on these invasions coming up. I mean, most recently, they did play this hardpoint uh, versus both New York and LA Thieves. The totals were not particularly great. Um, and then this was kind of, you know, looking at the possibility of a map five. At one point in time, when we got like through the end of the major one qualifiers into major one, Invasion was like all LAG played. Every series yeah. was like six maps in a row they played Invasion Surge. Sometimes good, sometimes not so much, but you know, it just kind of is what it is. It just, you know, when you're looking at a team that has only won four series on the year, you kind of have to go to repetition maybe more than the actual record because yeah. the record is just not particularly great. Speaking it honestly.
So now if you are LAG, like I said, you just got nothing to lose. Everybody is expecting you to lose this series. 98% of the world, besides your family and <laughs> friends, are expecting you to lose this series. Yeah. So you have nothing to lose. The way you have to get this done, though, is the same way you got it done in map number one. Just simply out classic Atlanta phase in those fundamentals by using your teamwork. In a map like Invasion, where you have P4s that are very difficult to get time, we see teams like LAT somehow, some way walk away with 40 seconds every single time they go over to that P4. So those are the little things that you have to be making sure that you're paying attention to if you are LAG because you need every little ounce of time to try to take out Atlanta phase in one of their better hard points. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that you brought up the Thieves point because, it, you know, kind of looking over the history of Thieves as well, you know, the respawn has not been particularly great from them, but, you know, when you're dealing with kind of a lopsided matchup like you see here, you know, the rankings just so vastly different uh, throughout major two qualifiers between these two squads, you have to look for the hard points that aren't necessarily hard focused in terms yes. of, yes, we're going to use this for a lot of time. That's how you kind of claw your way into staying in a game. And, you know, we talked about this in Challengers as well, is, you know, this map provides opportunities to kind of reset patterns more often than others because you have yeah. p1 is a 50 50 hard point the same on the fourth you can use those hills as chances to just kind of take your focus maybe away from rotation get some points or do the opposite don't worry so much about finding objective time and let's actually reset the map and set ourselves up for a clean follow-up hold whether that be p2 or p5 to come so there are opportunities here it just comes down to making sure that for lag you can actually dictate those and articulate them well between the four of you. Yeah, and it has to, at least for me, be based off of the slay. We're talking about those AR fights who are so crucial when you're rotating over towards P2, when you're trying to challenge those players towards top tank or even towards broken, and then even at the bathroom hill. You need to allow those ARs to really step up in those one-on-one -on -one gunfights because those are going to be the game changers. So I'm really looking at the world champ of the gorilla side in Assault to step up here back four. Yeah, I like that call. Here we go. Let's see what happens. The other side of things, you look towards the SMGs for Atlanta phase, possibly finding more success than they had on sub base. So will that be the factor? Fame. Able to step on for a little bit of contest, but Wolf still looking for the gunfights here for LAG. Draza at mid-map, eventually dealt with pinstripe kill feet. Leads to a continued 50-50 scuffle over the top of the first hill, and it's a BZ who just bounces forward, finds the final kill, and that's Atlanta phase coming away as the victors here at this P1 with still more time to soak. A BZ looked like he had a couple trampolines at that P1. Every time he was <laughs> jumping off the garbage, like he was getting some air time. The fact that he's able to stay alive as long as he did and then still continuously soak this time at P1. LAG have not found a way on it. Finally, you take care of him. Great team shots from him and Fame to potentially walk away with this final 10. But you can already see the Gorillas taking a step ahead off the rotation. But if you pay attention to your minimap, Atlanta yep. Faye's got two players on the pitch. So you have to be able to read this if you are Gorillas. Oh, what a blast spawn here from Fame. Just as the hard point starts to open up, it was going to be a 2v2 over the top at the second hard point. But Fame comes up from the backside of Palace Wall, plus the delayed Edge. hit from Estriel. That's just small blessings turned into great results right there for LAG. They get the setup around P2, and now they're off to the races, soaking up a lot of time. But now they have to hold from every single angle because Atlanta phase, they have back Palace. They have broken side as well. With the BZ finding two and Sim finding the third, the brink is already going to be here for Atlanta. And with only 30 seconds left, the Gorillas are now all swanning over towards the Palace side. It's going to be a gifted rotation for FaZe to get over towards P3 nice and early. But you do have a couple of players from the Gorillas contesting the old and also working their way up through Courtyard to try to make their way over towards P3. It feels a little labored, though, looking towards the minimap. Like, I like the idea here that LAG are just not allowing Atlanta to get on towards the old time, but it almost feels like it's taking a little bit too long for them to get set up for P3. Luckily, though, the kills are pretty quickly found as they make their play through rugs. So the setup is in, but Selium has kind of, again, been allowed to live for maybe longer than you would anticipate. Trade comes through nicely, but LAG still don't fully spawn in. Estro off the off spawn has to try to make something happen and delay this Atlanta hit from the front. He's done well so far. Oh, yeah, that's all Astro needed to do and at least cut down one, put their focus for Atlanta phase onto that one player. They're still going to get those close back gas spawns, but... Atlanta phase now starting to pounce. Three players around the back from Hill. Salt's able to spot one. Can he find the kill? Yes, he does. But now Atlanta phase at two players in the point. It's the tiny terrors you have to get by them. Yeah, and this is unbelievably good from the side at oh, Atlanta, but Salt nice help, Salt. over to try to deal with Fame, and that actually leads to a team kill moment. So that will be worked out well. Fame on four in a row. 15 seconds of scrap time. Looking good here for LAG to this point. And now we get to that very tricky fourth hard point here at the park. How do Atlanta Ooh. find ways to scrap together some points here? Because you see them working for the favorite side of the minimap, but hey, you're down 40 here. You still need to find a way to get some time, you'd think, as well. 
Yeah, you need to get some time here at P4 to try to get back into this game. You see Simpy just playing for the one-on-one -on -one gunfight versus Fame, but Fame reads it to perfection. Now he finds himself on five in a row. And if you are the Gorillas, you're happy as hell just keeping them off at this point. Yeah, but now yeah. you have no map control because all of Atlanta base take mid tank. They already pushed up in towards Cafe. You have to win these next set of fights to potentially put them in the trap that you want. And yeah, you can play the macro game if you're LAG, like you mentioned. Just make life difficult over the top of the hard point, but also see if you can set up fame for the sixth elimination. He's going to get a 1v1 with the BZ over towards Water Street and all by a bullet. He wins the gunfight and earns the cruise missile. So now, with that all done and dallied up, LAG. Spawning out towards Palace, kind of have to make good movement here. I mean, there's still 20 seconds you have to play through this old time before you can even look at P5. And Fame, as he tries to step in to deal with the contestant at Celium, does get cut. So Estriel's double opens up space through the back alley, and Diamond kind of following up has allowed an opportunity for LNG to try to reestablish this hit towards the left, right side of the map. Yeah, that's good stuff from the Gorillas to just keep Atlanta Phase off of that hill as much as they possibly could. Fame also earning that cruise missile to play a big part later into this game, but Ooh. now it's all about these fights over towards the next hill. LAG trying to take some mid-map control. You have Assault trying to set up the pitch to potentially spawn a couple players from Atlanta phase out. He actually wins that gunfight, so here's an opportunity where the Gorillas can find a break. Whoa, and Dynacon snaps over towards Simp, doesn't finish off the elimination. Simp somehow turns that into a double. Unbelievable individual play. So now we're on the back of LAG. Atlanta do spawn out, at least for now, but oh, BZ oh. gets completely unchecked. Off the two, Ooh, reset woo. now on three, draws on the other side, does get cut down, but Atlanta fans have worked their way back into the lead. Yeah, it's a tie game. They're going to be able to take the lead at least for a couple seconds. But now it's all about that rotation over towards next. Sip trying to find himself a cruise missile of his own. He's now on six in a row. And Atlanta fans are starting to turn up in this HP. Not going to slow down. Seven does get cut down, though. Great shots right there from Fame. But back to the P when we go, where we've seen a BZ jumping left and right like he had trampolines in the middle of the map. Oh, it draws a good read on over towards Assault as well. Kind of keeps the play over towards AS and D completely limited. So chances here for Atlanta to actually soak up a considerable amount of time as Draza continues to win gunfight after gunfight. 15 and 8 on three in a row. And this feels a little bit more like it if you're a FaZe fan as they have soaked up the vast majority of this opening 30 and there's no sign that that's stopping anytime soon. Yeah, and look, they're more focused on slaying. You're finding all the kills, but no one is soaking any time. Finally, with three going down, going to be able to put a BZ onto that point with LAG now making a decision to think about that rotation. And this is a hill that they have to try to respond on at this P2. You can't allow Atlanta FaZe to walk away with the majority of this P1 time and chain it to the P2 hill. And Domicon is going to slide his way on through. He's only able to take yeah. down one, but it's going to be Atlanta phase winning the rotation over towards next. And this is probably a moment here. If you're LAG, you need to consider using Fame's cruise missile. Yep. You cannot allow this game to get out of hand. Problem is, with Sim having heard one of his own, he could just use one to respond. So here's the call-in for the cruise. Long route from Assault. He needs to be able to isolate these players inside Ice Cream. You have to find these eliminations. Assault tested. Oh, and he gets denied. Not the way you want to see it. Fame the last one standing. And as this hit gets broken down, Atlanta FaZe have a chance to really grow the lead. Let's see how they calm through it as we go to a phase. Listen it. Time got me. And uh, both there, both there. I'm playing there. I got one. Tank, one more tank, on the tank caddy. The tank caddy. I, I should think. Just hit through old. Everyone hit through old. I don't see tank. Hit through old. Don't go middle. I'm stunning. All right, all right, let's go. I'm just, 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 I'm going deep, Zach. One deep gas, deep gas. I'm going deep gas. Deep gas. Deep gas. Deep gas. Deep gas. Deep gas. Small in time. Small. One shot small. We got two targets. Stay flanking. 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 St
There's not one on time running him. Oh, Longy, 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 Great hard point there from LAG. What, they find 45 seconds or so. They only give up maybe the back 10, but you kind of heard it in the comms. Sif is already calling that, hey, if we need the cruise missile here, I can definitely still use it. Just comes down to, does it, do they feel like it's needed? Yeah, you're at a P4 where you might not get a lot of time if you're either one of these squads. And keep in mind, that game clock is already at a minute and 30. Yep. So that might come into play, but you saw the heads up play right there at the end of that. Listen, it from Atlanta phase, more specifically out of Draza. Everyone was dropping over towards Palace side. He simply just plays his life at gas to spawn his team close to find a final break for 20 seconds. Now all of the gorillas continuously spawning at Palace. This is where you can blow the game wide open if you can get so much needed time. But even if you don't, just keeping them trapped over towards the Palace side is good enough. Back and forth eliminations, game clock continues to tick. 166, 123, 1v1s all over the map. As finally LAG kind of have made their decision to try to teamwork out this P2 street. The only player really in their way at the moment is Draza, but he's done well. He gets the first kill, slips away freely. Now he's playing back with a little bit of assistance nearby and Assault has no idea where he's gone. Complete mystery. As we open things up over towards that back blue position, Diamond Con does get blessed with a little bit of help from Assault spawning in. So there's a chance to isolate this, but again, Draza topside broken, just not dealt with, continues to be a force. He's 28 and 12 on a four streak. Like this guy in the last two maps has just activated takeover. And he's not letting his foot off of the gas. Gorilla's currently down by 60 points. You need to walk Dude. away with this final 30, but it's Straza again with another double. He earns himself a cruise missile. Atlanta Flays are just slaying the hell out of the Gorillas. And they're just getting closer and closer to forcing that game five. He's like a ghost. He just pops up somewhere, goes away, disappears. No one can find him. Then all of a sudden he's on the hard point. Then he's back up towards top blue. He's just everywhere. So another cruise missile tallied. A little bit of consolidation time here if you're LAG. It gets them just above the 140 mark, but with 59 seconds on the game clock, you have to do what you have not done yet, which is find significant time here on P1, otherwise this game may be over. Yeah, that's true. Finding a double might be just enough to start it off, but there's still more numbers on the side of Atlanta phase, able to reinforce in towards the point. And there's a small focus on slaying. Rather than getting the time, as you see, Abiz just putting himself in a nice little corner, but with only 49 seconds left on the game clock, you find three. This is where you're able to soak for free. But you yeah. see those spots from the gorillas? They're everywhere. So you got to try to read this if you're a land. Need a couple of individual gunfights to go your way if you're the gorillas on the other side of that. Astriel continues to have a great series. 29 and 24. Clears out the hard point, but like we said, you're at a gap of 70 or 60 points, pardon me, and you only have 40 seconds of game clock left. So whatever it is, it has to be very, very, very convincing. 12 seconds of scrap, trying to be earned. Simp pushes him off. Gap still at 60 points. It's now Simp starting to brew up for some potential streaks. Diamond Con does at least confirm the trade, but you look and tally what's coming up next at P2, and it's all phase, all over construction. Yeah, this is the third time that they won the rotation over towards P2. Can it lead to some much needed time to try to close out this game? This is where you make it rain with all those missiles, all the gunfires, all the nades coming in. Assault even nades himself. Just assisting Atlanta Face to try to close out this game and force that game five. Yep. And if you're Atlanta, you can win this in a multitude of ways. Yep. It really comes down to whatever is more convenient. Do you want to let the game clock expire or do you want to just jump on and get to 250? Mathematically, really either option's fine. <laughs> it's just this, whichever really the game provides you. And as Draza starts to read that, there is a lot of pressure coming out of LG. He steps back, 33 and 15. He's got help nearby, trophy systems on. The pressure of the game clock also starting to tick against LAG. They clear out a lot of it, but the last one standing is still Draza. And I'm telling you, this guy oh does my it. God. Gun fights, piss oh. 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 Bed. You want him at five. I've said it once before on this map. I'll do it again. You got it, here we go. <laughs> Let me tell you, Alan, I don't know what Draza did on that commercial break, but he has just been activated. Like you said, he's a very, very difficult gunfight to try to win. Basically playing like a ghost out there on the map because he has just been in takeover mode the final two as Atlanta phase respond with two back-to-back -back respawns. We can never count this team out. They're always going to be in the series. Even where their back's against the wall, now you're going into an invasion search and destroy in that game number five. Allie's gotta be feeling a little bit better now, Alan, you know, so you can take a deep breath. 
Yeah, the good news is you can still uh, issue returns on Amazon orders within a couple <laughs> hours if she preemptively pulled the trigger on that. Wow, what a map from Draws. 6,300 damage, 29 non-traded. Mercy. 31 and 25 from Simp as well. Selium still puts out 4,300 damage with 15 assists. So even though the stat line isn't necessarily the sexiest thing you've ever seen, it was still impactful to say the least. On the other front though, I'm telling you, man, Estro's really playing well this series. Yeah. Just couldn't quite get things done here for LAG who really only had that rotation over to P3. That really speaks, you know, largely for how they played the map. And it's kind of falling into the hands of the ARs. Again, a slow performance from Assault and Domicon on maps like High Rise. On maps like Invasion, you need your ARs to step up. And there's only one AR that's putting on for their city. And it's Draza so far in the last two maps. Been the only guy to go positive between all four players. But Atlanta Face, they have brought this one all the way back. Very, very tight control. Breeze through on the Invasion HP. And now you got an invasion search to destroy where they're sitting at seven and two on the season. You're feeling good. Like I said, if you're Allie. Absolutely. And if you're a FaZe fan and the other 98.2% of people who yeah. picked FaZe. So <laughs> lots of things to look forward to if you're a FaZe fan. But hey, like we said, if you want to kind of speak to the hero story here, LNG played this map a bunch. Just comes down to can they get past the hurdle of beating an Atlanta team who largely only lose to New York and Toronto in search and destroy. We'll see what happens. We'll head to a break. That map five right after that. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator. Now available in-game in the Call of Duty Store. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Welcome back. 
Kraken. Well, we've got ourselves map five. I don't think a lot of people had that on their bingo card for today after a hot start for LAG Atlanta phase. Now all of a sudden have the 1.8% that's looked LAG all of a sudden feeling a little bit down and gloom. So we got an invasion search destroyed. Say it all off. And again, like we talked about, the last three maps of this series were all looking really good for Atlanta. Even yeah. coming off of the O2 break, they were still smiling, laughing, having a good time. Things look a little bit more locked in right here, but for LAG, hey, you just you, this is a test on the mental, right? You got to be able to just set yourself up and say, hey, we're not just hanging with these guys. We can beat them. Yeah, you got to be able to beat them in this game number five to have that confidence going into the major. And if you get it done the same way you got it done in that map number two, it was all about teamwork. But one stat that really stood out to me when I was looking at it through the commercial is that, believe it or not, LAG are great at finding the first flood on the attacking side. They find it about 48% of the time, which is close to 50. But then the conversion rate after that is 58%. You're telling me you're basically finding the first blood guaranteed, but then not winning in your 4v3 advantages. You need to be able to make sure you change that here. Do the same exact thing you did on map number two to try to walk away with this W. And you got to remember back when they were playing this map a bunch, we kind of talked about this LAG team and said one thing. They're playing too slow when they have yeah. numbers. They're taking way too long in the rounds, trying to follow up and convert, especially from the offensive side. So that will be, I think, a target of focus here as we jump into the first offense here for LAG. Assault will, again, scout that Selim, of course, is playing over towards Water Bridge. That's very normal. Simp also very normally playing over towards Broken. So this is essentially what you would predict if you're doing your research on Atlanta. Yeah, this is a fail out round for both squads. Obviously, Atlanta Faye is able to take a little bit more ground with Sip putting himself in towards Broken. You keep those guys over towards the B Street at bay. Now you're forcing the Gorillas to put pressure over towards this A bomb. And this is where SU starts to find that finesse. Here comes the smoke grenade. He's going to push right through. Not able to spot the player in courtyard, but he knows it's only a matter of moments before one of these gunfights are here. Draza opens up with the first blood, though. Trade is good enough, potentially, to keep things going for LAG. Not a lot of time in the clock, though. Here comes the contest over the backside at Water Street. If easy gets what? Sell it. Up, and it just feels like it always does. LAG, first couple eliminations, decent, but not an opportunity to really follow up and do much with it. Yeah, right there. When they find the trade in towards mid tank, they're thinking if easy has to be somewhere close towards the same side. But once they spot him over towards the backside of the wall, they try to work that bomb plant. But it was just too quick of an adjustment right there from Atlanta phase. A double push up through the water street. Great team shots from BZ and Sullivan to eliminate both of those players. And then Diamond Con left in a 1v3 just gets taken down. Atlanta phase strong on the first defense. Yeah, really, really good. Okay. And again, it's just, this is what you should expect. Selim's going to play over towards the street almost every single round. Simp is going to try to play forward defensively and towards top broken. So there's a lot of things to expect here if you're setting yourself up from the offensive side of your LAG. BZ now playing a bit forward, looking to see if he can scout anything out in towards this front lobby position, but no one's home. And the defense for LAG very passively set up. The only real curiosity point is Fame is kind of by himself on an island here at mid. Doesn't have a lot of help at the moment. Yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult for Fame to watch all these angles through that mid-tank. So hopefully he gets some assistance here pretty soon. The adjustment's already coming in as Assault trying to set up that crossfire. But now you leave Water Street open. The selling decide to take ground. No, it's Estio trying to be the aggressor. Ends up getting picked apart by Sip. Another first blood to Atlanta. Follow up from Draza good. Now they're off over towards B. Fame at least able to tally one through mid-map. It'll at least stretch this Atlanta post plant just a touch, having to stay responsible for this flank. And you're looking at Simp, once again, in Broken. Very familiar with this position. MCW, but he's really here as a prediction over towards Dark. Stun comes through. That doesn't hit because it goes into the room. Oh, that's tough. So Simp goes one for one. That is perfectly fine. Now for Fame, 1v2 situation. Has a BZ tallied over towards Tractor. Decent shots towards Draza, but this is a game of whack-a-mole. And Atlanta is just going to pop heads and then immediately back on off and force Fame to have to do something miraculous if he wants to win this. And now he's running out of ammunition. Here comes the pressure play and the team shots too good. Great round from Atlanta. Yeah, that's easy stuff right there from Atlanta, but that's your basically gift them that round. Like if you're the player pushed up in towards Broke, you can't be the first guy to try to take ground thinking that all the pressure's coming in towards Cafe. You have to think in mind, someone is watching this overextension. And then once he falls, you see all of Atlanta phase make that mid-round adjustment. Everyone up through the B Street. Dross is able to find a second, and then you put the bomb down because you already eliminated all the players at that B site. It's just one of those rounds right there. Vestru just takes his time in towards Broken. The play probably comes to him, but he tries to make the play go to the opposing way. Yeah. Atlanta phase take advantage of it. 
Go ahead and start here for Atlanta. Oh, here we go. Here's a different setup all of a sudden for FaZe. Not really putting anyone over towards this B Street, just watching for crosses. Lots of focus towards the middle of the map with continual shots being thrown out by Drazi. He gets a couple of tags, but LAG have kind of said, wait a second, if Drazi's going to play towards the middle of the map, we may have a chance to slip in towards B. The only question is, how free is this site? And Estriel has done well to clear it very quickly. And hopefully they got a trophy system, because you know, if Atlanta phase are playing through a mid-map setup, they're going to have those stuns and nades to try to retake it. Hmm. As they're already working a couple players on that deep pitch. It's going to fall into the hands of Assault. Diamond Con finds the first blood, so the bomb is now going to get planted. But what can Assault get done in this position on the flank? You have to know that Atlanta prefers to play this retake from the backside at B Street. But Stellium gets the first blood through the front. Assault finally gets activated. Finds one. Steps out. Sim looking for the trade. Oh, a little sloppy, but still confirms it. And meanwhile, Man. Cell had isolated towards the other side. So now you got a 1v1. Diamond Con opting to play this pretty far forward. And the opening shots are perfect. Simp gets turned aside. And LIG get on the board. Yeah, let's go stop far right there from the Gorillas to use the information gained early into the round and use it fast. Because they didn't spot anyone crossover towards B. No one into towards Broken. So Astro gets the read on it, pushes right on up. You find the first blood, you get the bomb down, and even though it turns into a one-on-one, -on -one, Diamond Con Con does not shy away from the engagement. Pushes up towards the tank, wins the one-on-one -on -one versus Simp, and finally gets the gorillas on the board. Yeah. But it's a good read, honestly. It's one of those things like Atlanta, like you said, is just playing for retake if they're going to stack the middle of the map, but Astriel quickly clearing things out allows LAG to get a very far advanced forward position. And how about this now? Smoke through mid, not gonna be able to tell Atlanta anything about who's crossed through the middle of the map. And it's a three man stack inside a lobby. I love this. I love this different adjustment already from the Gorillas. A soul actually the player up on the ledge. There's no way in hell you're gonna be able to read this guy in this position. But you see Atlanta phase, they're about to break their way in towards the cafe and the Gorillas are gonna be ready for it. Not able to spot anything as here comes a beast. But again, it's just this whole setup for LAG is built for this. Even the follow-up assault watches the cross from Simp at the middle of the map. Cell still creates an opportunity here, though. Bomb has been collected. Astriel holding his ground. Oh. Cellium takes him down with two perfect bursts from the Renetti. And now it's just down to Diamond Con again. This will be a 1v2. DC's got his hands full. Going up against Simp and Selium. These guys have been playing s and since they were in diapers. And with only 30 seconds left, he has gotten the perfect read on where the play is coming in. Can you just find a timing, though? You still have a nade in your back pocket, but all this time you're checking in towards Cafe. That bomb is going down towards B. And you best believe Atlanta Faze are putting one towards the tractor and one at cages, which is the guaranteed setup. Or not. This feels familiar. Fame was just here previously. A little bit different, like you mentioned, though, from Atlanta, but... Again, it's just one of those things that it may not make a difference. Hello? Trophies just not dying. Yikes. I mean, you may as well continue to try to kick this thing out of commission because you kind of need a nade to land here. There we go. Now it's... Oh, he's just tossed this softly. Cell will be able to kind of avoid this. Yeah, there's a tag on it, but... Simp gets Wait isolated. A Cell, damage comes through. Time is an issue. Oh, my goodness. Here we go again. Finally, the kill comes out. Does he get on in time? Oh, sure does. <laughs> Diamond Con, okay. Five in a row, saves the round and gets us locked in at two. That's a 3,000 IQ play right there, Alan. We're the talking about, obviously, we got to take down that trophy system. That's all it really came down to. But once that nade hits onto Selim, you know Cell is not going to peak. Simp's trying to keep his team alive by just simply watching the cross. But those shots, keeping Selim weak, being the aggressor with only four HP left. Diamond Khan gets it done for the Gorillas. And if yeah, Atlanta fans would have listened to me, one towards cages, one at track, then they guarantee that <laughs> round. But unfortunately, they don't. And now Diamond Khan is on a five streak, one on off earned in that cruise. I think there's a moment in there where Diamond Khan was like, you know, enough of this trophy. I don't need to kill it. He had so to, though. glad he did, though. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay. One off the cruise missile. Other news in terms of things that could be earned with kills here. Simp. If he gets one more elimination, he would tie the current record for total kills in a series. Two to break it, previously held by Metal. So other kind of prizes to be earned here as we get deeper and deeper in the search. Yeah, that guy just breaks records left and right. He's Dang. basically like LeBron, you know? Every time he spawns in on the court, there's a new record about to be broken, and Simp is on his pace 
for another one if he can find a couple kills. But that's already been 45 seconds knocked off the game clock. You already see the game plan from the Gorillas. We're going to try to send it out towards A. You get your trophy system down. You get it easy to back on up. And you might have to play for a kill before you play for this plant. A little less than in geometry coming in through for LAG. Bouncing nades off of every surface. The thing about it is if BZ left does not get tagged by anything. And it just completely denies LAG setup over towards A. Estriel, whoa, hell of an angle. Able to at least reduce this to a 3v3. Selium crossing back through Water Street gets away. Gets to mid-map to try to assist. But thing is, Diamond Con's elimination has kind of created another opportunity for LG to plant. Estrel just being a very big nuisance through mid. Diamond Con on the other side takes care of Draza. And now Selium shoes on the other foot. He's stuck. 1v3. And there's just no vacancy anywhere in the map. He's going to have to create one. And boy, I'll tell you, those are some good shots to Diamond Con. But... He stays alive through it, and there's just no way Selian breaks through this. Hey, he only had 14 bullets in the whole clip. He was putting out shots at that water street, but not able to win the 1v3. I thought the gorillas left Fame out to die by himself, but you can't allow the bomb plan to just go down and just think he's going to get it down for free. Someone's got to try to watch over him, but it was great shots from Estriu to at least make it a 3v3. Domicon on the flank finds that free kill to earn himself a cruise mi missile and then eventually finds a second. I thought that was going to be a guaranteed Atlanta phase defensive round, but Diamond Con brings it all the way back. And now the Gorillas are three rounds in a row with the cruise missile. Huh? They're starting to turn up. Yeah, I'll say. Okay. Diamond Con mid map. Shots are out. At least saw a couple of the players possibly on the long cross. Estriel also kind of gives away his position towards the front side at small. Nate actually does land, so that's going to force Atlanta kind of out of that front laundry position, and LAG have at least created some doubt here in terms of what their setup looks like that Atlanta will have to clear out. Yeah, because they already got information that they're aggressive up in through Cafe. So we have to take a lot more time if we want to try to clear that positioning, but said screw that we're just going to work our way up through b no one crosses the broken so they're slowly working their way up the tank they get the info on diamond con watching the cross from the back end and this might be an opportunity where if all of atlanta phase are over towards b yeah you invest that cruise yeah very well will did anyone watch for the exit here Heck, it looks like lag are more focused on trying to control dvd so surely if easy will drop in he does information on the others here comes the double hit from backside dvd and all oh, draza gets completely caught off guard only thing about it is Simp is still playing forward. He's been able to plant the bomb while all this is happening, but oh, Asselian was trying to get there to help, and Estriel delays his play long enough to find a freebie. There's the kill record for Simp, but more importantly, there's the round for LAG. Up now 4-2. Oh, no, and Diamond Con's on eight in a row. Simp sets the record, and he might just be LeBron, because every time he broke a record this season, it was always in a loss. That's now 4-2 <laughs> for the Gorillas. Four rounds in a row from these young men. They are trying to turn it around, turn that 0-6 into a 1-6. As they have now won four rounds in a row, you use the cruise missile to your advantage to just secure that round guaranteed. And now you're just a couple rounds away from taking down Atlanta phase, getting on the board in stage two. Just got to continue to ice up. Diamond Con, keep putting on for your city. Different hit from Atlanta. Aggression in through DVD here. Two player stack, a little crossfire setup. Diamond Con stun does not reveal this, but had to have been enough pressure from other sources to kind of push Atlanta back just a touch. Their opening breakoff doesn't provide an opening kill and will reset everything into a 4v4 with a minute on the clock. Yeah, we're just slow and steady wins the race. The Gorillas are playing for some early info. At least they gain the info that no one is pushed in towards broken. So it might be the play, play call again to not even contest over towards A. Let's try to work our way up to B Street. It's already been 45 seconds knocked off the game clock. You just got to try to get a read on what Atlanta are doing, and they have not shown anything. Yeah, and they're going to go back to the same A hit. Draza watching a cross corner. Abiz is on the top of the tank, and then Simp is up close and personal. The only thing unguarded, as you saw Simp check it, is this outside street. It's all about timing here if you're Simp. Just checking whenever possible. There's the trophy. That's usually the green light signal that here come the nades. And Simp just steps right up. Thank you very much. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you have to be able to break it down better than that if you're LAG. Diamond Con still continues to build kills for streaks. Nine in a row now, but 10 seconds on the clock. He's going to get blindsided by Draza, and FaZe will take the round. I just don't like the way the Gorilla played that Me attack. Neither. Like, you're going into this A site with no info. You're instantly throwing a trophy out through the freezer door and just thinking that the bomb is so free. 
without having mid tank control, without putting pressure up through the water street, Atlanta Faze are just playing that perfect counter by not showing face at any of those positionings. And with only 20 seconds left, you were forced to commit over towards that A bomb and plays right into the hand of Atlanta Faze the way that they were set up. So able to stop the bleeding. I just think if you are the Gorillas, you got to use the information that you gain, not playing off a of blind stuff and just trying to make something happen. But they're still in the lead up 4 3. Atlanta Faze starting to climb back into the search and destroy. Back to the attacking side they go in. You can already see the adjustments from the Gorillas not taking control of Cafe. Atlanta Faze already got a read on it. Yep. This is all about trying to get Astral in towards Broken, which LAG will successfully do. But like you mentioned, free control at Cafe means that Atlanta are kind of, you have to think, like foaming at the mouth here, saying, all right, let's see if we can use this as a chance to break through mid. If not, maybe even just get right in towards A. And there's the cross, Assault tagged up. That's enough information for selling him to start, pardon me, for Simp to start making a play over. And now fame is caught. Oh boy. It, whoa, oh. big gunfight win. Abizi, I'm sure thought he had the freest kill of his life, but now all of a sudden your bomb carrier has dropped over the top at mid tank. And this timing play over towards B Street may determine the round for LAG if they can find this kill on to sell. Hey, because it's only 35 seconds left. Yeah. Selim has to try to win this one-on-one -on -one versus Estriel. But neither player has moved yet. Assault is able to find one through Water oh, Street. No. Selim, it's time for you to try to make a play. He finds one off the Diamond Con, but he should get traded here by Estriel. Trying to dance around with death, but eventually does get taken down. And that's the Gorillas securing the round. It came down to right off the rip of that round when Fame and Assault were able to team shot to just simply keep him alive. You find that first blow onto a BZ. That's the bomb carrier. So Atlanta Faze, a tall task to even receive that bomb and eventually work towards a bomb plant. But at that time, you know how invasion goes on the attacking rounds. That time just gets away from you. Not enough time to recover it. Work the objective. You allow the gorillas to pick you apart all around the map. And now they're at game point. Oh, yeah. Allie is shaking, Alan. <laughs> What's on sale today? <laughs> Let's see if there's any Prime Day sales. What does LAG do offensively? Oh. I was about to say, the A hit has been so unsuccessful for them. And now you just overwhelm the backside of B with nades. That converts for first blood. You know you got Draza caught out. Smoke comes through. But that actually provides a bit of alleviation here for Atlanta. They're able to get their defender out. And there is still a chance at a 3v4 here with Draza just kind of pixel peeking the ice cream door. Yeah, that smoke doesn't really cover a lot for LAG because you still have crossfires for Atlanta phase with both of those ARs, one in ice cream, one through the back door. But, you know, it's only a matter of moments before BZ decides to find a timing in through Dark oh. and Diamond Con in the perfect position to take him down. But I love this, Jay. LAG has cut all noise. Oh, I thought they were just going to try to create some doubt, see if they could get Atlanta phase rotating back over towards A. But action does continue over towards the B Street. Even trade, now 3v2. But keep your eyes salt. He's starting to feel a little frisky. And with more tags over towards Draza, did they see him cross? Does it make a difference? Assault gets there in time to find the kill. Just down to Selium for a 1v3. Fame's going to get this plant off. Assault watching over the top. You just have to play crossfire setup here. Just don't let yep. Cell do something amazing. Has to be the buddy system if you are the gorillas. Just play the trade scenario. You know that Selium is going to be playing for multiple gunfights with 35 seconds left. He has to get a move on it. Salt playing towards Water Bridge. Fame is in that dark patio position. If Cell can find this kill on towards Assault, maybe there's a chance, but oh, looks like Assault has just seen him. Yep, they're going to reposition around this. Create issues with the clock, with the time. Follow-up has also now been known. Cell has cleared a lot. Maybe there's enough time for him to force a couple of the gunfights, and Fame offers him his life, but the kills come through. And yeah, you can see it on Fame's player cam, just like a deep sigh of relief. And that series... May not make much of a difference towards Major 2 seeding for either squad, but wow, that goes a long way to reestablishing some confidence for LAG. Finally received some smiles on their face. Assault's like, I did not do nothing. Those final three maps, that was all you guys taking over. But LAG, man, we're talking about a story of David versus Goliath. I was talking to Bryce before the series started. How do I sell the dream? This is a perfect way to do it. LAG go up 2-0. You go, you go on two maps where Atlanta Faze don't really play them a lot. But then the next two maps, those are Atlanta Faze's bread and butters. They win the next two respawns. When you get to the game five, it's anyone's game. The fact that Diamond Khan decided to take over the way that he did. 2,300 damage. Earns a cruise missile to guarantee a round for the Gorillas. 
But every single time on the defensive setup, it was again the teamwork from the Gorillas on full display. They outclassed Atlanta Faze in both search and destroys. They got it done in that map number one, and Atlanta Faze don't play a lot. And I know, I know, Atley is sitting on that desk right now, pissed off. The fact that her hair is now going to be purple at Major 2 Hall. GG, let's go, Gorillas. <laughs> Was there, like, timeline stipulations on when she had to die? Because I'm not going to lie. Alley on the desk at Miami with purple hair is going to go a little crazy. It's going to be a vibe. Also, total bias caster for the entire Major, <laughs> if that's the case. But what a series. Flat out, Whoa. like... I don't think anyone had this at all. I mean, no, 1.8% of people <laughs> had this. So <laughs> clean stuff from LAG in both of the search and destroys. And now they tally on as one of the only other teams to beat Atlanta, not once, but twice in search and destroy. Unreal scenes. That does it here for map number five and our first series. As we get it back over to the desk and see how Allie's feeling. <laughs> <laughs> What's even worse is I literally have a hair appointment tomorrow. Like, I have a hair appointment booked for tomorrow to get a refresh before the major. And what am I going to tell her? Hey, um, by the way, what are your thoughts on doing purple? Neon purple. It's not going to be, no, it is here's, not going to be neon. Here's a purple scuff controller to go with your new hair. What Just use think? that as the example. <laughs> Alley Cat, welcome to the Purple Hair Club. And big thank you to her sponsor, Diamond Con. Absolutely. You better look over your shoulder all of Major 2 Diamond Con. I swear to you thought today, today to be the best player in the game? I mean, for LAG, I just think obviously the fact that they got their sub base in that map number one was incredible, but to win the search and destroy in the way that they did, they almost every single attacking round let the timer get down to 30 seconds before planting the bomb and still were managing to win these rounds. Listen, LG did a lot of things great, especially in the search and destroys. You know, you talk about that high rise Estri was going off making plays. It's a map that they've liked all season long for search and destroy. And then we get to this invasion, and this is the most impressive map of the series to me because Atlanta phases seven and two on this. You saw the way LG was playing their defense. It was beautiful. They had game yeah. playing towards the mid tank, sort of watching the A Street cross. We know how Atlanta phase likes to play. They send players over towards Cafe. They bait and switch, get a smoke down and try to plant it. They were not allowing that. The assistance was there. Assault didn't have a great map five, but he was staying alive on the deep street, just showing presence. Their defense was so good. And obviously when you're getting Diamond Con, getting, you know, stringing kills together, picking up a streak, you're going to have success as well. Some of the big clutches. Honestly, though, on the flip side of this for Atlanta phase, let me get serious for a second. Get serious. A lot of, I know a lot of people are going to be saying, oh, they were testing maps, this and that, the third, whatever. Bro. Optic in Toronto have been tested maps for three weeks. Right. They're not losing to LAG. So if there is an S tier and it's four teams, for me, in good conscience, Atlanta phase is at the bottom of that S tier, like fourth, because that is an unacceptable loss. Like they're, they're going to have to figure out some search and destroy going into this next match. Do you know what's weird? Yeah. They 3 0 Toronto Ultra. It's fair. It, uh, it's fair, but like if your floor is as low as losing to LAG, now granted, they play great, especially in the SDs. That is concerning going into the major. Let's see why Atlanta had so many issues, especially in that game five. It's your scuff play of the game. He was Diamond Con and Alley all match long, and he did it here to seal the deal. The purple hair is coming out in Miami thanks to plays like this. I mean, the 1v2 was just played so incredibly well. What's hilarious about it is we're sitting there watching him shoot that trophy, and we're like, oh, God, like now they know where he is. Like, you can't get this trophy shots to go in. He still manages to do so. Cook throws the need, wins the call in the guy in cafe, and then just outplays Selium because you know he's already weak in this play. I mean, just beautiful stuff from Diamond Con. Yeah, he didn't really give them an opportunity to win that round, right? Like, he pushed up, threw a grenade in the back right, blew up the trophy, and then it weakened Selium, and, like, if you're in Selium's position, you can't chow there. Like, in your mind, you're like, I cannot chow. Sim goes for the angle, and it's just a beautiful clutch. You can see the vibes there on the cloud nine. What I loved at the end of that match was Fame looking into the camera saying, we got one. We got one. They're on the board, and as you mentioned before, sometimes that's all it takes for you to turn it around for your team. Right now, it's time, though, to speak to Estro in our Monster Winner Spotlight. Estro, congratulations on a match no one thought you were going to take. Just 1.8% of the public put their bet on you. What was it like going up against FaZe today, and how did you guys play so loose? Uh, we just knew, we knew we had to like we had to play our game and just play just play just play loose, bro. We knew we had to come out and shoot like one of the best teams, and we we really wanted to get a dub on the board. We we've, we've been grinding, you know, that hasn't been showing on the win the win column. We we've been grinding, we've been working on stuff behind the scenes. And show we'll follow it up. Do you know I have to dye my hair purple now because you guys beat Atlanta Phase? 
Yeah, I heard. So <laughs> make sure you stick to that. I'm gonna out of the do it. Guys, I promise. So no. I promise. I'm doing it tomorrow. <laughs> I actually have my hair appointment, so I will have purple hair for major two. But to follow up with a more serious question, how has scrims been going for you guys? You know, obviously you've stuck with this roster even despite the adversity, and now you pull out this huge W over Atlanta phase. Like, how has practice been going for the LAG camp? Uh, honestly, to, our scrims have been getting better. Like, it hasn't been showing in like the matches. Like, we haven't been able to translate it, but our scrims haven't been on too bad, to be honest. Oh. Uh, Estrio, congrats on the win. I know that's got to feel good to see one go through the hoop headed into the next major. On an individual level, I feel like we've been waiting for you to take over. This was by far your best series. You had a 1.2, oh, yeah. the most damage on your team at 19,000 and the most kills as well. You were going off, man. What do you attribute that to, the turnaround today? Uh, just my teammates letting me get in good spots. Uh, I just been, I've been watching like a lot of VOD, just trying to see like what I can do in certain situations, and it paid off. Estriel, what are you looking forward to? We are just a few days from going down south to Miami. I'm, I'm ready to play back on land. We had a we had a pretty solid land. Looking to do even better than that, and just just uh, build on what we just did this one. Hey man, you have the 12 seed coming in. Now it's up <laughs> for grabs. We'll see where you land, but we're excited to see you back in action. All right, appreciate you. That's Estriel. That's the gorillas causing chaos here on the final day of qualifiers. One of our top four teams is not going to be wearing a top three seed. Atlanta falling short. That is an unacceptable yes. loss unacceptable. by Atlanta. It actually is. That it's was egregious. It's crazy. We have so much more awesomeness, including two more matches to go. But the big one is coming up at 6 o'clock. Perfect 6-0 Optic Texas taking on the 6-0 New York Subliners. When we come back, though, can Boston secure their spot in the top eight despite being at the bottom of the leaderboard? We find out as they take on Surge after this. your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League pack. Grab yourself the CDL operator, weapon blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. It's going on CDL TV, baby. <laughs> is so special. There's our first moving zone. two headshots they know that formal has gone vivid oh i think that's a bit of an over challenge um boy he goes to the defensive side nobody able to check the bomb crib ready for it nice shots or criminally now gonna find all four kills this is formal for the ace third four illy wraps back and it's formal with the ace 
I'm in the bridge, I'm in the bridge. Yeah, our bridge. Our bridge is shield. Dead by our stuff. I'm not sure if I'm getting old, but I swear to God, Joe, sometimes when Selium talks, all I hear is. Yeah. Enforcements are here now, attach. Here we he go. He flies on now, They're able to find a second one. Progress being made. All of the Rocker members here now. They can stack this, and it's going to go quickly. Ultra have to fly, but Frieza already there on the cuts. Fans, he's going to die to a trophy. It could be the Major 5 trophy. That just blew him up, but attach. Trying to hold on. Three flies over four as well. As well, attach with the pistol. Standing follows it up, and there. match of the day we have surge taking on boston and Allie, can the upsets continue today is boston up for uh, another trap game against a struggling surge i am not making any more bets for the rest of my life i believe Purple in seattle green. surge they're gonna go they're gonna do great today all right let's take a look here at our boston squad because this is a team that has taken optic to a game five deep in that search and destroy mm -hmm. they've taken some of the top squads the distance but if you look at their overall points they're at the very bottom of our league leaderboard. Just 40 points, that's four match wins this entire season. Yeah, we talked about it in the pre-show with Boston. You know, they made a change that looked good off the rip. I just feel like they haven't had opportunity to find momentum. They've had some tough matches, Chris. They played against Optic Texas, obviously went to a game five. Very winnable, they end up losing that, and then they played Atlanta phase. And now they got a match served up to them on a silver platter, where if they win it, they're in the winner's bracket. And the primary fo focus will have to be that search and destroy. For the Monster Energy pregame, where'd the hard point go? Started four and one in major two qualifiers are now four and five Yikes. 11th in holding at 64 percent and 10th in breaking some of the, some of the fundamentals that they need to work on obviously gonna be breaking to hold in this series and then also snd woes continue they're last in the league in search and destroy and there's some things that they can easily fix like they're last in opening dual win percentage they're also 10th in converting them so when they do get them they're not really winning the rounds and also they're 11th in rounds with plant. When they do plant it, they win the round majority of the time. They're third. So these little like fundamental things in search and destroy, just getting bomb downs, working together as a unit, finding that first blood. Communication needs to be better and they'll find success. That's a lot of issues there for Boston. Clean yeah. your stuff up is the key to victory for me. On the <laughs> other side for the surge, you gotta play loose, just like we saw from the gorillas. Come in here, show us what you've been practicing because 
Previous matches have not gone your way. There's no confidence in this camp, and I don't know if there's a leader right now in the starting lineup. No, I mean, you said that Boston Breeze has a lot going wrong, and they just need to clean it up. It's even worse somehow for Seattle Surge. When it comes to Monster Energy pregame, they're not very good at control, and that's definitely not going to help them in this series, because if Boston has any strengths, it's only going to be in those respawns. But I will say the last time they matched up against them, they were able to take a map for a hard point to force a game five and end up getting the W. So if their search and destroy stays on form, here in this series, there is a lot of opportunity for them to take it. All right, Nameless, follow me here. We're looking at some historic matches. Surge's only win was against LAG. They 3 0 LAG, who just 3 2 to Atlanta. So, uh, can Surge do it against Boston here today? Yeah, I mean, they absolutely can. I, uh, Boston is at best the middle of the pack team, and as of recent, Seattle's looked better. Uh, Booze has been playing good in the response throughout this stage, so it's certainly possible. All right, it's time to make our Scuff Pick'ems official, and I'm going to kick this one off. Despite just four match wins on the entire season, Boston has shown me they have substance. They can get it done tonight. I completely agree with you. I'm going to go with Boston Breach in this series. Breach, Breach! I'm going with Boston as well. I think they take this one. All right, Serge, sorry. No one believes in you today, but no one believed in the Gorillas. Anything can happen as it's time to get match number two started. Fellas, take it away. Thank you very much. Desk, we're quite, you're not that green. I thought you were going to be green. Look, in, blue. it's super green. Yeah, I don't understand. Look, I'm wearing pine green just for the record. I don't want any leprechauns after me. I'm okay. So happy St. Patrick's Day. I need brighter colors. You do. Well, brighter colors we have in this matchup, though. We've got that lovely teal of Seattle Surge and that very vibrant green here on St. Patty's Day of Boston Breach. It's going to be a good one. Welcome, ladies and gents, to our, what? Uh, maybe not as a wildly as exciting series uh, as, as yes as the previous one but we don't know what's going to happen here that's the bottom line again the desk thinks boston's going to walk away this one seattle surge let's see what they've got and boston breach by the way are bringing the extra intensity because this is a winner's bracket deciding match if you are a carolina ravens fan you're rooting for seattle more than you've rooted for anyone in your entire life Whereas Boston, if they win, well, they do make it in with that three and four record. So Boston, a team, they're going to be feeling the pressure. And I know what a lot of people might be thinking of like, okay, well, if you make it to the winner's bracket round one, you're still playing a top four team. And for most teams towards the bottom, that's an early exit. Boston Breach has been one of the few teams to actually showcase their abilities against the top squads. I mean, they're one of the only teams to actually beat Toronto Ultra. So Boston are certainly dangerous if they can make it to winners. And Asim was just playing through that entire series in his head. That was the most intense focus I've seen in a very, very long time. Hard point metrics, though, coming into this matchup. This is as of the Major 2 qualifiers only. Break percentage very, very low there for Seattle Surge chance, and the average margin for both these squads, not fantastic. Surge with a clear-cut lower record. Is that going to come into play today? I absolutely could be a factor, especially a 9% on the break percentage is Radius incredibly man. low, so not ideal. Uh, the maps that we have for Hardpoint as well, Karachi and Skid Row, uh, you know, a couple of hills on Karachi for sure, but Skid Row especially, you got to stay ahead of the rotation, so certainly be on the lookout for that. Seattle may be a little more important for them to be ahead of the game. I know. Very, very excited to see how this one goes, and this is how things have gone. The MW2 stuff with the M2. <laughs> Major two standings here on MW3. What a tongue twister that was. Both of our teams here, 7th and 11th respectively. We'll see if Surge can net themselves some extra points and change their standings so far. Again, for the Carolina Royal Ravens, a very, very important series. You've never rooted harder for Boston Breach before. Speaking of Major 2, it's taking place next week. For those folks in the area, we hope you're already driving down to make the trip. For those folks who are willing to book a last-minute flight ticket, get going. Grab that QR code right there. Major 2, Miami Heretics are running the show presented by Gamergy. It's going to be a fantastic time. We all make our way down there on Tuesday. We know the life now of a pro player. Thanks to the stories from our, our boys up there on the desk. But it's going to be a lot of fun. We cannot wait to get down to Miami and bring the noise. Hope to see you there too. It's going to be fantastic indeed. Back to the Boston Breach versus Seattle Surge. Shots. Seattle Surge. Tough run of things as of recent. Will this be the turnaround for him? Well, they just have like, you know, they have like these random signs of life. You have them down in the dumps and then all of a sudden Hook is just going to go and break like the first uh, record on an invasion s and I mean, they were successful in their last series as well. So, yes, it's been generally a downtrend, but occasionally these guys do have uh, that pop off potential. Hook is like the ultimate wild card. I think that we have in the CDL of like he can make those wild plays where you're watching him and like only a crazy person would do that. And then he's also one of the players 
players that makes it work. So a dangerous threat on the map. Uh, one of the better stats I think we have in the CDL, Abuza right now. Most clutches in SD across wow. the board. And I mean, that's not enough for me to say that he is the most clutch player. Right now, I'd say that is going to be uh, insight. But nonetheless, he has been in that category. So a few dangerous elements to the squad. You've had more time with Bregi as well to get the vibes flowing. So maybe a, a few small positive things to look out for Seattle. I think it for Seattle's time is uh, many of these teams we've seen in the lower side of the board have made a lot of changes in this build up to Major 2. Some of them are finding success, not necessarily all of them. LA Thieves, one of those teams we've seen uh, find a little bit more success. We've had two crazy series from them in the last couple of days. Boston Breach, though, a squad that didn't make a tremendous change of scene, is doing everything he possibly can to get things going. Snoopy, the wonder kid who made his debut at Champs last year, has been having a solid run of things so far. Priester as well, world champion coming this season with a lot of uh, a lot of haters to, to, to doubt with. And Slasher again, a man who's been around the block plenty. Chance, this is a squad that has all the makings of a very, very solid team, but they have yet to really get things going on MW3. And it is also a squad that you expect to get a little better on land. Like Slasher was throwing up some wild numbers at the Boston home major and absolutely overperformed compared to the online performances. And if this is a team that you expect to get better on land, again, winner's bracket would be a fantastic place for these guys to start on top of the fact that 10 CDL points can go such a long way. But Karachi Hardpoint just to kick the series off. And obviously for Boston, it has been a pain point for these guys all year. Even when they're rotating the hills, one of the worst teams in the great or one of the worst teams in the game at actually holding on to them. And when they're not rotating, they're not too fantastic at breaking either. So Boston have their work cut out for them and maybe an opportunity for Seattle to get that early edge. Well, let's find out how things go. Karachi, so far a lovely start here for the boys in green. Boston, we'll find out for the luck of the Irish is on their side. And yes, we will say luck of the Irish all day long here, friends. You best believe it. Kills again there from Slasher and Asim as that P1 hard point is very green indeed. Oh yeah, you got Surge maybe looking for a four leaf clover because luck has not been on their side on the opening break. Hook though, able to at least break through and go towards P2. So on the rotation front, Hook has the opportunity to do some damage, but on the actual hill, Boston still are going to be collecting that time, but that is three kills now in a row. Hook has a little bit of help as well from Breggi. So again, on that rotation battle, that is what Seattle need to have locked on key. And for the moment, not going to get it. Absolutely picked apart. Nobody finding any corners to hide in. Breggi, last man standing. And his position is now known. Great stuns out of Slasher, but not enough to get the kill. But you see the players right now for Boston surrounding Breggi. There's nothing he can do. Uh, he tried his best, breaking contact on the player of the dumpster and now trying to keep a hold of that P2 side of the map was the game plan, doesn't work out. Breach now set up for success. P1 was so solid. In a P2 we go. Hook and Breggi flying through check-in. Slasher doing what he can. Damage another second through the front door they fly and Abuza finds the kills alongside Hook and RC. That's lovely work from Seattle. What a break. Yeah, that is the classic Boston moment. They win the rotation, they get the hill, and then they just drop it almost immediately. So they still have a, a nice lead in this game, but their inability to hold on to time, certainly the thing that is going to be punishing for them. And of course, on the rotation, while their holds haven't been strong, neither have their breaks. In Seattle, at least two players going to be around Cooper back time. I think RCDs, though, feels the pressure, knows they don't have enough on the map. So he's going to back down, play a credit corner, and really just try to hold on to these spawns. Yeah, this is an iron grip right now. Surge, not enough players here. It's fingertips as opposed to the full palm. And it's one kill from Arsties before being traded out. Hook now all alone, surrounded. Hello. Whoa, an awkward fight against Priester. Manages to win it, manages to stay alive. Keeps things a little bit interesting. A little bit of damage. Hook capitalizes, keeps the play going as he's getting this done all alone right now. Uh, this is beautiful work. I mean, the nade is on point, hunting these players down. And again, for Boston, they did all the correct work to try to go and get those spawns, but they just could not deal with Hook. So things remain mixy on P3. Snoopy's made his way towards the time, but it is still a trade fest around the point. Abuza able to pick up two, get back inside of the hill. And again, for Boston, not able to stabilize even when things are going well. Who just completely obliterates you? And well, his team this time was there to pick him up. Yeah, don't worry about that first P1 and P2. The boys of Seattle over by the cafe have got themselves those sweet, sweet carbs. And now they're enjoying the nutrients of this hard point. Lead change for a brief moment. And that is going to be that. Looking towards new. And it's all Boston this time round. Will anyone from Seattle be able to get over to that side of the map towards the south side of the street? Get things going. 
Yes, he'll be waiting for his teammates before he can actually go and collect this time. You're going to have to play for kills just to get that initial break. Slasher able to stay alive, but a seam is going to fall. And by the looks of the, the TDM game, Seattle coming out on top. Now you can make the move to actually go and collect this time. Abuza finds his hiding spot behind the barrels. He's got a trophy. Everything Seattle want to have happen on this hill. So far, so good. And that trophy ringing in his ears right now very much will be helping him against anything that comes his way that is unfriendly. First thing to come his way, though, is Slasher. The trophy doesn't open whatsoever. Who? Oh, nearly gets the second as Slasher breaks the hard point alone. A 15-second prize for him as we go over towards the next. This is four players from Seattle. They're going to be very fast attacking. Only two defenders right now for Boston. So, got to find a way to play your guarantees. The teamwork's coming through as well. Priest and Snoopy getting things Damn. done. Hook, last man standing in a relatively close spawn here for Surge too, so they can keep the pressure on because Hook, again, you see is behind enemy lines, the constant problem on the map. Hook's having one of those games, man. Everywhere he goes, it just works out for him. Watch out, Slasher. You know what you're dealing with. It's a little bit of magic. The Cod Gods have smiled upon him today. Will they keep the play alive for him now? As Boston into the hard point, the ring around a rosy is complete. Hook, haha. -ha. The mad titan pays off for the patience. Five streak now for Slasher, looking to get himself streaks. After T's caught slightly unaware. There it is, a cruise for Slasher. Yeah, Slasher making the smartest decision you possibly can when you're playing against Duke. If you try to hunt him down, you're going to have a horrifically bad time. Just let him run past you. Shoot him in the back. Play for the freebie. Even if you have to overcommit. And the freebie kills that Slasher was playing for, he has converted that into a cruise missile. So for a team that has struggled on rotations, struggled on the holds as well, that piece of utility can be extremely useful later in this game. You see the opening break, though, for the new P1 time. Surge will get here first, but you have bodies for Boston all over this map. Well, the bodies are about to hit the floor for Surge right now as the cruise makes its way smack bang into P1. Looking at the usual power positions. Doesn't necessarily connect, but that's because the teammates found the kills elsewhere. Hook Reggie, though. They, oh, dear. Clean house. Asties joins them. So Boston, the streak connects. Doesn't do a whole lot. The hard point, once again, back in the hands of Seattle Surge. Let's go for a quick listen with Boston Breach and see how they bounce back from that play. Yeah, Alex yeah, Alex 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 mid lane, mid lane. Mid lane. Mid lane. Mid lane. I've seen bridge. I've seen bridge. Mid my push up. Shot time, shot time. Mid lane, heady. No, he's not. Top fire. Low bridge, top fire, low fire. Low bridge, low fire, one shot. Low fire, one shot. Oh, I have to read out. He went low red. He went low red. Okay, three of them. Target, target, from us, from us. From us, dead. And she's out. He's on me, top belt, top belt. But he's going for it, going for it. I think I'm a little fire. I think yeah. I'm a little fire, bro. I have little pillars. I'm in a weird spot right now. I'm a little fire. Trying to get all the flank. It could be from pet vending. Okay. I'm going to yeah, yeah, top it. I'm going to top it. I'm going to top it. I'm going to top it. I'm holding the grass. I'm almost already like low vending. I don't see him. There's two right. Two right flanking tin. One's two. One's two. Two guys are one shot. Two going to be tin, guys. There's two fire. Two fire. Grass then. Nice. I'm going to top it. Top it. Top it. He might jump down. Yo, top it. Yo, top it. I'm going to be tin. They're going to be tin. They're going to be tin. They're going to Cubby, that nice. 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 Top fire rainbow. Let's see the top, top rainbow. One shot. I spawned out. P dog. Yeah, he's already jumped. Already jumped. Okay, this is a good time. He's on me. On me. Old. One's grass. Alright, I'll get a set of break. break. You might go B cut on hold. you. Not low green. I'm gonna go top 10. Might go B cut on ACs. I'm gonna fold this one. I'm gonna play this guy. Yeah. You got to go. Uh... Calm communication from Boston Breach. Not necessarily too uh, far forward in their game plan, but I felt like everything got through there, Ian. I felt I had the complete awareness of where everyone was on the map. Yeah, it's definitely comms where everybody can think as it's going through. But, uh, you know, I, the Toronto comparison, I think, would be a bit too far sort of thing as far as oh, hell no. of, like calm and efficiency and whatnot. A lot of gunfights, by the way, that they are just struggling with. Comms aside, just the gunny in the teamwork right now for Boston. Maybe just slightly behind. They're currently getting outslayed by just a few kills, looking to bring things back. But this has been a hill for Abuza. He's been on point. Finally gets dropped in Boston. At least get the clearance to attempt to the final 20 seconds who though always has something to say constantly behind you always a nuisance he's 22 and 14 and frankly the pressure that he has brought has been outstanding setting his teammates up maybe for the double kill bridge can't get it but over towards new at least bridge control is in the hands of seattle but at early time the only team going to be able to get it is boston if they want it wow new half points up 
the last time we were in the street. It was solid for Seattle Surge. Can I get the lead back now? Arcee's throwing the bomb side out of the monster energy fountain. Gets a two-piece down there, baby, as well. Slash is up next. He tries to stay alive. The region will help a lot. That stun's not going to help, though. No one in the hard point just yet. And it's just problem after problem for Arcee's in this life. Not able to get forward. Reggie. Top third is now his. 35 seconds to go, and Boston finally get in there. Not a terribly profitable hill. Not at all. I mean, this is both teams struggling. This might be worst case for Boston as well. Number four versus number eight are going to have a battle potentially for spawn. So awkward timing is coming through on the opposite side of the map. For the final 20 seconds, though, Surge, this is great time for them to be able to get. You see, a CM ends up coming out on top of the rotation battle. Breggy, the last man standing for Surge. And in the meantime, Boston actually took Surge off the scrap as well. So Boston right now flipped the map on its head, be annoying at the old time, and have set themselves up for new but still mixing this on the spawn front snoopy is vaguely behind enemy lines abuza the opportunity maybe to rip a player and get him off this time but he does not yet have any support from his teammates yeah no support if he dies in this situation as well it's essentially a waste there. that's what he wanted the timing is there here comes surge the reinforcements an unfortunate nade but he's still got plenty of players around here snoopy though cuts him down good work out of boston breach not necessarily a bad move from surge just breach handling business and that's a wonderful hold on the hard points still Hook, though, trying to keep this forward position now. Reinforcements through the bottom side of the hotel. Slasher guns them down. It's two. Hook now on the back line. It's no more for him. Snoopy stays alive. Will he get his second? He does. Unbelievable workout of Breach as they are starting to heat up here on Karachi. Uh, man, things are looking sloppy, but these players are gliding around the map right now. Snoopy with the smooth moves, but we go again. It is only a 40-point game between these two teams. Anybody can win it. And Asim is playing just such a distant angle as well. It might be good enough for the freebie on RCDs, but RCDs actually get to kill before he falls. So Surge still in the time. So many directions to look though. Hook just dancing around. Snoopy able to drop him. Boston back inside of P1. This is their opportunity to put the stamp on the game. A Snoopy versus Hook fight is very high input, high intensity fights. Boston breach, hard point. 225 now. It's 25 for the win. Luke's trying to clear these players out. Slash with a perfect coverage. Overwatch from the top AC. And he's keeping the players at bay. No one close. Snoopy's in the time. Surge once again held back. Nobody getting in whatsoever. It is a watertight defense from Boston Breach. These are the final five. Here we go. Surge, get in there if you can. It has been an immaculate hold. Final five once again. A boozer last man. And from the top rope, Slasher looking to get streaks once again, but he'll take the map win happily. Boston Breach, map number one. 251 79 in the end, not particularly close, but that was definitely a back and forth battle for quite some time. It did certainly feel like Boston was typically like ahead of the game, ahead of the rotations in the better spots, but it was just like the difficulty of containment of like Hook, especially constantly behind enemy lines, constantly making plays to like go and get these breaks and amount of call outs of like oh we're missing one who is it hook okay well he's behind us good luck trying to find him in these moments but outside of the hook containment process everybody else on seattle maybe just struggling a little bit so see there in the damage numbers a drop off after hook and I mean, meanwhile slasher 27 and 17 able to cruise missile that really wasn't effective in the slightest but outside of a few small moments here and there boston handling on karachi business as usual well, nothing uh, too wildly surprising. I think the, the major question mark for me is can Hook continue to be as annoying and as devastating in game uh, as he has been so far in this map for the rest of the series? For Boston, though, again, it is just making sure you continue to keep calm, steady the ship, continue the course that you're on. Because so far, so good. A commanding lead in the hard points there. And ultimately, chance, I don't think any moments where things were very, uh, very much in trouble for them. Not that Surge were looking bad, but Boston just very, very composed. Yeah, I, a few opportunities on certain hills here and there, but especially like the, you know, the rotation into the junk hill from the street where Boston are doing a good job of getting the players off the scrap time while they're winning the rotation battle. Boston just had more of those moments where they're winning sort of that two front war, but I just know looking at some of these highlights, Hook really just is a force of nature to play against. Like the kill where he had, where he's leaping over the dumpster to chow you in oh, spawn. Dude. 
Instead of taking the freakiest gunfight of all time and forcing you to jump over just a miserable spot to be in, he just flies at you and kills you before you have a chance to think about it. So it is truly a different experience, but the experience map number one, again, back and forth battle for a bit, but eventually the final few hills, Boston again, one super solid rotation and they're able to run away with the game. Very much so. Game flow there of our first hard point. Toast done. Boston Breach will take that lead. Again, we'll see what kind of hook shows up for the rest of the series. This could be a very, very interesting one indeed. Looking at our series, though, folks, we say goodbye to Karachi. How did he ho to Terminal? Invasion control after that. And if we have to go the distance, that's Skidro and Karachi for the hard point and the search and destroy. No Rio hard point or search in this series whatsoever or invasion when it comes to the hard point and search. I was quite looking forward to a bit more Rio, especially between these two teams. Again, the kind of Snoopies and the hooks of the world. I want to see these more fast and furious games. Uh, but instead, we're going to get it, you know, on every other map. But we'll see how the terminal goes chance any sort of high level calls here brother well it's just a very interesting map for boston to be playing right we saw them against texas on terminal a few weeks ago and they looked fantastic got a 6-3 victory the strats were on point then we saw them against atlanta phase and they got 6 would on the exact same map and it was the first time atlanta had played it so there's a uh, some mixiness i would say on the side of boston and then for seattle their best SMB map by a mile. They got a five and one record on it. Admittedly, a lot of that is with a different roster, but Surge has been happy. If they can grind out terminal, they absolutely will. Overall, throughout the major two qualifiers, it's been a better edge for SMB for Surge in the meantime, anyway. So they are absolutely looking for the bounce back. Yeah, these are the uh, ingredients of that mixy recipe for Search and Destroy so far. Again, both teams, oh, I suppose Boston, not really. That record is tough. Two and six. The ranks are not necessarily on their side, but the conversion rates very, very close indeed. We'll see how that goes. Stats are one thing, but once you do get into the game, once you load in, once you flip that first patty in Burger Town or visit the Scuff Duty Free Store, smack bang in the middle of Terminal, baby. Everything changes. Here we go. Map number two, Terminal SD. And this is also a map where you better make sure you come with like an explicitly good game plan. RCDs has been very respectable in the game mode, but he's got that sort of standard. You know how he's going to play. I think Hook is going to be the player that you have to make sure you contain. Hook will absolutely full send it, run at you through library, go on wild flanks. And that's what Boston, I think, when they're doing the bot review, have to be hyper aware of as already just running it down through the plane. Sasha gets the first blood, but this could just be overwhelming force to get this A site. Indeed, the plane is clear. Snoopy at the very back end of it. And for Abuza now, it's nice angles. Oh, the frag bounces right off of Breggy's chest. That's not going to be a problem whatsoever, but it is for Snoopy, who's down and out 3v3. Now you got Intel on two different players, I believe. One Eskies, one down terminal, so... They're not going for the bomb just yet. Maybe with some vaccinates potentially to come through. They're going to be playing for the kills, and that is a moment of teamwork that you hate to see it unless you're a Boston fan, in which case, hey, great news. Now you got a 3v1 in Breji pinned in the back of the map. Nowhere to go. And instead of playing the objective and getting the bomb down, they went for the kills, but they got them on each other. That's tough. We got a replay. Because these things happen, and it takes one or two tiny little movements to ruin a beautiful thing. Asim gifted the two-piece there. Hoop knew something was up. A boozer did as well. They both checked it, and they paid the price dearly. Asim walks away with two on the round, and a great start there for Breach. And who knows what happened on the communication front, but it looked like Abuza had the intel, so he's calling for some help. So Abuza wants to play it nice and slow. Take your time for the freebie kill. Hook. He's challenging. He's going to get that kill as quick as he can. So uh, an awkward display of two different play styles, but Boston for it. Now taking things slow. Sasher again, ripping somebody for the first blood. Two for two on that front. Now it's just a matter of conversion. Boston, plenty of time to work with. It's a patience. Flashes. Oh, ah, that's enough. so unfortunate for Priester. Snoopy, though. Ooh. Nearly as unfortunate for he, but the teamwork there for Boston pays off. It's the patience, as I've saved for Slasher. The man knows to sit, hold the iron, find those kills. And here we go. Pressure on towards the A-bomb site. Bomb in hand. It's a 3v2. Yeah, but not so patient for this. So Call of Duty timing at its finest. Two gets traded out. Slasher there. Teamwork right now. Coordination on point. Two versus one. You're flying it through the ramp, but the long slide is enough to bait the player in between the Boston guys. So that is a credit to Slasher on that round absolutely making plays i mean he's there for the trades on the guy down low but just making sure you slide all the way across to make sure you don't line up in the plane 
Slash are putting on right now these first two rounds. Yeah, indeed. See if you can get another first blood. He's two for two so far. And they've been very, very impactful. I will say the Seattle Surge roster is not a tremendous amount of post-game chatter we can see. I think it's very much, you know, they know exactly what they want to do each round. And they sort of let that fly. Or maybe it's one or two word <laughs> calls. Operation Condor. Time for the fork. Slasher. No first blood this time. Priestess seals it. That was a big win. They got the information. Snoopy going to follow up as well. And a two versus four now for Seattle, where you're forced to make a move. You got some damage down, but look how quick Priesta is in the hallway to make sure you go and get those trades. It's bombed down. RC's last man standing, and they know exactly where he is. That is another beautiful round for Boston. And again, just going to be playing with them, trying to trap him in. Slasher's got the intel. Maybe a double flank coming through, or just line him up in a uh, library. Might have been spooky, but... With the weakness there for Marcides and Slasher able to help through the cockpit as well. Nothing you can do. Another beautiful hit from Boston. That's just enough. And a seam walking away with his life barely there. That could have been a very awkward lineup moment again here on Terminal, but Boston breached, luck of the Irish on their side, which we now have a two count for. They managed to survive once again. Good looks here from Boston on Terminal. <laughs> I can only hope one of these teams have the uh, the Leprechaun assassination on. It is one of my personal favorites. This is going to be a hard uh, B hit. There you go. Smoke's out. Running it down through the smoke. That was seen tagged up. No trades coming through except the team trades. The teamwork right now of Seattle doing their very best to help out Boston, making it to winner's bracket, possibly giving them another round. Awkward timing, though. In the hallway is Hook hiding. Slasher, he's made his way past, but this oh, is God. just an information battle. Slasher. Might be able to get a couple free kills. There you go. There's one, and he might be able to get a few more. Oh, big shots. Not enough. Varsity's nice snap. He's tagged up big time. I see him just lay still here, mate. You're about to get another. I'm not sure if he saw the final player down in the bottom side of Eskies, but Arsties now has to make something happen. 1v2, as I can only imagine how unbelievably uncomfortable it would be to crawl up an escalator like that. I mean, that's ab strength. That is just, yeah, you're a, a sadist if that's the type of thing that you enjoy. Or masochist would be the correct word. But a 1v2, they know he was trapped in Eskies a while back. And that is just simply a corner that a seam has that you are never oh, going wow. to check. This is looking like another unwinnable round for RCDs. He's gone for the, the Harry Potter under the stairs. He's living there right now. No way. What a fantastic spot to be in as Boston Breach once again find themselves looking very happy indeed in the player cams. And it's a uh, good play calls too, not just for the spot from the scene, but after Slasher dies in the plane, he is calling out, hey, it's the guys over by Eskies. Plane is wide open. So it seems sticks around just to be a nuisance, plays for the late kills. That pays out perfectly. And his teammate Priesta just high tailing it over and getting the bomb down on the opposite side of the map. So you got to be quick to make those calls and, and breach. I haven't been feeling the heat too much. Two rounds for Seattle where the team kills really been a benefit to Boston for a lead. They do sting. The boozer's right in that corner of Burger Town for now. Slasher with a cross as well. So lovely setup here from Boston Breach. All angles covered. No one's going to move too much. It's Surge. They have to get something going. Hook. Across the catwalk. Brace with the opening salvo there. Again, not a whole lot's going to happen for a while here. So everybody stay cozy. Oh, we'll check back in in a moment. For Boston, no one's taking the bait, right? You and Abuza playing a deep angle, waiting for someone to roll through, but that hasn't been the case. Slasher getting intel. Three players, basically, around the Dream side of the map. You almost feel like you know that the bomb is going to be going over towards A. The plane is open, though. So many players in the terminal. Snoopy can wall bang this, but not always easy to get a kill. But with plane exposed, that means Boston trusting their retake. He's seeing a lot of information. The player on the stairs as well there, but that bomb's got to go down quick. 25 seconds. The slasher, he's about to board, and he's going to find that someone is in his seat. Three players will be in the wrong seats right now. Surge, we've got full control. Will he check this patiently? He did on the hop. Reggie. Oh, wins the fight. A big one. That's the first blood, and that's the bomb down. And now this looks very different for Boston. Yeah, playing the slow angle. A little bit of time to work with on the retake, though. Still a couple stuns maybe to work with for Snoopy as well. But nice play out of Hook. 
the crazy man jumping out of the back plane and out for a seam has to go hunting for him but hook always willing to pull the disappearing act do you check these corners or does hook just move and give it to you for free yes he does but it is still a one versus four effectively for a seam with no time you just want to play for the cruise can you get the cruise though it's a simple a simple kill 10 seconds to get it these players are going to have to vacate the plane eventually they don't opt for the emergency slide he might be able to catch them still but a very very good bit of work here from seattle surge to take the round and finally get themselves on the board four to one better late than never and great plays as well i mean breggy gets the first blood i think breggy was probably just staring into the window waiting for that like check to come through so he gets the first blood on slasher and then again hook the absolute wild man jumping out of the back of the plane his spidey senses were tingling and he had the timing perfect and it's a kill like that that virtually just wins you the round so hook again making plays but a scene we know on the quest on the hunt looking for one freebie kill or maybe just gonna lead the charge straight into the plane wants to play a, a slight off angle see if he can catch this guy off guard yeah and this is so tense man you're playing for that streak i do believe he's he's not running the covert sneakers he got there a little faster and now it's just a moment of who whose will is stronger oh hook he's doing what hook does he's pushing the opportunity and here we go a gentle thud across hook oh dives into it and it's a perfect trade for the cruise happy to take that if you're boston he might be making the play too actually no i take it back look at the corner brezzy he's got the uh the distant one you're gonna see this on the cross he's gonna spot out too the guy on top of the plane yep rcds gets the freebie you play off the comms perfectly and obviously they know where soupy is they've got him stunned in the Ooh. back rcds though chased a ghost and well you got a 2v2 so you mess up briefly boston the opportunity to win another round they're gonna be fast though Breggy's the dead silence is still active. He's going to run into Priester. Oh, he runs Priester over now. Down to Snoopy. Oh, stays alive on the outside of the plane. The guessing game begins now. Breggy, can he deal with him before the health regen? Oh, dear. No, he does not now. The guessing game begins. Will he dive directly under the bomb as Snoopy's taken a bit of a route himself? Well, and Breggy shot too. Breggy shot in the hallway. So Snoopy just takes the route and it gets handed away to him. Breggy, I don't know why he shot in that moment, what was going on in the comms, but even before that, he saw two players cross. RCDs gets the one on the guy in the back of the plane, and they even had Snoopy stunned. And somehow, in just the chaos, I suppose, RCD drops out, looks the wrong direction, and just eat another round from Boston. Almost gets handed to him. Even for the first blood. I mean, Slasher is just the sacrificial lamb, but... A seam is playing on a five, playing hardcore for the trades, and it just gets the golden gift right to him. You got a cruise. Got more gifts going the way now towards the V-bomb site. Surge have had enough of this shenanigans. They're trying to send it. It's an aggressive war of trades. They managed to come out on top and relatively safe. But high ground to play with here as Asti's, my word, gets away with his life. Slash is still in a fantastic position to pick up more of these kills. Here comes the cruise. A seam will definitely make the outside of the map that it's safer. Will he bend it? Oh, just misses the angle. The boozer stays alive for now, but Slash is still able to pick up a few more. Life advantage, Boston. Still got the comms that someone was in a corner. Now, though, Abuza trying to make the play. You're a man down. You have to do something bold, and Abuza finds the timing. Slasher, though, going hunting, and he gets gunned. Abuza out here making the play. Dodges the cruise, stays alive. Bridgie wins the fight, and Surge. They take the round into their own hands. They stay through what was a seemingly impossible situation. That 3v3 looked real ugly. They made it a thing of beauty. And there's that teamwork. It is the uh, the old duo, Breji and Abuza. Finally, the opportunity for those two to work together, getting things done. But Abuza again, a cruise missile gets called in. They're going to have the intel on exactly where you are, but he just pierces through bottom AC, gets the quick kill, and repositions too fast. And... I mean, I will say Slasher did quite literally have the drop on him, but that Renetti in the hands of Abuza, too clean. So Seattle, that is great news. Got rid of the cruise. Now you're triple stacking the correct site. What a time to go for this blind counter. Smokes route. It's going to be chaos, but it seems so difficult to move forward. He's by himself up here. Oh, they're so close. They can smell each other. Trades. Hook's still alive. Priester. They're going to back on out. Boston will cut their losses. They get one each. 
and they retreat. Surge not pressing the advantage just yet. The A-bomb site, though, they've definitely been spotted now. Can they reinforce the back line? Beautiful shots from Slasher. Asti's beaten to the race. That's going to be the plant, and that is a huge advantage now for Boston. This could be the map. Yeah, mid-round adjustments again from Boston completely on point, and now it is just the wide pinch coming through. This is Operation Do Not Scam. Priesta has the intel on one player. Breggy is unknown, but he just gives oh. away his position, so no. you know where the two players are. He nearly got the wall bang just for that little bit of info, and now through the front door, Priesta might go back for it. Nice timing. Nice shots. Not enough for the second. Hook now has to do something simply unbelievable. A 1v2. He's equipped for it. And the smoke... Say that, boys and girls, smokers die younger. Boston Breach. They take the search and destroy, and they go up 2 0 in the series. Man, and that's a tough moment, too, because, like, they actually cleared out the correct side of the plane. You take down Priesta, it's both players trapped on the other side, and instead of challenging together, they just die one by one. So, the chemistry and coordination for Seattle, a struggle point there on terminal, not able to orchestrate anything. But for Boston, the mid round adjustments completely on point. They just showed their hand at the start of the round with the smoke strat. Even though a seam gets traded out, it was instantaneous from Slasher. Bolt through the plane. I don't care if he sees me on the cross. I'm flying out the back and I'm going to chow. And just on the timing front, Boston ahead of the game. Beautifully played across the board for Boston. Everybody getting involved. The first blood's on point. And again, the execution when they needed it on terminal delivered. So maybe a, a slightly deeper map pool for Boston that we're used to. Terminal, not looking too bad. Not looking too bad whatsoever. 6-2, that final score. We're invasion control now as we go to uh, a very, very different setting and very different kind of game mode. You name it, we can forget what happened in the first two maps if you're a Seattle Surge fan and see how this one goes. Trying to get to that Skid Row hard point. That's obviously changed quite a lot. Spawn's looking very different these days. Karachi S&D at the very end of this series if we can get there. Seattle Surge sorely need it. Ravens, though, don't need it whatsoever. They're very happy for Boston Walker with this stuff, but we'll see how that one goes. Ravens fans in the chat, I'm sure you're there. We're now going to throw to a very quick commercial break. When we return, it's time to play Control on Invasion. It's Seattle Surge. It's Boston Breach. This is the CDL. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL.
Bradley Hone, everyone. Welcome back to the Call of Duty League. Almost ready to get into map number three here. It's the Al Surgeon Boston Breach. We've got ourselves a good time ahead of us. A uh, great time ahead of us next week, though. Don't forget, friends, you can join us at Major 2 down in Florida. Miami Heretics hosting it, presented by GamerG. QR code on screen. But you knew that because you know what a QR code is. The difficulty, though, is what do you scan it with if you're watching this on your phone right now? That's the challenge. That's a problem for you to solve and for us to find out about on Twitter. Boston Breach, Seattle Surge, almost ready to get in a map three chance. Chance is muted. I, what no, I'm not so... muted. I, no, I'm taking my time to think of how I want to approach these control <laughs> metrics. That's all I'm doing because you have a one in five record for Seattle and it's a situation where they need this to stay alive in the series. So much like Surge, I'm gathering my thoughts. I'm collecting myself to make sure I'm prepared for this map three where, of course, Boston feeling pretty comfortable. You got a lead. Both the map wins have been super solid. Everybody's shooting their guns and the teamwork has been flowing. So Boston just want to get this done quick 3-0 fashion and book their flights to Miami. I stitched so fast there. I went for the instant knock. You saved it very well. What a professional. Let's find out who the professionals are in this next one, though. Ready to load in. Surge, so close yet so far in both of the maps so far. Invasion control, though, a very different look every single time. Let's see how we go. The monster energy <laughs> area of the map. I love that we put logos in game, by the way. This is something that we've been doing for a, a hot minute now, but I just love it. It's given so much more character for these maps for us, and I'm getting so carried away with this one. Just get me into the game, dude. Priest is an absolute demon. The 1.20 there. That's 30 and 12. The boy's a monster. I will say it is a little bit funny seeing the scuff logo next to like the United States Embassy logo as well. So uh, not the synergy I was expecting, but damn it, if it doesn't work, just like the opening break <laughs> does here for Seattle yeah. Surge. Hook flying straight at you with the Renetti. And honestly, that just might be the B zone locked up and under control. It's going to be a booza by himself with a slow capture, but this is just free rain time for Hook to run around, pick up some errant kills and really just work on potentially draining those lives. There's number three in a row. This is worst case scenario. It sucks when Hook is behind you. Oh man, it sucks. Oh my God, he's just got players everywhere and I do love it. Tyler Garland is on a whirlwind moment. Ah, he unfortunately slams that door. Snoopy hears him, guns him to bed, that's that. But in the meantime, we did get two segments on B. We've nearly completed the capture. Nice bit of work there from Boston to answer back immediately, but Breshi, head on a swivel, lad. They're everywhere. Where could they be? Coming up their spawn in mid-map. You're looking for the kills right now. You might be able to transition over to B if this doesn't work out. But so far, oh, Zutelor, Brezzi. We'll take that and we'll go over towards B in a minute, maybe. Oh, and Miles, I know yesterday you were a meteorologist. You got to be checking the wind here on this map as well. Breggy maybe whiffing a shot or two and Snoopy just falls it up. So that is a dangerous section of the map to be in. And our cities with the pistol feels like Surge with the Renettis have been completely on point. B zone secured, minute and 45 to play with. And a lot of aggression on the map as well. So an opportunity with two players in Cafe, Seattle. You get this next set of kills, you can absolutely make your move over towards A. Snoopy feeling the pressure again. It's like a, it's the tall buildings. It creates that wind tunnel effect. If you've ever been in a large sort of, you know, a, a business district, it gets hella windy. And that's exactly what we're seeing here on Invasion. Snoopy. Oh, it happened again! Breggy has just got Snoopy's name and number in this map. Over to the A zone we're now going to go. Boston have got players in position on the defense, though. This shouldn't be a huge problem. Canabooza be sniffed out on the backside of gas. Oh, Priester pays the high prices once again as Snoopy now moves over to take care of Abuza. Abuza just needs some help too. Well, he gave you one when he was in the back line and forced a couple deep spawns and that at least buys his teammates a little bit of pressure. Arcides has made it towards showers. He just let Snoopy run by. The problem for Arcides though is he's having a standoff with Slasher. If Slasher ever overcommits, Arcides will pick up a kill and move right to the zone. But this is two very patient players, and yep, Slasher was waiting the entire time. So again, the patience out of Boston paying off, and maybe the B Street is going to be open. With only 30 seconds left on the clock. Surge more or less going to have to flood through the front. Yeah, just be trying to get the flood done. Life count's not terrible, though. Breach. Hold it together. Snoopy lives. <sighs> not for long. Slasher once again playing the patient game. 15 seconds to go. The rest of his teammates have been eviscerated now. Slasher alone in the zone. Trying to do what he can. Oh, Arcides gets him this time, and that's the stop. 8.6. Trophy in place. 
Good luck. That's another big kill. Breshi can't get in. Snoopy and Priest with the coverage. Boston Breach have survived. No way you get close now. A couple of kills might go your way, but Boston somehow steal it in the final moments. Yeah, no, Slasher, uh, I think the man that was pretty on point on the defensive end, couple good decisions. Like when RC's had that initial kill, like 45 seconds before the round was over, Slasher was there to make sure he keep things under control. And I love the decision as well to get at least a couple tags on Hook, uh, just for A, Hook to be worried about two different directions and to set his teammates up for the kill. So even though Slasher fell after the fact, his teammates were right there to pick him up. I do think Snoopy also had a pretty strong first round, got about eight kills. It was tough because anytime we were on his point of view, it looked like he was struggling, but eight kills, not too shabby at all as Boston right back towards his B zone. Sending it towards B immediately. After the excitement we had from Hoops opening play though, he, he was very, very quiet in that round. Try and help the boys out by eliminating the trophy as best they can. Just empty your pockets, lads. You need to get onto that zone faster. Reggie with a quick close clearance. No hoop in hell, but sadly Priester does help out. Fills the gap immediately. Hoop pressuring forward now once again. The Boston, fantastic work on both zones right now. Well, Sasha has got at least the comms. One top blue, one deep B street. So him and Priest are going to be able to work together. In the meantime, it's two players on A. That's the more important play. Snoopy's got the back and he's got his teammate to seem to watch the front. You might have to just flood it into death. It's the double chow coming through though. And you see RC is able to clean up the kill as well. So that's a four man rotation over towards A. Surge make the right call in the right moment. However, there was an extra tick on A that went through. So Boston very happy for this moment. Could be an advantage long term as they have over two minutes on the clock to work with. But a super solid opening start. Absolutely. Priest is thumping around in top blue. Booza cleaned up. The guessing game begins now. The multiple exits from the rug shop. This Priest is going to have to guess his way into the kill feed once again. Two life differential right now. As you see that, 50% of the A zone captured as well. So Breach, they're having a fantastic round so far. Can they close this one out? Oh, moments like that certainly help. Oh, that's three dead. Last man, Breji. And he's in the middle of the map. This is going to be a stack and this is going to be the round. I'm so confused. And so are they going to be. Is it going to be a, what? A full three-man stack at this point? Is it going to fly? You don't even have to chow. Nobody for Surge is even close enough to contest. And just like that, Boston Breach win the round. The stun grenade from Abuza landed in back laundry. He doesn't connect with anything. And then he slides in and checks back laundry. So Priest is able to shoot two players in the back for free. And that is the instantaneous collapse. Boston happy for the gift one round away and they will be seeing winners bracket at our major two and they just have to win what a defensive round so I, things are looking sweet things are looking sweet as well wow Boston breach ride that momentum carry it through Try to close this one out. Lovely shots from Abuza. Start things off. Breji backs him up shoulder to shoulder. Oh, no. But one of them's down. Onto the zone, you get it. Breji, 12 and 8. He's doing everything he possibly can, but he has the entirety of the Boston roster to contend with in a moment, and that is going to be difficult. Can Arsites help soften them up on the approach? At least one or two. Lovely shots at range. Gets two. Breji brought down, though, sadly, on the zone. Over to B we go. Seattle Surge with a nice opening play so far. Yeah, I think Slasher was on point. I, I missed his positioning on the map, but I know we got the wall bang kill on Breji as well. So I think uh, Breji and Arsys, honestly, we're doing a pretty nice job, but Boston Breach on the defensive end, just a little bit better. In the meantime, Slasher, a kill away from the cruise, but he's going to fall. That's a peach of a grenade right there from Arsys, who now, Seattle, get to keep up the pressure. No cruise missile coming through. You got two players in the spawn, and the B zone is going to be secured. An unfortunate auto mantle, though, and Priesta again able to maybe dagger you as that two-piece is going to slow down this round a ton. That's a stinger. Here goes the B zone. This will be two minutes and 15 seconds to play with. Life lead from Seattle Surge as well, so this is a slight late game resurgence. We'll find out in a moment. Oh, Abuza heard that. This Priest of repositions and the rest of his teammates work around him. Oh, patient Priesta, though. Oh, God, this Able is all the irons, and he got an extra uh. kill, and Priesta gives you two. Trades on point. P Dog right now, 15 11 on a four spree. He is feeling the groove. I will say, though, for Boston, no one's actually able to effectively set up the spawn trap in any way, shape, or form. Who though, gonna fall, and every death you have in these moments is gonna set you so far back. RCD's next man in line, and again, Boston don't have the stranglehold set up just yet, but. 
Right now for Surge, they are just slowly trying to work out of their spot. Slowly but surely. I see him keeps climbing the feed. Snoopy in this mid tank position. I remember seeing a, a, a young Jeremy Stud putting clips on social media from this very spot. Incredibly difficult to flush players out of there. Priest is on a five. Comes to a close, but you now have some space to work with Brady, the lone man for Surge flying forward and somehow finds himself two kills there. Keep the play going. I see him should be taken care of here. His spree's done. Onwards to A. This could be a moment for Surge. Well, a moment at least to buy yourself some space, right? Because you still have to worry about Slasher that's pushed out on the bridge. I think Arcides might be dealing with them. And you make your way in towards a uh, cafe. Priest has got the intel. Two are going to be on the flank. Hook is going to be in cafe. And then last guy in spawn. The Priest having to back down. He's switched up the corners. Brezzy maybe going to check them all. But yeah, Priest said the mind game's coming out on top. Snoopy winning his ones on the back line. And you already know where Hook was. In the cafe. There's his elbow. And there goes his face. There goes his face indeed. Good shots there. 25 on the clock. Snoopy with the dead. He might be able to get two here. There's no way. Oh, he doesn't get two. I see him gets the other 20 seconds to send it. Surge, a couple of kills. No, I see him. Wonderful shots. Great positioning. Smack bang in the middle of the map. The tags. Oh, Hook stays alive. 10 seconds to go. Able to get onto the point. Maybe Priest is just playing the safety of laundry. And that's it. Squeaky clean. Fabric softener as well as Boston Breach. Clean sweep, clean sheets here on Invasion. And that is the series. A frustrating finish for Seattle Surge. But Boston all smiles as they take the series three to nothing. And, you know, if you want good vibes going into the major for Boston, they've had a couple tough series. So a 3-0 is exactly what they needed. Winner's bracket secured a dominant performance. The teamwork looks supreme as well. That is exactly how you need to execute against a team like Seattle in a moment like this. So good smiles and vibes as well for this team a week to go before we get to see him perform on land. And again, a winner's bracket performance. They're going to be going against one of the top teams since they're going to have a bottom four seed. But Boston, they do have that upset potential. And my God, Slasher, nine kills in three rounds. What an electric performance <laughs> as Priest and Snoopy actually played the game. Would the boys are running around <laughs> just slayed everything. All he has to do is know he got eight non-traded. He got some objective play done. I mean, what, what he was? <laughs> hey, he done. got the big kills when they needed him to clutch up on defense. Slasher absolutely delivered. It is just funny, though, how well uh, Priest and Snoopy were able to perform. Well, that's the absolute three done. For Boston Breach, that's that. And now it's time for Chance and I to enjoy ourselves. A nice cup of the dark stuff. Is it coffee? Is it Guinness? I'll never tell. Back over to the desk. <laughs> Miles, my guy, enjoy. All right. We enjoyed a nice green thrashing here. Three O's. Oh, we had an opportunity for Surge to break in, potentially to the top eight. Instead, it's Boston moving forward. Royal Ravens dreams. They have been crushed. Mm. And we will officially see Boston in a winner's bracket despite coming into the day with the 12th seed overall. Yeah, unfortunately, a little bit predictable just because the makeup of this roster is going to be one of those ones that should be contending with these top teams. So Boston Breach came in today, did what they had to do. I think the most impressive map for me had to be the Search and Destroy simply because Boston Breach hasn't been finding a lot of success in that game mode against the Seattle Surge, where that is where they have only been finding success and on where the maps are more comfortable on in Terminal. Yeah, I would say Seattle Surge probably top two terminal search and destroy team in the game. Boston just yep. whooped them on that map. But honestly, on all fronts, just a cool, calm, collected series. Like, even on that map one, it was like 140 to 140, and then Boston just took control of the game, secure rotation over towards Street. And you see why they bring in a guy like Asim. In the KD department map one, it wasn't too great, but him and Slasher make a huge play rotating over towards Junk, getting the spawns, and they just farm them from the rest of the game, secure that map one. And you could see the level that, of practice that they put into their search and destroy headed into that map two. Massive team plays but also Snoopy with a big clutch getting his moment so for right. Boston Breach is about as easy as it gets man. It's also really impressive that they were able to take that invasion control because they have been trying that map now one, two, three, four <laughs> times in a row and only one at once now being twice so clearly something they're working on heading into land. Is Boston a real threat in the winner's bracket? Oh, yeah. How do they match up against the top tier? Well, we talked about it earlier. Like, I just feel like Boston hasn't had an opportunity to get momentum. Like, every time they, they start to play a little bit well, they had to play a top team. They made that roster change. Now could be their opportunity. They were in the loser's bracket last major. Now they're in winners, coming off of a hot win. We saw what Slasher did there. If he can do it again, they have an opportunity. Well, of course, we got to give a shout-out to our scuff play, the game maker. He goes by the name of Asim or Asim, however you want to pronounce it. He is nasty. He went down to challengers, immediately picked back up into the CDL, 
well, and he is frying in search this season for the Boston Breach. I think he could be this team, this leader in that game mode specifically to cause chaos in Miami. Yeah, and remember at the first major season challengers, well, he won it. So oh, on yeah. land, that guy does get a little bit better. And also, like him and Slash have experience together playing on land. He brings that level of energy, and you know, for Asim. He's just going to follow the game script, right? Like, he, he could be prone to the bad game at times, but it just feels like Boston is starting to figure themselves out. And once they do, Ace will be a force. Yeah. Uh, Ace him, some should say. Uh, Boston Breach, again, I'm just happy to see them kind of finding a stride simply because this is a team with champions on their roster. So we expected them to be an underdog, but they haven't shown us too much lately. So I'm excited to see them next week. Joining us now live in the Monster Winner Spotlight, we have Ace him. And uh, Seam, I want to ask you here to start things off. How easy or difficult was this matchup? How do you rank it on a 1 to 10 scale? Um, to be quite honest, it wasn't very difficult. Um, but we, tre we treated it like very intense, and it was a must win, obviously, to make winner's bracket. So we went really hard, and the practice leading up to this match was really good. I'm really proud of the team. We went through a lot of adversity. I feel like yeah. it's been a lot of peaks and valleys. And after going 0-2 last weekend and being on a 3 losing streak, we kind of just put our heads down and really grinded and... We were able to come up with, with a clean dub. It was a really good victory. Very yeah, clean. Very clean. Uh, congratulations on the win as we head into next week. I actually want to piggyback off of that. You know, what was the decision making behind playing Invasion again, despite, you know, having your struggles on it recently, as well as Terminal, which you just lost to Atlanta Phase? Um, yeah, no, I think against uh, Atlanta Phase, that wasn't really the Terminal SMD that we really know. Uh, against Optic, we played really confident, and today it was like just a confidence thing. I think uh, Terminus is a lot of strat heavy, and if we're not on the same page, it'll look like a disaster like it was against FaZe. And Invasion Control, we've just been putting a lot of work in, and we're just really good at just understanding the game plan and like filling the right lanes that we need to. So I'm honestly super proud. We played two maps that, like you said, were pretty rough, but we uh, really put the work in. So oh, yeah, glad it showed. Man. Uh, Asim, what do you think has been the biggest roadblock uh, in Search and Destroy for you guys? Because it, it's been tough. You know, the map pool is not super deep. Obviously, you guys get a big win in Search and Destroy in this series. So uh, what have you guys been working on? What's been the biggest roadblock? Um, I think it's, like, mainly what Austin said, like, even, I think, last interview is, like, we're just kind of stiff when we have all the info on the map. Uh, Search and Destroy is all about educated risk and, like, you know, taking your timings. And we felt like we were just too afraid to, like, take some timings, and it was really affecting the flow of, like, SD. So we're just really working on making sure we get the info and where they're at and then adjusting accordingly. So and yeah, that's mainly what we've been working on. Do you think that revelation is what led to you taking over today, especially in the early rounds of the Search and Destroy? Was it you that needed to be more free, or was it the team as a collective? Um, I think it's mainly like me and Snoopy are like the playmakers in the first bloods and like the entries. So when they have full confidence in me to entry, I feel like I play a lot better. And I know against Atlanta Phase, like I think I had like the lowest damage ever in S and D, but it just felt like like we were on the same page. So whenever everybody's clicking, I feel more comfortable on the map. So yeah. I think that's mainly what happened that gave me full reign to like just try to make plays on that terminal today against Seattle. Hopefully you guys can keep that up in just a week. We'll see you down south in Florida. Appreciate it, Puckett. All right, that's Boston Breach getting the second win of the day. Reminder, if you want to find out when Boston plays their next match, all you got to do is sync your calendar. It's easy. You can do it, and we will give you rewards if you do so, Allie. We will give you the squad up calling card. I have a memory of a goldfish, and I know some of you do too. So scan that QR code, <laughs> put it in your calendars. And if you don't have a phone, type it in the URL when you're at the library. Call dutyleague.com slash schedule. Yeah, that thing. Or scan the QR code. We'll see you in a minute. When we come back, we're breaking down an epic showdown. 6-0 Optic Texas, 6-0 New York Subliner. Only one can remain perfect. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty Store in-game now.
from a city, you hear signs when we sleep. Heaven sent, hands down, vibe so unique. where we review some of the spiciest community comments. Today, we've got a big topic, and it's all about superstardom. We had to go to our friend Aches for his poll. Name was, he makes all kinds of rankings. Some are trolly, some are like fake tier list. <laughs> this one felt semi-accurate. Do you like his picks? Uh, I mean, first of all, I, I hate defining superstar or all-star, but I disagree with his rankings yeah. for the most part. I just don't think... Being a superstar in no sport ever has been fully just defined by winning. And for Aches here, he sort of separates some people who have been lighting it up and also have a ton of fans. Like, it's all subjective at the end of the day. But when we talk about the All-Stars, let's take a look at the people that he has listed there. And this He's, is his second best tier. This is his second best tier. I mean, it's almost like people want to limit the amount of superstars that the league can yeah. have, and I disagree with that. And you can see here, for the All-Stars, right away I have a major issue. Abizi is not an All-Star. He's a superstar. Yeah. By every metric of the definition, the kid is an absolute monster, multiple championships, a part of a dynasty, and he still takes over games. That's just one of many issues I have. With and him. to that point, if we're putting Dashi on this list of all-stars, Insight Decide needs to be on this list as well. He has consistently been one of the better ARs for the past, like, Good three point. years, and he has plenty of championships to vote. And this entire year, he's also been an absolute superstar for the Toronto Ultra in that role. So I think if we're going to put Dashi on this list, Insight definitely deserves to be there if not replace it. Adding more names. Okay, so we're moving a BZ up to the superstar list. That would make a total of six if you add the five from Mr. Patrick Price. Let's take a look at how our superstars stack up going by the numbers. Is Sip at the top of the leaderboard? Is he still the best player in Call of Duty? I mean, yeah, the guy is a superstar. Like I said, there's there's more than just this list that we have here. Uh, if you have Pred here, how can you not have a BZ? Yeah. Can somebody answer that for me? That, that That's the part that does not make sense to me. But yeah, Scrap, definitely a superstar. Hydra as well, through and through. Uh, you think about some of these other players, man, on these teams, like Kismet as well. He definitely should have been the all-star list. Yeah. The guy's 100%. an MVP. He's been lighting it up. So uh, I'm going to find it very interesting. Seeing, seeing people in the community try to make their list as well. That's a great well. point. Why is Kismet not on that all-star list at minimum? Honestly, he's almost to the point where he could be considered a superstar. I mean, that guy has done it all for a lot of these rosters that he's had to be put in. I like the term superstar. <laughs> Let's save it for other sports. I don't know if we need it right now in Call of Duty. I just like to have great players and world champions and tournament champions. That's how I break it down in Puckett's book I like that. of history. Too, All right, man. let's break down the matchup that is coming up, though. They're playing for a title in Miami. Who is going to have the number one seed going in? We find out in just a few moments. Optic Texas taking on New York Subliners and the fans from around the world. They're getting fired up, Allie. Well, of course they're getting fired up. I mean, these are two completely undefeated teams, and it's been a while since Optic has looked this dominant. So, of course, they wish you could say Optic, but it'll be NYSL. Looks so much better at this stage. Not sure if they've got enough to be NYSL. I don't necessarily disagree with this take, Steven. Keep it rolling. What else we got? Bam! CJ, those are two fingers. No. Nope. 3-1 Optic. <laughs> NYSL will win Rio HB because of the spawn. <laughs> I mean, I like What's that. Uh, problem for you, though, is New York have never played Rio Hardpoints. This mm. is the first look we're going to see from them on that map. Now, granted, I think they should be good at that map. It could get interesting, though, because te Texas have been very good. Let's keep it rolling. What else did we get? Caesar season. Preston says Kenny flu game coming up. Is Kenny sick? I think I did see him tweet that he's been sick Oh, recently, Kenny's so not maybe, feeling good. Maybe they haven't had as much practice, but hey, man, Kenny can, can perform under anything. We've got tweets of Wizard, Optic Texas, tearing down that <laughs> green wall on St. Paddy's Day. The subliners get the win according to Wizard. Get your tweets in. Hit us up at Cod League. And, of course, MLG Puckett alongside Ali Cat and Nameless on Twitter. She has an X in her name, by the way. Let's get into this matchup here as we are breaking down the two teams, starting with the squad that has somehow managed a 6-0 record despite being underdogs in about half of their matches. Optic Texas has always come in with a 
higher seed, but at times they found themselves down two games and even two rounds of control to teams like Minnesota before clutching up and winning their best of fives. Yeah, it's been a different storyline for this Optic roster. Typically with the Optic organization their teams, they need momentum to be getting these series dubs. It hasn't been the case. They put in a ton of work. They've been clutching up when they need to. Three players are dropping over 4K damage and mapping hardpoint. Top four and retaking and search and destroy shots. He has been an MVP throughout this stage. A lot of things going right in the Optic camp and they're 6-0. Yep, and when it comes to Monster Energy pregame, it's just all good things for Optic Texas because SD has finally arrived during this split. They're on three straight wins and two of those were against Toronto Ultra who has fallen a little bit during this stage, but regardless for Optic Texas, they were dominant wins in 6-1 and 6-0 fashion. So going out against the other number one SD team in this split in New York Subliners, they have a good chance. Scariest player on that squad, we'll talk about them in a moment, but let's preview their opposition sitting officially at top of the leaderboard with an 18 map win, four map loss record. New York Subliners took home our first major and they have breezed through the competition so far after having to reverse sweep the Ravens in their first match. Yes, and they went to a game five versus Atlanta. And again, their search and destroy is also looking absolutely incredible when it comes to the Monster Energy pregame. A seven and one record with the 66% round win rate first overall in the league. So they are definitely feeling comfortable when it comes to those two and fives in this matchup. Also one of four is their top two hardpoint team. They're number one in hardpoint differentials. Sibs has, has a 1.2 in HP. Everybody's playing so good and their map pool has been growing. So for New York, it is a perfect storm. You got Optic Tech's team sitting across from you that has been improving in SNE. So this is a true test for what we consider the favorite at the next land. And I got to ask you guys, some people are wondering how important is this match? They're already in the winner's bracket. Nameless, is there any reason to throw a match or not try your hardest here? Uh, there's, there's no exact reason, but I would say New York is trying some maps in this series. Like the first map they've never played, Test Nat, Karachi Control, another map that's given them issues in the past. They're two and four on it, and they had the opportunity to have a different one. So for New York, very much taking it serious, but also testing their map pool just a little bit. Maybe hiding some cards up their sleeves before we get go down to Miami next week. Right now it's time for our scuff pickums and I'm going to start things off. Optic has been on a tear but it's New York with the cleaner victories. I got to go with the subliners. Yeah, this is a hard one. I wouldn't be shocked if it goes to a game five, which both are technically undefeated in right now in the last 30 days. Please. But I think I'm going to go with New York subliners. New York, New York. I'm going with New York as well. They just look so strong. Kismet and Hydra and S&D. I think they take those searches. And uh, the fans, let's get it from production. Fans are going with Optic, I'm told. All right, let's see how this one breaks down. We got shift and study on the mic. You guys excited for this one? Oh, let's get it fired up there, boys and girls. This is going to be a banger. I mean, both teams, like we said, undefeated coming in. And hey, they're both playing some of the best Call of Duty that we've seen, not oh, yeah. just for themselves, but just generally across the CDL this year to this point. So yeah, I think the desk appropriately hits on the fact that this map series set. There is a little bit of flexibility in testing from New York, but for Optic, this feels like they're gunning for that number one seed. Oh, yeah, without question. I feel like with the Massimos that we have, Optic are definitely looking to try to go 7-0 because New York, on the other hand, they're testing all these maps. We're talking about map number one, Rio. They have yet to play. Even on the Terminal Search and Destroy, they've only played it one time in this stage. You get to the Karachi, which is not really their go-to when you talk about control. They'd rather play High Rise or Invasion, but since they were the Team B, you get Optic who vetoes yep. High Rise. They do not want to see New York on that map, and you do not want to square up against Optic on a map like Invasion. So you throw a Karachi in that you don't really play a lot. And then also go Going forward, even in the map number four, Subbase, New York have finally added that this stage to their map pool, playing it twice, sitting at a 2-0 defeat. The only one that's really head-to-head -head matchup is that game number five, Karachi. So I feel like it's more important for Optic, at least based off these maps, to try to go out there and get number one. For, but for New York, it's better practice just expanding that map pool versus one of the top teams. Absolutely the case. And I think we're all kind of sitting there hoping that we're going to get an absolutely instant classic map five here. But yeah. before we kind of dump into it again, this is what's kind of on the line here after some fall especially uh, recently today with Atlanta dropping to LAG this kind of clearly cuts out some separation to where okay not you're not just playing for a top seed you're guaranteed a top two at worst yeah. whereas you kind of look at what's happening over the, all of the bricks rest of the standings everything else is at a lock here in terms of where we're at and who's going to kind of finish at the upper bracket here based on obviously this being our last match before we get to Miami so with everything kind of coming through there was that chance of there being possibly a three-way tiebreaker but Boston coming out taking care of business with their 3-0 gives 
gives them a bit of separation than the head-to-head -head tiebreaker of Miami and Carolina. Well, we casted that one yesterday. That was kind of the make or break for both of those two teams and Miami came out on top. So they worked their way into the upper bracket, whereas for Carolina, they find themselves starting the lower bracket. That's actually insane because Miami were going into their own major sitting at 0-1-5. They needed yes. a miracle, a couple wins for them to even make it into the winner's bracket. They found the final two to secure that A seed, but it's still not going to be a good time because they're going up against one of the top four seeds. But obviously, these are the guys that are on the screen ready to spawn into some Rio HP. This is going to be an absolute masterclass of a series. If New York just show me something on Rio, because they have yet to play this one as a team, but you would expect the lineup like Kismet, like Hydra, with guys and sim who can whip out that rival nine at any given moment oh this is going to be a head bash early on into this one absolutely the case and i, I actually i won't lie when we saw rio come out and we were kind of maybe even just spitballing between us about what teams very well may like a map like this i thought new york would have been like all over this map mm -hmm. just based on who they've got on the roster so not having seen it yet we're about to find out we're on the other side we've seen optic play this map a handful of times sometimes to great success other times not as much so usually when they're finding success they're rotating extremely well how However, that has not necessarily been the case when they found losses on this map. So I think you kind of look at that ninth and rotation percentage generally across every hard point. That has to be, I think, where Optic really come out swinging because we know what we would expect from New York who rotate early almost every single time, no matter what map they play on. Yeah, New York are always going to do the fundamental part, putting themselves at that hill nice and early on to set up properly. And I think that's what Optic needs to be focusing on because you saw the yeah. stats right there. They're overall on Rio, eighth in rotations, ninth in holes, and eighth in breaks. But the, the things that they find success in is when they break that hill they soak the most time up after that they are number one in that category after they found a break and then when they're also the team that's set up properly they're the number one team at holding down yep. these hp yep. so if you are the subliners it's all about the fundamentals you've been doing it all season long on every single hp you just got to do it on a map that you have yet to play at yeah i mean i'm glad that you bring up that point about how much time they're soaking even though again they may not necessarily fully convert on their first opportunities they're still one of the most efficient teams teams in the league when it comes to finding time does it make yeah. a difference on what side of the hard point they find themselves on whether it is from the hold setup or from trying to break but they're just soaking so much good objective time and appropriately of course as we're talking about it dashi kind of comes up on screen there's obviously been a lot of conversation about his role kind of more leaning towards playing inside the hard point but hey if it ain't broke don't fix it i think if yep. you're optic that's exactly what it is. You turn into the hill kid. Nope. King of the hill is dashy now. Yeah. And especially on a map like Rio, where it's going to be all about those SMGs just pushing out, being super aggressive, keeping them away from that hard point as much as you can. That's where dash is going to make his pay by soaking up that hill as much as he possibly can. But as you take a look at the hard point matches for both of these teams, obviously for Optic, this has always been a strong mode for them. We've seen them at Major 1, though, where they fell short in a couple yeah. HPs, and unfortunately were not able to win that series. But they have completely turned it around in this stage. And then for New York, it was just overall turning it around in the respawns. We're talking about taking over now in HPs and also taking over in controls. These guys are basically yeah. mirrored back to back, but... This is just like, this is just a battle of the Titans right here. When you look at these numbers. Absolutely. And you know, again, it's, I don't want to like shy away from this, but on an average margin, New York winning by 50 plus points is still absolutely ridiculous, especially yeah. considering the tone was set early by Toronto, who were beating teams on an average margin of 80 points essentially on the season. But on the other front, even though I think there are some interesting elements towards optic, not necessarily, you know, being dominant across hard point. Hey, the thing was, we, you talked about it. When they got to the land, they were forced to bring out sub base they had never played yeah. before. That has now become a staple for them. And then throughout this entire major two qualifier, they've really moved between every single map pretty nicely. This has been the most flexible optic I think that we've ever seen. Yeah, that's what you're able to do when you're sitting at a perfect 6-0. and oh, You're testing yeah, map yeah, pulls yeah. versus some of the lower teams, so you're able to get a couple reps on them. And even though you're scrimming them in practice every day, there's no better practice than actually playing them in the maps because there's something on the line. Those CDL points being 10 can play a dividend factor going forward. And obviously, for the top four teams, they're basically guaranteed to make champs. It's all about everybody else. But finally, we're going to get into the 3-0 HP. I'm super excited to see the battle between Shotzi and Hydra. We've seen that graphic all day long because the way that Shotzi's been playing so far to stage two that guy is simply untouchable and then on the opposing side for hydra he's always been mr takeover for this subliners roster and on a map like rio you best believe those guys are going to have a lot of rival nine battles you also have the former teammates of pred now going up against sim on opposite oh, spots. yeah lots of things to look at friends but it's optic new york 
final match of major two qualifiers let's get it on first couple of kills evenly exchanged in new york still kind of just floating waiting to see if they can find any final coverage but optic right here still soaking up hard point time yeah they were able to take those esky side and also win those gunfights early on over towards bridge so they set up the bridge nice and early able to use their numbers to keep control of this p1 but now it's new york's time to strike hydra and kismet that smg duo has been causing problems everywhere that they go as they find the break with this final 20 seconds going to be theirs and already off the rotation you see the play that kismet is making pops that dead silence but he put himself in a position to try to make the rotation a lot easier for his team that's the thing that's been a staple for new york like we talked about on every other map so you would assume that would be a major focus for them here on rio Again, if you're joining us late, a map they have not played to this point. But Kenny, Shotzi, work it through, finding a couple of eliminations over through gate side. Key 1v1 here between Kenny and Hydra, which Pred is able to jump in and assist with. So just when you thought New York set themselves up for the quick rotation, it's Optic who battle back. And now it's just a battle for spawns on the right side of the map. Yeah, now New York has to try to break it through the front. You still have Sib contesting through the middle of the map. Kismet with some great shots to at least eliminate Kenny. But Dashi able to respond with two, not able to find the third. New York is still just trying to keep this white because they don't have those spawns. I think Texas, they should be able to fill the gaps right on in front of them. But all of New York is using their tracks, trying to get past those trophies, as well, trying to get past the guns that Optic Texas are currently having in. Clean. Lots of nades coming through, denying those trophies from existing for all that long. And then the follow-up gunfight's absolutely perfect for New York. Prey oh, trying to hold on to a position top platform. Not quite able to. Shots. The individual play. Not going to work out, but a trail nade from Dashy once again opens up the hard point. The scrap time will go to Texas. Yeah, this is good stuff from Optic Texas, even though they didn't get a lot of time off of this P2, just not allowing the subliners to get any time. And you keeping the lead in your favor. And now you're forced to break in towards P3. Let's see the way that subliners decide to set on up. You have Kismet pushed out towards bridge. A couple players watching the back end and only one player on the point. So if you are out to Texas, let's just send it. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Right from the front door, Shotzi's found his way in. Pistol out, looking for the last in its skies. Who's down on HP, so it's an easy finish. Hydra still existing, though. Gives us a good old try. Help is nearby, but Shotzi on four almost. Snaps over to Sib for the fifth. Trades are good, though. Optic still in the hard point, and Dashi wins another follow-up gunfight, meaning that, again, we're just back and forth. It's just an absolute carousel of players from both sides trying to work their way in. And this is an all-out mix fest. New York keep getting those back spawns. So Optic think, all right, we're getting two, we're getting three, but they are still spawning in towards the back, so it's not easy to get that time. But with all those engagements happening, it's New York able to come away with the scrap time. Basically going to tie the game up, but this is going to be Optic's opportunity to win the rotation this time over towards P4, which is usually a money hill. How did New yeah. York decide to break on it? Dead tie game. Here we go. Dashi, first two kills good from the back line. Shotzi trying to play out through boxes. Not going to work out, but the follow-up is absolutely perfect. Hydra sneaks on in, though. Nice little timing here. Long-range battle with Pred. Has help nearby. Checks his back and sees it. Yep, all the subliners have rejoined with the proximal spawns. Trophy system's not fully in, though, for New York, as Texas are doing what they can from the front, but just can't quite find the gunfights that they need. Finally, Pred just dives in, just kind of sacrifices his life for the cause. Hydra able to deny and almost finishing things off, but it's Skies who has the last word. Shotzi right there to follow in, and it's just, again, the last man up, it seems like, is what these hard points are coming down to. This is what it comes down to when you have two Titans playing on a map like that's this up close and personal all out engagements every single time never a dull moment but optic texas is going to be able to find the break with about 25 seconds left take the lead right on back but going forward it can't be that easy for the subliners to find these breaks because that was yeah. instant from hydra with that two piece and now off the rotation new york are here still contesting the old but they are the team properly set up over towards new until optic get a great spawn out of shotzi he finds a pinch kill now you take down skies and this is going to be another rotation won by optic texas and really the story of this map so far outside of the fact that it's pretty much a tug of war game is hey optic again kind of living up to the same model that we were talking about maybe not the cleanest breaks maybe not the best setups but when they're in the hard point they are so every available second so sticking with this pretty nicely pred trying to watch the rotation from the back of p3 not quite able to work things out 2v2 towards the old time hydra up top no whoa, what a gunfight versus kenny and that will be enough to neutralize the hard point of new york have a chance to look at this back 25 and they're finding all the kills as well so now optic texas you have to do your best job to try to keep them off as long as you can great shots from dashy a little bit of assistance from kenny but Three kills go in favor of the subliner, so the final 15 is going to be theirs. But it's all about setting up for that P1. It was Optic at least walk away with the majority of the time the first go around, but you could already see her on your minimap. New York are spreading their wings. You have players pushed out towards the right, players pushed out towards bottom Messies, so they're going to be the team initially with this P1 time. Rotations look good for New York. It just, again, comes down to the fact that Optic on these breaks 
have found ways to just still scrap together 20 seconds here 30 seconds there and once more hard point goes neutral so the setup really not amounting to too much here for bjork at the moment a chance for hydra trying to bump the hill with sib playing deep now on seven in a row has earned himself the first cruise missile of the series but the follow off from texas absolutely perfect kismet last one standing should be receiving this hit pretty quickly but he stayed alive pretty nicely here hydra's now here to assist but nades are coming through texas find the follow-up gunfights and they've secured the pro yeah, all I needed to do was take down Kismet because even though the sublines are able to get back into the play, it was just better map control right there from Optic Texas. Now, just talk again about that hold percentage. They find that break and they are not letting go of it. No. And now, New York this time around at P2 are going to be the team on the preferred side. As you see, Optic trying to get aggressive off through the middle of the map, but they are getting cut down left and right. They're going to grow the lead up by 25 points, but now you're forced to find another break on P2 big position here from sim just trying to make it as difficult as possible for optic to move around the back and he's only able to find one so that should be enough to block spawns where does he spawn back up oh he spawns at boxes cut so he's going to be able to reinforce from the front pretty quickly but a moment of second guessing here this optic hit is taking a while in new york don't really have an idea of where it's coming from at the moment now the hit starting to develop from the back dashy on five not quite able to find the sixth in new york successfully received the hit shotzi last one up can find two but no more and new york can step back into the hill yeah, I was a little bit worried because they were the team at least set up around that P2. No one was playing for the time. They were more focused on getting the kills. After you find those kills, you can soak them as much time, but just keep the map in your control. It's a tie game until Optic Texas find the break with about 20 seconds left. Now that's going to force the subliners early off the rotation over toward the P3 again, where they only had one player in the point this time, last time around. But yeah. this time you can already see the difference in the setup. Hydra still going to contest the old, at least keep them at bay, keep them thinking on where the pressure's coming in. But this time the New York again set up at P3. Yeah. Just can't allow Optic to break him with the first five seconds. Alarm bell starting to ring for Kismet. Backs up over to join Hydra. A little play through the side shop. Shots the only able to find one though. Quick trades are in for New York. First receive, pretty darn good. Pred does neutralize and get into the hard point for a little bit of time, and whoa, he's turned that into a double. So even though New York will get back in, they're a bit restricted in how many numbers can play forward here. Skies will try to bump the hard point just a touch, but Shotzi from the side door has maybe created an opportunity for Optic to take a look into the hill, but it hasn't really developed into too much yet, and with that, New York take back the lead. Yeah, they take the lead right on back. They continuously are spawning again towards the back end. They're watching all the cuts, or at least trading efficiently. As P3 has been their money hill. And now with only 20 seconds left, you're going to force Optic Texas to hit that early rotation. Finally, some scrap calm going to the subliners. You give them a nice little cushion, and this is where you invest that yeah. cruise missile to try to disrupt the setup from Optic Texas to make the break. Just try to string things together here. Cruise not fully going to land. Pred actually kind of just pops out from boxes. Finds himself another kill, so the cruise missile ultimately really doesn't create as much space and time that New York were looking for. And now Optic have broken from the front. Kismet's still alive. Hydra nearby, but Optic have the control. And as the cruise missile gets called in, we'll see how Optic received this as Hydra's taking himself out of the picture. Chance to re break as we jump over to an Optic Texas. Listen it. I'm not I'm I'm on you, I'm on you. Hey. What, you want on you, what's on you? Hey. Coming towards me, I can't see him. You went steps, you went steps. I need, 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 I I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump. I'm trying to hold something first. Back right, use it. Back right, use it. Back right, use it. I have something. I'm gonna jump. 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 I'm gonna I'm so warm, I'm trying to just live on top. Mid, pop it, Exactly, back right, should be close I'm on you, I'm on you, I'm on you, I'm on you. Hey, weak, SK's really weak. You're really weak, Caesar. just two there, two there. I'm coming over, I'm coming over. Hold me up, I'll take weak. Full shot, I'm dead. I'm gonna put it on. There's the top.
What a tough moment from Optic, but a hell of a fight over a very scrappy P5 essentially gets us back towards more level terms. And here we go, Jay, back to P1. New York in the hard point, but still just about anyone's game. Hey, look at Shotzi just timing this pinch. Finds the first kill, oh. finds the second. He's been a superstar all in this day. Screw what Ace has to say as Optic are able to find a break in towards P1. 200 to 219 is currently the scoreline, but Optic are trying to run it up and take this lead at this P1 HP. Subliners, when we jumped into that listening, they were just going one-on-one -on -one every yeah. single time over that bridge hill, and that's the way that Optic were able to get back into the game. And now there's only one player left on the point. You find this trade, it's going to be all Optic Texas time, but you can see with only 20 seconds left, Subliners are taking a step ahead, already off the rotation at peak two but optic fully invested in towards breaking this through the old time dashy over the top oh. clean shots towards kismet hydra for the trade follow up from shotzi absolute master class tie game optic small lead here we go rotating back over like you said new york here first but quick action from shotzi names over the top also going to try to foil this setup from new york and they've already blocked the spawns just have to secure the break uh, Dash to find the kill also on the pitch, but now it's on Hydra who gets that pinch spawn through boxes. He's able to find a double. Now Optic are able to flip those spawns, but if you are the subline, it's just all about one wave of kills. Try to keep them off as long as you possibly can at this P2. Skies finds a double. Shotzi somehow, some way, makes his way through to make a play happen, but he gets traded by New York, and it's only 20 seconds until they take map one. Not a lot of numbers here for Optic. And now it has to hit from the front, but Kenny gets two somehow. How has he managed to pull that off? Shotzi cut down by Sim. Clean oh. shots as he doubles down. 242-24. New York still with numbers into the hard point, but they're being tested. 15 seconds. Optic have to see another hard point. Hydra on the cross cuts down two, and that will likely be enough to do it. Can anyone touch in time? No, barely not. 252-24, and New York's first going real looking nice. Woo! I told you, these guys got this in the back pocket because you always got to think the subliners are going to do the fundamental parts correctly. And every single one of these HPs, when you allow them to play a map like Rio, we expect the SMGs to go off. But the AR stepped up as well. It was Sib and Skies able to earn themselves a cruise missile, which was eventually leading to the break at that P4, which was the game changer. But you can see as the game went forward, the first rotation, Optic Texas were the team with the spawns at the end of P2. But the last two times, New York York knew if we can trap them in towards the back and then eventually win one set of fights to flip them out we will be able to close out this game great performances obviously from Sib who has that takeover a lot of engagements out of Hydra 6700 damage New York subliners to continue with their wrath so far in this stage another hard point victory underneath their belt even on a map that they have yet to play Rio is theirs 71 freaking engagements for Hydra bro. that's a lot dude <laughs> I mean, just like comparing this to an invasion hardpoint. Oh my. I mean, these guys were flying. Also interesting, I think, just to see how quick so many trades came through. That has to be some of the lowest non traded kill percentages we've seen all season long. Unreal display from both these two teams. And it really was anyone's game, like you mentioned. I mean, New York's key investment of using both cruise missiles builds them that really big cushion. And how much do they need that here is Optic, as we got back to P5, started to really take advantage of New York, maybe a little bit disjointed on these approaches towards trying to break. Yeah, they would just go one by one at that bridge hill as soon as we jumped into the listening. At that point, you're just trying to be a superhero player. And unfortunately, it came back to bite you. you. Allowed Optic Texas to get back into the game, but you keep P1 scrappy and you keep the fundamentals in the back of your mind. And they were just a team doing the dirty work, putting themselves in those crucial positions. Hydra up close and personal with the SMG was winning some insane gunfights alongside Kismet. And then when you allow those cruise missiles to be the difference in the game, because keep in mind, like if the subliners don't have any cruise missiles at that P4, Optic yep. potentially get a great hold at P4 and potentially chain it as well over towards P5. But when you were able to outslay by select Optic by a little bit in certain moments, those cruise missiles were the game changers, and it leads to New York being up 1-0 in the series. Wow fiery start to again a series that definitely has the potential makings of an instant classic here kind of framing both teams up and getting them ready for major two in miami and you can kind of feel like yeah that was a definitely winnable map for the side of optic and i think they're probably going to reflect on that just a touch but let's start framing things up here in terms of the terminal search and destroy coming up because this is another one of those maps that you kind of flip the opposite side coming through here because for new york 
yeah, 2 and 0 oh on it. Haven't played yeah. a tremendous amount, but they've looked pretty good in the times they've played it. We're on the other side. This is Optic again, trying to get better and better at their search and destroy pool. This has by far been one of their worst maps between this and Invasion. And this is why I think the series is going to be won because both of these teams, they can go head to head when you talk about the respawns, but we have one of the best SD teams in the game versus literally the best SD team in the game in the New York subliners. Like you said, they only played terminals so far one time in this stage. And obviously, Optic, they've been playing it for a long time, but recently they have found out how to make those mid round adjustments. They did it perfectly versus Toronto Ultra, only allowing run round to get away from them, dominating yeah. them all the way in that game number five. So I think if you are Optic Texas, you have to say true to what you were doing at least versus Toronto but you best believe New York are a completely different beast because they have the number one and number two SD players on their team right now yeah and the thing that's really interesting when you come to try to like diagnose some of the issues uh, I think for you know Optic in particular when you look at their search and destroy in general and what they've really worked on nicely throughout this qualifying stage to this point is hey they're one of the better teams in the league when it comes to converting on first bloods but yeah you know overall they're just not finding a lot of them like they're opening dual win percentage on certain maps better than others but I think just defensively that's where we're really kind of seeing them struggle maybe just like getting too far forward trying to get maybe a little bit too frisky you know, on this map in particular, they rank 10th in opening with duel percentages. But hey, when they do win duels, they win 100% of the round. Yeah. They convert them 100% of the time, especially from the defensive side. So that's kind of, I think, has to be like spotlighted focus for us looking at Optic in this map particularly. Yeah, I feel like whenever we're talking about any team in Search and Destroy in this game, a majority of the talk is all about the first bloods. For Optic, obviously, they can't really find a lot of first bloods on this map, but when they do, really good at succeeding, at finding success at the end of the round. And on the opposite side for New York, believe it or not, they get first blood on this map 65% of the time, but they only convert it 61% oh. of the time. And already a first blood comes in, that ordinance gloves is hitting different for Skies. A little bit of set of team nades going right down to the middle of the tarmac. And it does catch out Pred again, trying to play maybe a little bit aggressively. And that's going to open up for the floodgates here at B. Dashie, the only defender nearby. I mean, the only one, even in the ballpark. So quick kill comes through. And then Kenny, who tried to take a peek over from top AC, also gets dealt with. And this is a very swift round, a flawless one at that for New York. Oh, that's perfect start. You start off the round, first four seconds into the round, you get the Kobe. You see Skies' his face. Kobe over the top. Finds the first blood onto Pred. And then there's no trophy systems to work it for Optic Texas. So Dashie, he spots everyone over towards Burger. He tries to dance a little bit, but there's just too many guns on that side of the map ready to take care of him as the subliners come out and just dominate in that early attacking round. You oh, usually yeah. do not find a lot of success on attacks, but in the first round, if they don't have any trophy systems, that's where you have to apply that pressure. Sure, and uh, you know, the other thing that was kind of a staple for New York, especially from the offensive side, it always feels like when they get a first blood, they're willing to take three V1s on one side of the map, and oh man. Hello? How about another opening first blood in the first five seconds of the map? Kenny this time dropping through mid, same kind of setup that we kind of saw from the opposite side. And now New York, significant numbers defensively. Shotzi just trying to gut check his way right on in, and Kismet does get a little bit caught out, but not enough to get isolated. Two kills now in the mix. And how about this little hop over? Hydra <laughs> just takes him by surprise. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Clean shots over the top, and it's literally two rounds and 30 seconds for New York. Optic literally do not have a chance to even give the play call to the rest of the team. Like, first five seconds, someone is dropping. So you're probably thinking, all right, two people go here, one play library, one play island over towards Burger. But when you're instantly dropping, you're not forcing someone on Optic Texas to try to make a play. And unfortunately, Shotzi jumps out to the wrong window. Lines up for Kismet, and then Hydra, no hesitation on the 4v2. Hits the wall ramp jump, gets to the side window, finds the first, and then snaps for the second kill. It's like 20 second rounds, back to back for subliners. Kismet's already off to a 3 0 start. Kind of saw his stats flash before when we were loading in, and yeah, he has been a menace in the search and destroy. Days over the top. You have to wonder if Optic even has earned trophy systems yet with how quick these rounds have been. Kenny does take an opening double, though, over the top of Eskies, and for the first time, Optic will hold some early numbers. You can already see the adjustments from Optic Texas. No one was trying to get in towards red. No one wanted to get pre-nated. So they sent two players over towards Eskies, the last two players in the back of the plane. Kenny finds two, so now it's a 4v2, making a 4v1. Shots, he gets a read onto Hydra. Now Sib is going to get spotted. It's only a matter of moments before everyone starts to send in for Optic Texas. Yeah. Hopes and prayers right now if you're a Sib fan. Reads one, line up nearly there, but the team shot's better. So, okay. Flawless round after flawless round after flawless <laughs> round. 
Definitely a convincing set of the first three openers here is opt to get on the board. Yeah, that's good stuff to make the defensive adjustments. Like I said, no one up the red to get first blooded by a nade or the gunshots from Skies. But this time you make the adjustments on the defensive side to put Kenny alongside Dashy up through the Eskies. He's able to find the initial two fights, and that shit that just shuts down the entire round. Once he finds that double, Optic finally get on the board, but now they're back on the attacking side where they have trophy systems. New York now have trophy systems. How do they yep. decide to play it? Here we go. Ooh, three members up that mid staircase. Sid may be seen on the mantle, but they, I don't know if they actually scouted up Hydra. This quick aggression into the corner. No, they didn't. Sid from top Beskies also helps out. So that's enough for the opening couple of the kills to go the way of New York. And Optic once again find themselves pretty much stuck in this 2v4. You can just see the teamwork on full display. Like, Skies, he gives the info that there's a couple of players approaching towards Burger. He just simply backs down and allows the team crossfires to wow. get <laughs> put on the map. Subline is just way too strong on the defense. Another first blood out of them, but just a perfect blind counter to what Optic Texas is trying to get done. Just running it down at that B site. Unfortunately, New York were ready for every single second of that play call as they pull away with that round. Another flawless one again. I mean, this is a very strange start to a search because on one side of the coin, you could argue this is perfect search and destroy because once you get the first blood, you're following up perfectly. Yeah. On the other front, though, not exactly what I would call a masterclass on how to work 3v4s. Granted, of course, this map may be more difficult to work your way back in than others, but still, Kenny, first blood, top eskies. Dashy right there to try to follow up. Nade, I don't know if it fully got there. No, it didn't. Oh. Up and right, right back to sender, so... Sib unfortunately takes himself out, and here we go. <laughs> this is another one that's brewing up to be another perfect round here for Optic. Yeah, it's basically another double coming in from Kenny again at that B site. Sib with a little bit of assistance, but now it's Kismet and Sky He's trying to bully their way in through the terminal. This falls into the hands of Pred, but the angle even better from Sky is able to take him down and potentially work this bomb plant, but they might be searching for another kill. And unfortunately, the timing is better from Shotzi. Now it's a 1v3 for Skies. Yeah. It's a really good read on this. Sky's though battling. Oh, the shots he's seen the cross. And that should be enough for Kennedy just to keep his scope up. Whoa! Oh, Sky's just burst right on down. Kenny can't uh -oh. quite follow to get the trade, and now we got a 1v1. 25 seconds on the clock. Sky still needs to retrieve the bomb backside plane, but he's looking for the kill. And he may get gifted an opportunity, depending if Kenny decides to peek maybe a little bit further forward, but that has not occurred. And Skies looks like he wants to play this to the kill. Kenny, I'm sure, just saw him move up the slide. And there will not be enough time to retrieve the bomb nor plant. So Kenny's couple of shots will be enough to pull him off. And that will secure the round for Optic. Oh, that was almost a nice little play right there to Skies. He got the read on the shots. But then in the 1v1, Kenny puts himself in a great position to watch both bombs. As long as he wasn't able to spot Skies crossing over towards that terminal to play for the bomb plant. The round was going to be a GG. He spots him going up the ramp and just simply plays his life, puts down a couple shots, and does not fall. So a big round for Optic Texas to not let that one get away from them. But two now on the board. But you see Pred and Dashy not really having the best search and destroy so far. Combined 0-8. They have to figure something out on their attacks. The subliners have been getting these rounds done on the defensive side in the first 15, 20 seconds. Optic looking to change up the tempo a little bit. Hard focus. Over towards A. Shotzi just making sure no one's watching them from down below on this cross. The only real defender here is Kismet. He is going to be very selective of the timing he wants to use to play this back stairs. Stun comes through. Shots also starting to land. Dashi secures first blood to the other side of the map. He should be traded out as Hydra's on the hunt. But Shotzi will still commit for the plant. We'll go 3v3. Focus across the map. Really from both sides here. So we have a lot of individual 1v1s coming our way. Yeah, it's a one-on-one -on -one between Kenny and Hydra. But Hydra, he might have just maneuvered his way out of Kenny's line of sight. But the repositioning might be better because he's going to spot yeah. Hydra, keep the isolation in his favor. Wins that gunfight. Now Optic Texas into man advantage. You know that Kismet was towards back plane and Sib did just put a couple shots down through the plane. You take down Sib. Kismet now left in a 1v3. Yeah, good reposition from Kenny. Really Ooh. good reposition from Kenny. Shots were good on both sides there, but yeah, lots of information gained. And you talked about that 1v1 for a moment there. It did look like maybe Kenny lost track, but... Able to win a key gunfight, and that was honestly that's a difference maker. Flat out, yep. if, if Kenny drops, Shotzi and, and Co are pretty much trapped inside the plane. Yeah, that's what Sib and Kismet were hoping that Hydra yeah. was able to win that one on one versus Kenny because then now you put Optic Texas on their toes. We got to watch our flank, we got to watch back plane, and we also have to watch ramp. 
But when your teammate cuts down one of those angles, what you have to do is put your sole focus towards the ramp side and the back side of the plane. And Kenny, with some great shots, is able to find three on the round. So Optic tied up all at three. New York back on the attacking side. This one is going to play out a lot slower. No early first bloods in the first 10 seconds. And Kismet just looking to see if anyone had pushed over through that top window position. Stun just to double check it. Shots, again, just, these are pixel angles across the map that both teams are playing for. Pred, backside tail, catches Kismet just a touch. And, oh, it actually has drawn shots. You have to try to get aggressive, and Hydra's there to meet him. So maybe an over-aggression play from Opt to try to catch New York off guard, and they get punished now 4v3. Yeah, now 4v3, and Dashi's now forced to try to make a play. He takes wow. a lot of ground up through Burger. <laughs> Great play out of him to use that angle to his advantage. Fine, Sib, but now it's a 3v3, but you could already see they have been able to flip the map on his head. All of the subliners attacking in towards the terminal. Pred giving the info. It's yeah. time to go on that flank. Yeah, they've he's seen two cross, so this should be a 1v2 over towards the other side. But again, Hydra just keeps manipulating the map over towards Dreams. Able to find one. Pred sneaks up. Trophy system in the way. It doesn't matter. Stops the bomb from being planted, but return fire is decent. But Kenny on the opposite side has helped him out. Holy smokes, 1v2. Skies. Backside tail, once again, trying to play for kills. He doesn't have the option to go to B. There's not enough time. So he has to go back up the ladder. Oh, I don't think he meant to take any shots. May not make much of a difference. He's going to hold for the plan. Gets it down, slips away. But a follow-up nade from Pred is perfectly placed. No worries as Optic get the defuse in the round. I thought that that was going to be the same exact round that Optic Texas had on their previous attack where Kenny wins that one-on-one -on -one through the back end. And that's all that was really needed for you to walk away with the W. But the fact that they find a trade onto Hydra and then Pred with the timing to just eliminate that player off bomb. That came down to him yeah. finding that one kill because it breaks the setup of the subliners. You force a couple players to reposition and then it comes down to the game clock. Pred still had his tax. Use the stun. You use the nade to your advantage. And then even though Skies gets the bomb, bomb down, you're instantly there to respond. That's Optic Texas now with three rounds in a row. We were talking about those mid-round adjustments on a map like Terminal, and they are on full display right now. Oh, hey, and let's be honest. Two of the three rounds from New York were one off of first bloods in the first five seconds of the round. Yeah. So you need to stay alive for more than a, you know, a breath. You're good to go, it feels like right now for Optic, who have now once again kept the tempo up on their offensive side, immediately committing for the plant. Sib... From this top line, I was about to say, he may catch info on the exit, but a late stun comes through, and now he doesn't really know for sure if anyone stayed on this B site or not. And now you can already think, if you are the subliners, you're going to work your way up through these eskies. Someone has to be playing up close in person, but all of Optic Texas, they back on up. They plant the bomb into an angle wow. where they can spot it from long distance, but Skies and Kismet at least able to take down two, make it a 2v2 shot. He's trying to get something done with only 20 seconds left. And that late frag has kind of made sure that no one was on for the defuse. Smoke trying to keep himself alive, not going to work. As Kismet and Sib just became a little bit too unpredictable. So the quick tempo from Optic looked decent, but the post plant setup foiled. One of New York's strengths is finding ways to retake, and they provide it once again here. Yeah, that's the only difficulty about planting that bomb the way that you did, and then completely giving up all of bomb control to try to play it from back burger. Because then you allow the sublines to take it from top three, to push through top eskies. All they have to do is at least win the trade fights. And they were able to set up both ARs to win those long range engagements. Then when it comes down to a 2v1 for Shotzi, you see he tries to be Batman, throws a smoke at his feet, but there's players from the subliners all around him. They secured the defensive round, tied the game up back at four, and now I'm really curious to see what New York do because they've been shut down at A. Every single time they've gone B, it's been a two-piece by Kenny. Yeah. They might just have to go right back to the terminal. Three-man hit coming over towards this A side. Shotzi playing aggressive on top of the ramp, but Sib not going to be baffled by that. Trophy system also down as New York now throwing a little bit of aggression of their own. Double trophy set up down here. One will be destroyed. Did Pred see the second? It may seem a little inconsequential, but it could be massive in terms of New York staying pretty stalwart if they can get into the plane and hold their ground in the first place as Kenny has made a bit of a mess of this setup and now Optic can kind of focus their forces here at A. And now how did New York decide to play this? Do they decide to be aggressive? Kismet just sends it through the underground to at least find one kill to make it a 2v2. Now it's a 2v1. All left up to Pred to try to clutch up again that term. Oh, and he's gotten a read on Hydra on this cross, but all oh, mutual information there. I mean, maybe Hydra sees him that little slide through, but yep. it looked like they were banking on the fact that Hydra didn't see him, but not to be. Yeah, he absolutely does. The little ADS just to check it, just so aware. 
that guy's got like eagle vision like he's just <laughs> hopping around the map left and right and he's still able to earn the info for his team to go for the double chow but they find the first blood great stun connection onto shotzi who was trying to hit that side wall hop but you find that first blood on their most aggressive player you just have to trade officially in towards the terminal and that's exactly what happens as new york are able to chain a couple rounds together now puts them at game point Aggression from Hydra. Trying to get over towards bathrooms. Nade in towards library should not land, but it does create the freedom for Hydra to at least stay in his position relatively concealed. A little bit of support. Kismet. Good stun. Tags coming through. Shotzi just barely still alive, but Sib follows up. Kill is good. And now Hydra has completely broken this play, gotten around the back, and my goodness. We've seen, well, I was going to say five perfect rounds of search and destroy for one team or the other, but it's only one small trade that Optic can find, and New York will go 2-0 up in the series. <laughs> what a map, bro. Are you kidding? I'm not going to lie, Alan. New York, to me, right now, the best team in the game because you're coming out and you're testing your map pool versus one of the top teams that we have in the league on some of their better maps or some of the maps that they have played a lot more frequently than you have. And based off of map number one, Rio, they get that one done. But the adjustments in this map number two, to just get a read on what Optic Texas are doing. It was multiple yeah, first yeah. ones out of Skies. All instant response out of Civ as well. Those ARs are getting kills left and right. But every single time Optic tried to be aggressive, New York were able to shut it down. They tried to go towards B. It was a perfect crossfire setup. They tried to go over towards A. You got wall bangs coming in. You got first bloods through library. Everything was just in sync right there from the subliners from start to finish of that search and destroy. It was Optic Texas early on when they were down 1-3, winning three rounds in a row. But then yeah, for New yeah. York, when they were down 4-3, they make those mid-round adjustments to close out this search and destroy 6-4 and now find themselves up 2-0 in this series. Yeah, and it's just, again, you kind of look at rounds one and two and then that round 10 right there at the end for New York, a lot of it is we get the first blood and we're just going to get in your face and force yep. you to have to deal with the numbers. So, wow, clean stuff from New York in those three rounds in particular decent battle from optic but now you have to start to put up the premise of a possible reverse sweep which to be fair like we were talking about in our first series of the day not impossible nor would i say improbable considering the maps that we have but more to come we've got karachi control the backside of the break don't go far your game with the scuff the official controller of the call of duty league the Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Comes Shotzi, 10 in a row, looking for the 11th. That's the round. You may never see one like it. Everyone from Vegas leaves just trapped behind enemy yeah, lines. Yeah. This is tough. As Ghosty finds three with one clip. Those are great shots. That is what Shotzi buys his team so much time. He's able to find three more. He is just going, and you see what this does for their hard points. He's just so good at being elusive. Yeah. It can be such a pain in the ass to deal with. But those are, that was a very, very good listen in. And a reason uh, you're seeing this score busted wide open. And map yeah, one is yeah. done. This guy is insane. Same time as seen once again gets a kill. He's got two in this round. Every time you get numbers, if you're Optic, Asim has brought it back. Asim working on the ace. That's three for him in this round. It was plant or hold for the kill. Dashi chooses to hold. Get a child, not gonna happen. It's an ace for big Asim. What a brilliant moment for the newcomer on this Boston Breed squad. Faze holding it down, looking for the win right here and now. It's Abe and draws in the feet. Sim joins him for the posterity, and that's giving you the final 10, and that should be map one. That is a nail in a coffin. It'll sit by the way with nearly 7k damage. So Simp was almost untouchable. Shotzi might have the timing on the flank. No one's going to turn. This bonus as well. Oh, come on. Shotzi's playing real good tonight. Nice tags. I don't have a clue as to how he has managed to survive. Shotzi versus the world. He can't get the third, but here comes Shotzi. Ten in a row. Looking for the 11th. Around. You may never see one like it. Damn.
Welcome back there, friends, fans, all you crazy COD fanatics out there. We are in a... Well, it's been a good one so far. I know Optic <laughs> fans are probably not going to agree with me, but hey, both maps, very competitive, and honestly, could have gone either way, maybe given a couple of adjustments on one side or the other. But, hey, all we know is our top two teams, they will be our top two teams come Miami. And, well, based on how we're seeing our top overall squad starting to get through this upper bracket kind of premise, you don't want to miss it. So get your butt there, flat out, because everyone's playing some really great COD at the moment even the teams that kind of found themselves in the lower bracket have really shown that their improvements are absolutely marked here jay so i imagine this major two tournament has the opportunity to be one of the best we've seen to this point in the cdl oh yeah with that question lag's pulling out w's miami heretics have come alive and oh, yeah. obviously all the top fours those guys are going to be going head to head every single time when you get to the major so make sure you scan that QR code and make your way out to that event because it's going to be a blast. But back into this series we go. New York Subliners are currently up 2-0. On a map in Rio that they have yet to play on the season, they find themselves victorious. On Terminal Search and Destroy, where Optic Texas, they were talking about making those mid-round adjustments. New York just slapped the hell out of them every single time they tried <laughs> to do that. Because when you find the first blood, they did not give Optic Texas even an opportunity to think about trying to clutch up in the 3v4 with how aggressive they were playing. That that's how New York is just so next level right now in Search and Destroy. Without question, the best SD team we have in the game. But this series is far from done because now you're going into control on Karachi, where New York, they've been finding a lot of success in control so far in this stage, sitting at 5-1. and one, But a majority of that has been on high rise and invasion. But for them, this is what you call next level plays because they were the team B. They decided to put Karachi in versus Optic Texas just to get that extra rep underneath their belt. Yeah, there's also the element of you don't necessarily want to pick invasion and then be forced to have to start on the offense there it just kind of puts yeah. you down a little bit but i think and i really want you guys out there to listen when we say this yes you're looking at all these overall season records on karachi control and in particular that ninth win percentage on attack not great for new york but this is the only map that they've struggled on on offense everything yes. else has been top three in the league so it really just kind of comes down to can they figure it out and it's not even off the fact that they're not winning offensive rounds they're not finding a lot of success by capturing points nor are they finding a lot of success staying even in the life count. So that's, I think, where my focus is going to be here for New York, who I'm sure will likely start on offense, jumping into this Karachi control. Yeah, that's going to be very difficult because Optic Texas, they're one of the best defensive teams that we have on this map, second overall, and they are literally the best team at not allowing a lot of segments to go the opposing way. So I think if you are the subliner just talking about attacks, you have to get it done, obviously, through the segments, but you have to get past the slaying of Optic Texas because that's what they've been able to do so well on Karachi. Slaying, not allowing them to get any segments, and just putting New York in that trap we saw them in that trap versus atlanta phase when they played this yeah. map that's the only yeah. loss they have on control in this stage so if, I, if you are optic texas like i said this series is far from done you just need to allow those sgs to get activated to put themselves in those junk positions to put themselves over towards chicken coop just make the game a lot more difficult for the subliners sure and kind of just looking back uh, when these two teams had last match during the major two major one qualifiers pardon me you're kind of looking at a couple of really big stars in the control in particular and then a couple of other players who really did not perform all that well i mean sip had a 1.36 in the control last they played but kismet had a 0.68 so when you're looking at you know players that could be influence makers on offense i don't think you look much further than that guy top left because kismet has been an animal when it comes to trying to open up space it just has not really been as successful against this optic team uh, when they last played of course yeah, back all all the way uh, uh, in December, which is obviously a long time ago. So yeah. that's kind of something to keep an eye out for. Yeah, stage one just didn't treat Subliners best. They went to the major and lost two series back to back and were eliminated top 12. So obviously Subliners were a little bit late to the party on understanding the game. But now all throughout stage two, everyone has been playing great. You just got to keep on your foot on the gas if you are the Subliners to try to close this one out in three. Yep. And as a reminder, <laughs> oh. very appropriate. Again, I, maybe I'm just overselling this because it's March Madness time. I know that the ESPN brackets are coming out for college basketball, but our brackets also started to come out. Everything is set except for the number one and number two seeds between Texas and New York. And interestingly enough, I mean, look at the possibility in terms of who you'd play. I mean, I'm not going to throw this out there as this is a cognitive thought, but like with Miami looking hot and Boston coming off of a 3-0, I mean, both those matchups may not be as easy as you'd think coming as a number one, number two seed. Yeah, neither one of those matchups is going to be easy with the form that Miami have found themselves in the last couple of matches. And obviously, Boston Breach doing just enough to make sure they secure themselves that winner's bracket. But the addition for, for a team for Boston, he's been great for this team. They just played yeah. a lot of tough teams. And at a Miami, they have absolutely gained some confidence now going into their own event. So either match, like you said, it's not going to be a pushover. 
Well, again, just looking at some of the teams that have gotten hot, making it into the upper bracket, some some of them today, for what it's worth. Yeah. Again, you're trying to find differences between our top two seeds in terms of who very well may be the favorite, if you want to label it as such, going into this major, of course, with Optic coming off their fourth place finish in Boston, and then all of a sudden, New York getting double first rounded, which was a surprise to everybody. You kind of look to these two guys at being maybe the X factors, because coming into today, they have been just about even across the board in every single statistic. I mean, there is not much separating these two at the moment. Yeah, it's definitely not a lot separating them. The only thing that separates them is the schedule. At least for Optic Texas, they played a lot more tough teams throughout stage two. So the fact that Shotzi is a slight margin underneath Hydra in those categories, I'll put him above him because he did it versus Toronto. He's doing it versus every single team that he's swanned in so far. And now you need Shotzi to try to get it done on this control to keep yourself into this series. Okay. Lots of things that could be difference makers here, but overall, you look at what both these two teams have done, and I think the overarching point is they're playing some of the best Call of Duty yep. right now in the league, not just for themselves, but just generally speaking. Just small arguments, maybe debates to be had on who is the favorite going into the possibility of a major two championship. Opening day for Brett, good. That's going to lead to Optic getting immediately on. And New York, they very well may have to kind of hold off here and you talked about them being successful and stopping progress from coming through they're not even gonna get a chance to contest this a zone with these kills coming out yeah they don't have an opportunity to get on the point at least if you are optic Texas, you are trading efficiently through the middle of the map you shut down that early progression from the subline as you already have shots he potentially trying to play for a couple small kills but he does get cut down so that second segment is about to get complete, but you can already see Optic Texas. They're applying pressure over towards B. They want to get B out of the way nice and early, but Hydra mm -hmm. and Skies combined for two. They're already trying to shut down that play. And maybe a little bit too quick on rotation. They don't even finish the second tick of progress here at A. So now you kind of have to be rewarded with individual gunfights if this transition to B is going to have any success really at all. Skies pops out of red. Kenny able to find him for free and then immediately take his position back as Shotzi will jump on the B zone and keep the clock stopped. Shotzi's going to be able to jump on the B zone, but everybody else is dropping Damn. around him. Subliners have been able to just maneuver around the map. You had Hydra push his way through junk, reflank up through the middle, and just assist his teammates in those engagements. Now, if you're Optic Texas, you're forced to fight out of your spawn, and with Pred finding that double, you can work your way out of Chicken Coop, because all their focus is going to be like, are they going over towards B? Nope, they're going to go over towards A, get that one out the way. Yeah, but it takes a lot of time. And, it, you know, again, you kind of look at the live count just in total. Sure, it's only a one life differential, but 19 total lives to try to capture A, or pardon me, to capture B. Maybe not the greatest sum ever. Skies also trying to make his way forward in towards Junkyard. Good prediction towards Pred wins the key gunfight, and that will push these optic spawns back a touch. Yeah, now Optic Texas are going to be able to extend this time, but New York are more focused on setting up around this hill. Doing the easy work, consistently staying pushed out towards red. So you force Optic Texas to overextend through Chicken Coop every Ooh. time. But they're winning the, gun, the gunfights right through the middle of the map. Now they can just put the pressure on towards the B point. You know that at least one player is still over towards Junk. That's going to fall into the hands of Shotzi. But the first segment is about to get complete. They may not know that Kismet slipped through. But the thing about it is he is going to have to be the hero here. Second ticket progress already locked. Remember stack on the way in. Kismet has to make his play. Finds the first one cleanly, but immediately traded back. Sky's deep, able to find one kill, but yeah, the stack just too good. So, wow. I mean, it almost felt like off the initial play that like Optic ran before they secured the catch on the ball there, <laughs> trying to rotate between the two zones, but they essentially replicate it and find much more success the second time around. Yeah, when they found those initial two fights, you know that Skies was the guy that was blocking those close pawns over towards Junk, so we isolate the final player in towards the cafe. Everyone stacks the point. You eventually find the kill onto Skies, and then you're forcing all of the subliners to go over the hop-up or to go through Yellow Alley. And that's just way too easy of a round for Optic Texas. One set of kills is what got that round done. They walk away with the early attack. All six segments complete. Yeah. Clean stuff. Okay. Now to the defense. Optic, lots of nades over the top at mid. Going to be delayed in trying to contest this A zone, but they found the kills no matter what. And now it's really just on to Hydra to recover, and he does well. Double comes through, and he's got eyes towards playing over the jump wall. So he's kind of eluded the defender over towards B, and now he can continue to force Optic to have to either clear him out or take the long round to try to contest A. Oh, he's just dancing. He knows that Optic are trying to put a lot of focus on where Hydra is. 
because he is a playmaker and he's trying to get it done behind enemy lines. Currently on a three, but Dashy able to line it up with that MCW. All lot of pressure for the subline is going over towards B and Optic are ready for every single ounce of this aggression. They have traded efficiently. They shut down that B pressure and it's already 40 seconds knocked off the game clock. Finally, the subline is working up some progression at A. But it is just one member on. Kismet trying to extend the play further forward. Pistol out, Dashy. No, get out of my face, he says. Hydra also oh. jumped on by shots. He trade is decent, but again, that clock continues to tick. Just one tick of progress. Finally, back into the point goes New York. 35 seconds on the clock. You would have to think they need the extra 60 here. You cannot allow this clock to get any, uh, any, any more dwindled. Yeah, you have to get A. You have to complete A. You know that Kenny is still contesting you over towards the junkyard side, but the rest of Optic Texas know. We fly and win these fights. The round is going to go in our favor. This is only 30 seconds left on the round. Hydra trying to get it done, just being the aggressor up in towards Fountain. He's trying to find a couple kills to allow his teammates to get out of spawn, but... Time continues to dwindle down. Finally, yeah. the subline has put some kills in their favor. They're able to pause the game clock, but there's only 16.5, so you have to secure A right now. Have to get the A secured, but on top of that, you're, I mean, 76 seconds to try to play for the rotation, and Optic are going to get in towards junk, forcing you to have to take OEs. I mean, this is going to take a lot of time. And, and honestly speaking, if you're New York, you may only have two, three hits at this just because of the routes you have to take or the positions you have to clear out that Optic have taken. Yeah, you're just not going to rotate back over towards Junk and contest two players. That's going to waste a lot of that game clock. So you are forced, like you said, to overextend. And now with only a minute left, New York have to make this one count. You're going to have Kismet invest in that dead silence. Just sit across the map, trying to contest Kenny as much as he can. He's going to get some assistance from Sky, so at least try to take this positioning. But you can already see on your mini-map, Hydra's just waiting for his teammates to get a couple kills before he decides to strike. And Sib with two might have been the opening New York were looking for. Now it's just down to the individuals for Optic. Trying to hold on to these back positions around the diner. Kismet, not bad to find a one-for-one -one trade, but Chotzi on the other front plays in towards that red office. And he continues to have some ground for this Optic defense to work with. Hydra slipping through, stops the clock. 28.4 seconds. The follow-up kills are perfect for New York. Uh-oh. Make it even more so. Sib off four in a row. Clock ticks, though. Hydra stepped off. He wants to play for this play over towards the top of the jump wall. Kismet will get in to keep it stalled, but... Optic will have the opportunity to try to re-break this through mid-map. Need to find the kills, though. First took a progress locked. Trades back and forth. Optic finding the kills. Just down to Kismet. Can they lock him up? 18.6, and he's trapped. There's nowhere to go. Trying to finesse for as long as possible. The trade is in. The clock continues to move. And if you are the sub planets, you just got to stack the damn point right there. You find all the kills. There's no reason to continuously play cutoffs. You allowed Optic Texas to not really make a quick decision off the respawn. They're saying, oh, that one's going really, really slow for one segment. So there's only one player. If we can find everyone else around the hill, that's going to lead to an easy break. That's yeah, definitely a yeah. mishap right there from the subliners because you find all four in the feed, but then you only allow one player to try to soak up that time. You give Optic Texas another opportunity to break on in, and they seize it. Because now they walk away with that round. Don't even know if, if New York were able to at least walk away with one segment. I but think they got Optic one, up yeah. Up 2-0. Okay, Optic are currently up two segments as well. That's a mishap right there from Subliners, indeed. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought for sure, you know, <laughs> kind of looking at it, Hydra in the point that he was just going to say, hey, get on with me here. We have the ability to still watch this jump over the top of Dumpster from inside the zone, but not to be. And yeah, up by two ticks is Optic. Quickly back over towards the A focus. Trophy's now in place for Skies. Trying to play the top side of AC. Dashy able to find Hydra over towards that barrel alley. Now Shotzi gets to work, opening up more space around the point. Sees Kismet at range, but is more focused on trading out Civ. And neither thing will come through. And with that, New York starting to get aggressive defensively. Yeah, New York starting to get aggressive, but Dashy and Pret able to respond with the double. So now that first segment is going to be complete. You have the subline is already taking control of drunk. The last two players at least trying to contest over towards the coop side. And with a couple kills going in their favor, they might decide to hit this timing on the pinch. And it's going to fall into the hands of Hydra. The comm does come in, though. Dash with great team shots, able to take him down. And the subline is able to get in right before that second segment is complete. So now it's all on the press. The farthest player pushed out. What else can he get done? Only one. All of Optic Texas now off the reset. This is a ridiculous gunfight to try to have to take and sit with a pistol. Maybe just able to get enough regen to take it. Find the win. Skies Kenny, long range battle. Goes the way of Skies. Dashy up top at Bricks. Looking to see where this New York push has come through. And Optic are 
I will say that they've been completely befuddled here. They just have no idea where New York members have gone to. They track down Sib, but you still have two members in the front defending nicely. Oh, Hydra gets a little spun on by Dash. You could comms, I imagine. But still, the focus towards A is limited, and this may force Kenny to have to step on the B zone just to stop the clock. Yeah, that's exactly what Kenny has to do. His teammates are getting bullied through the middle of the map, but unfortunately, he's going to try to play for a kill. Now, when he finds that kill, all of New York's focus is we got to take down Kenny off of B, but at the same time, we have to apply that pressure like we have been over towards A. As you're currently only down by three segments. The game is not far-fetched as... The contest no. is going to be here. You're able to take down Kenny. The clock continues to dwindle. 18 seconds left. They're able to pause it on it. Seven life advantage as well for New York defensively. So even if the extra 60 gets tallied, Optic, again, may only have two good hits at trying to break through this B zone. New York will concede. Try to play for the exits. Any kills here would be incredible just to try to stagger out this Optic transition. And I think the biggest thing you need to do if you're the subliners is obviously someone is keeping tally of the current ticks in favor of optic texas you cannot allow them to at least walk away with two at b if you want to have yourself defense on round number five yeah but it's all about these engagements right here optic already found himself in some great spots as they are pushed up in towards red dash with a big one-on-one -on -one starts it off but new york are ready with the crossfires at least trading efficiently right back into the point they go every life is a valuable one right now for optic kismet oh completely overwhelmed double hit comes out in the oh. pistol from kenny holy smokes hydra just got obliterated now Fred around the back not quite able to finish off as Sib is right there over the jump ball, but Shotzi able to work with Kenny for two. First tick locked. Shotzi not done. That'll turn into two, and let's be honest, that's likely going to be the third. New York just nowhere nearby, and that's what we call good objective play. Get on. Stack it. Force New York to make something incredible happen, and they're not able to. It's a 3-0 for Optic. Yeah, Optic Texas has one of their bread and butter controls. All they needed was one opportunity, one set of kills to make their way on in. And they make it count as they walk away with a clean 3-0 on the Karachi control. Keep this series alive a little bit longer. And for the subliners, I know you wanted to test this, but I can tell you right now what you need to work on. It has to be yeah. your B setup. Because if you're allowing A to get away from you, obviously you're up by 7 to 8 lives. When you allowed Optic Texas to instantly rotate over and take control of red, and it comes down to one set of fights, you have to be able to create layers. On a map like Karachi, where it's very difficult to break on in if you're trying to overextend, if you don't have any red control. But the fact that subliners are giving that up for free, allowing yeah, Optic yeah. to play the timings of those gunfights in through the red side, they won a majority of those fights, and that's all it came down to, because you might have a couple players pushed out towards Junk, but if you're losing those gunfights at red, you're not forcing the player at Junk to rotate back, try to assist your teammate at Cafe, he lose that fight, and then everyone off the respawn is forced to hit the jump over. Yep. Definitely something you want to go back and look over if you are the subliners, because you want to try to add this to your map pool, but Optic, they get it done in three, and now they force a game four. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, again, you know, you're going to have opportunities to review over and maybe even copy yep. paste a little bit right i mean from both teams on all the three maps we've seen to this point but i think you're absolutely right i mean think about if new york just were to have stacked with even two members towards yep. that setup over towards b it just forces a totally different setup from optic to where you have to come through and challenge and yeah of course there's going to be some lapses to look back over defensively as well where maybe you're getting a little bit too cute playing for kills to create map positioning advantages that you don't necessarily need like it just i don't know it feels like they're trying to take maybe an extra step too far forward in certain regards when maybe you're not needed. I don't know. Hard to say. I'm just a caster after all. Those that don't play, cast. Sub base, hard point coming up next. This is going to be a fun one as well because, hey, we've seen New York on the bed a couple of times. They've looked good. But Optic at the same rate, you know, found favor at this at major one in Boston. So could be another idea for them to extend this series to map number five. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a battle because we're talking about both of these teams flawless so far in this map. 2-0 for the subliners, 3-0 for Optic Texas. When I looked at the numbers, everything was basically mirrored. They're both second overall in rotations. The only difference is the hold percentage where New York yeah, are sitting yeah. at number two and Optic are sitting at number five. And if map one is going to tell us anything, New York were ahead in the fundamentals. Every single time they needed to get to one of these money hills, they were the team early off the rotation. And on a map like sub base, you have to be that team set up properly because we know how difficult it is and how punishing it is to try to find success in breaking because you're spawning all the way across the damn map.
Yeah, and you know, that was something that when, you know, I think we were the ones that actually cast the first time they were on sub base when they played it at the major uh, against Atlanta. And we were like, mm -hmm. well, this is bold. And I think yeah. we both walked away saying, hey, Optic is making the right plays, the right focus, the right decision making in terms of making sure that rotation is at least contested or challenged. Nothing's for free. And I think at the same rate, they're also good at kind of gauging when spawns were going to move and how they want to play around it. It's one of those like, oh, I I'm the only player left alive and I'm the furthest forward. Let me just not chal anything. Wait for my teammates to get to me. And I think that coordination was super tipped on when they were playing it, especially against Atlanta the first time we saw them uh, just trying to square up on it. Oh, yeah, they, they beat the hell out of Atlanta. And obviously, Atlanta, they have not liked sub base. They even lost it today versus LAG. So Optic Texas, they just have to continuously stay to their strengths. Like I said, both these teams are right next to each other in rotations, but they're also right next to each other in breaks, number one and number two. So it all yeah, comes yeah. down to the setups, man. If your setup is better than the opposing team, where you're the team initially set up for the hard point, you are going to walk away with the W. And I think in the back of your minds, if you are Optic Texas, that's what you have to focus on. I like it. There's the overall season for sub base, and it kind of just, again, mimics exactly what we we're talking about. And I, and I just need to hark it back to it. We kind of talked about this a lot during the Rio is even when, you know, Optic maybe don't necessarily have the strongest of overall holds, their efficiency on the point is, I mean, really rivaled only by the other top teams in the game, which is, oh, yeah. you know, great news in terms of if things do go wrong, you're able to recover and at least keep things relatively tight. So, I mean, again, just looking at it on paper, we should assume this is gonna be another banger like Rio was flat out. I'm expecting nothing less, my friend. We get into a map like sub base. I'm really more focused on the AR present because you know how many egg glitches you can put yourself on this map that can put your team in the advantage. Top snow, top three, P2 window. Yeah. Those are all the power positions you need to make sure you are holding down. So I'm just really curious who's going to be the squad to start off on the preferred side over towards that P2 side. Because if you can chain it early on with getting a lot of P1 time, controlling them and the spawn, not allowing anyone to slip on by, and then chaining it to the P2, that's when the game starts to get out of hand because then you're forced yeah. to now break it where you could potentially flip, and anything can happen at that point. But here we go, map four. Yep. Kind of a polar opposite in terms of how we react to this compared to Rio. Lots of control. Lots of AR gameplay, you assume. Kismet, sit first couple of kills. Optic, the first one's in the hard point, but barely able to tally any kills except for... Dashy's MCW, which is not to be trifled with. Stun out. Oh my goodness. That's a hell of a triple from Dashy. May seem a bit insignificant, but it essentially neutralizes all of the early success from New York. And Optic still a chance to hold on to the left side of the map while focusing on the hard point at the same time. Yeah, that almost got scary because the New York came out with three already in the feed. The fact that Dash is able to respond with three, even with a couple teammates spawning behind enemy lines, you keep the spawns in favor of Optic Texas. Now with only 15 seconds left on P1, Sim already finds himself on five. That guy is shooting but it's all out mixy in towards p2 optic currently have the numbers but the spawns are there for the subliners yeah. they should be able to chain this to the p2 up right it's as well. just yeah new york's timing and when they want to play rotation it's almost on like an exact dime 15 seconds on the old hard point they're already making moves away and it's every single rotation every single time we saw it on rio and that creates success here as well early on sub base big gap started to open up early on the scoreboard but optic not out of the realm of possibility of trying to hit this for a break pistol out for skies that works kind of saves his life for a time and the extra shots able to allow kismet a very easy elimination optic tested pushed back but not done yet yeah optic at least have to try to get in though you have to try to contest this and a great route from shotzi is not going to flip those spawns for optic they're going to get the close spawns in towards the back. The final 25 is going to be theirs, but it's going to be the subliners winning the rotation over towards next. And at the same time, Sib did earn himself that cruise missile. So that can play a big part later into this game. But I think a force to break. They're finding the early kills through the little map. No one from the subliners creating layers so far. If you are Optic Texas, you are in a very, very crucial position. You have Warehouse, you have Top Snow. The break can instantly come on in with those spawns for Kismet all the way out. Yep, no one in the hard point. White time means that the spawns moved around just a touch. Side by side, they spawn over on the opposite side of the map. Sky's tested, though, at the new hill, and he eventually gets taken down. That'll be enough for Optic to spawn back in. So outside of a little bit of craziness over towards the outside port of this hard point, Optic have regained and found themselves good control. Kismet playing close up towards the ammo stash and with follow-ups through the middle of the map, that's enough for New York to instantly re-break the hill. Oh, he's two of the best breaking teams that we have on this map. It's an Unreal. early break from Optic Texas, and then one push is all it took for New York to get right back on in. And now with only 30 seconds remaining on this hill, Optic are now forced to make a decision. Do we decide to be aggressive enough to where we can test them and potentially get them off at the time? Or do we just try to hold them off and 
get all this time at P4. You saw Shotzi, he tried to be aggressive and create a layer, but he gets cut down. So the subline is going to walk away with this remaining junk time. And this is an opportunity where Sib can invest that cruise missile early on to break the setup for Optic Texas. This guy is looking like he's just trying to see if he can find anybody before the hard point opens. There's the cruise missile aptly called. Sim just eating his microphone, calling out every single player needed. And as Dashi falls from inside the hard point, New York now reinforced a Pred up top. Oh my goodness. Able to maybe salvage the moment. The spawns will move, but it's still actually parallel in the back. Skies is the only one to actually spawn in for New York. He's been red, dealt with. Hard point goes open. Sib still teeing off from the outside of the hill, though. I mean, it's just a mix fest. Sib still coming away with the eliminations. Kismet able to take down Dashi, but Optic once again stabilized with the proximal spawn. Bonds. That was such a big read to read the positioning of Skies right there because he could have broke it all right there for Optic Texas. But they trade officially. They're going to be the team to walk away with the final 20. But off the rotation again, New York ahead of the game to take control of P2's side. Now you're going to force Optic Texas to either wrap back and fight some really difficult gunfights or have someone try to overextend. Kismet is not able to spot Shotzi. And I don't know if they're going to be able to read this play out of Shotzi because you're not expecting anyone to come from warehouse side. It's going to be Skies oh. at least holding down that position. And there's a nade that gets thrown maybe by Skies. It doesn't tag Shotzi. So he's just going to wait for the hit to develop from the front. And this timing is absolutely freaking brilliant. Skies turns his attention over towards where the optic kills are coming from. Sib caught out over towards Staff. Doesn't want to over. Chow tries to reset it, but Shotzi's play turns the hard point in favor of Optic. That's such a beautiful play, man, because keep in mind, if Shotzi's teammates fall on that side, everyone from Optic Texas now swung over towards Warehouse, and you do not want that 4P5, but he trusts his teammates to find a couple kills to eventually lead to the pinch, which will now lead to Optic Texas taking the lead with only 24 wow. seconds left. That's such a great heads-up play, great teamwork on full display, great trust on full display for Optic Texas to walk away with a majority of this P5 time, and now they're going to be able to chain it over towards P1, trying to keep New York trapped towards the back end. Honestly speaking there, friends, remember those two hard points. That could be a major map dictator. The fact that Optic survived through the mix fest backside sub with the spawns, and then that route from Shotzi has turned this from essentially a 40-point deficit into about a 30-point lead, and it's not stopping yet. Optic still dealing with a handful of streaks as well. Pred on five in a row, Shotzi on four, and there's not a contestant anywhere to be seen for the subliners anywhere. Now they're nowhere even close. This is trying to find a way on in, but Pred now finds himself on six, making seven <laughs> in a row. Gets it done with the Rival 9. He's even better with the MCW. As Optic Texas is starting to blow this game wide open. With 30 seconds remaining on P1, you see New York, we cannot continuously contest over through water. We have to try to get out and flip these spawns over towards P2. A couple players oh, make man. it out, but it's still Optic Texas soaking a full 60 at this P1. This is unbelievable place from Optic Texas. A great couple of chains of these hard points. It's just perfect, flat out. Pred still on eight. Dashy not going to lose that gunfight. Trades out Hydra. And honestly speaking, considering New York rotated with 30 seconds still left on P1, this has been expensive. And yeah. I mean, Gucci store expensive. <laughs> and now this is where that cruise missile now is going to get invested for Optic Texas. Can you locate at least one player? No, you cannot. But at least you still have a couple players contesting through the back end. It's now shots at your turn to finesse. Knows that son is going to be able to connect. He's going to be dancing with death, but Hydra finally is going to be able to take care of him. And now if you are the subliners, like you said, you rotate at 30. You have to make a count at P2. They find all the kills. There's still a couple players from Optic Texas trying to contest this, but this is a hill that you have to be able to respond on. They've done good so far, but Optic, again, are here to contest it. Yeah, Kismet just stunned time and time again. Sky's trophy system gets placed. He's trying to work his way in through the forklift side, but Optic continue to find the kills they need to, at worst, have this hard point stay neutral. Nice shots from Kenny to finish off Hydra at low HP, topside snow. And once again, I mean, New York already rotated in a row. They just have no chance. And it's just, again, one of those moments that you look at the efficiency of Optic. They do not let a point go if they don't have to. Unbelievable stretch of hard points here for Optic, enjoying an 80-point lead. Now they're trying to break in towards P3, where they found success very, very early the last term, last go around. They already have top snow. Kenny in the crucial position does get red by Sib. Sib is able to find two great shots onto Dashi. So the first push had been pulled off. 
As New York with only 40 seconds left on this P3, they know that they need all this time. But if you are out to Texas, let's just try to contest it as much as we can and make sure we have those spawns over towards the next hill as well. New York gonna get the blessings of Kismet still spawning in. Good gunfight win from Sky. 25 seconds to fight for, and Sib following up. That's on the rotation. Uh oh, there is a chance here that New York could start to string this together. Optic under threat of possibly being spawn trapped to your backside P3. They're gonna get 15, 16 seconds worth here at the end, which again is not the worst news in the world. It's gonna get them really close to that 200 point mark, but New York setting themselves up for what they need to do, which is find a full 60 right here, right now. Yeah, this needs to be the response. You have to try to hold Optic off, and you're right now getting all the info that they are applying pressure over towards that water side, and it's going to fall into the hands of Kenny, who's slowly working his way up to Warehouse. Already spots a player, and Hydra is able to win that gunfight. So now if you are New York, you have to worry about your back, oh. but you have to continuously worry about your front. They're winning all the gunfights through the front. Finally, Kenny is going to be able to work his way up through the left side, but it's been a great hole from New York to get back into this game. Yeah, Flawless 30 seconds. Wait a second. Has Shotzi just walked up behind New York? No one saw him at all. I think that's through bottom maze. Hydra eventually comes through to regain control of the hard point, but Kenny's position is going to block spots. Maybe even win them. Yeah, for Optic. So still 20 seconds to fight for, and now New York has a new threat to deal with. They need to make sure they respond to these players spawning behind them. Dashy trying to pinch from the front. 15 seconds worth of time. Again, this is critical for New York. Hydra stuck in the corner, and more time is going to be tallied for Optic with the back 10 seconds going their way. Yeah, it's a big 10 seconds for Optic Texas to not allow that full 60 to get away from them and allow the subliners back into this game. But off the rotation, it's going to be New York again set up for p5 but this time i don't know who's going to decide to hit that route it's not going to be dashy overextending through water they're going to try to contest this from the front these next set of fights might change the game dashy on three cleans out skies that's going to help optics start to make pretty swift moves on the other side of the map but new york responding exactly when they need to Pred, last one standing for optic value is life slips away stun will connect still deals with kismet trade is decent but numbers are optic start to amass from the front 30 seconds to fight for can't win here but boy you can come close yeah, and they're on a preferred side even though the kills are going back and forth optic texas continuously spawning over towards speed to forcing the subliners to try to break in from warehouse they do find the initial two fights. Hopefully a couple attacks are going to start hitting, but it's still Pred here to contest. He does take down one. Hydra there for the trade, so potential final 15 going in favor of the subliners, but it's all about the rotation. It's a 30-point game. You have to win these early gunfights if you are the subliners. Yeah, Sib's on an island. He cannot give up this top server position, but the thing is he's got no information on where anyone's positioned at all. Finally, a little bit of intel towards Dash. He turns to find Kenny waiting for him topside stairs. Hydra trying to slip through this setup big Dash read read oh my goodness oh down from pred new york possibly on their way to a map five here as optic have the full setup and the break is nowhere to be found as of yet someone's got to be a hero here for new york yeah you gotta get in you gotta get in and you have to do it by winning a couple gunfights but optic only needing a couple seconds until they secure this map number four it's a mixed fast dancing shotsy dancing with death he walks out on top optic trying to force game five last couple of seconds and no the last gunfight comes through to secure the final point i mean wow and I gotta go back. We'll talk about it during the highlights. But oh, yeah. Back to that P4, P5 transition from Optic. That's the game right there, flat out. That was it. That was a turning point because keep in mind, I said it when the game, when the play was happening. If Shotzi's teammates do not find any kills over towards P2, with him in a position towards back warehouse, all of Optic Texas will now spawn on Shotzi. But he had the trust. He knows his teammates down to the T. They are going to be able to win a couple gunfights on that end. They cause the problems on that side of the map. You eventually set up Shotzi to set up the pinch. And then, like you said, that was the turning point of the game, man. Because if that play does not come to fruition for Optic Texas, they eventually find themselves down by 60 to 70 points. But since it yep. worked out to their favor, they were ahead of the game by 60 to 70, a majority of that. And then all it took was a couple breaks here. Final 15, that's mine. A couple breaks here at the P4, keep it at Mixie. But then every single time at P5, they were the team spawning over towards that P2 side, forcing New York to try to break in from Warehouse. Yep. And that's just not the recipe for success as Optic Texas able to respond with two back-to-back -back respawns in a row to now force the game five. I mean, you could see it from P3 to P1. You're dealing with 130 points to like 20. Huge swing. And kind of like we figured, this back half of the series starts to look very positive for Optic. But we also said this when we were looking at the map series layout when it first got revealed. This map five is 
legitimately nothing more than a true square up jay yep. so we'll set everything up we're gonna send things to a quick break don't go anywhere it's the last qualification match before miami and it has the makings of an instant classic karazzi search and destroy to determine the number one seat when we come back don't go anywhere up your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store upgrade your game with the scuff the official controller of the call of duty league <laughs> Unless Priesta can come up with something magical, something historical. You players falling. Priesta ends up getting traded out, but Sandy's still here. No response right now for Rocker, but hey, we've got to put ourselves on pause. 1.5 seconds on the clock. Atlanta phase. They've got to push their way in. They've got to dig their way through. Nades, tacticals, utility tossed out. But take a look at this. Take a look at oh the my. right now from Minnesota. And they do not push on to the point. On my bookstore. Oh, okay. Vale. Uh, no tengo culpa mía. Me voy a tirar a Stun. El compi, el compi. He's planting. He, uh, the, the bomb is on B. Literally on B. If I get that one, I'll get an ace. Just saying. Ace! GG. <laughs> Bickle now. Last one up. He's got a trophy though, right? He threw a trophy. Out. Out. He threw a trophy. Out. Out. Hey, I think mean, this might be He's too slow. There. Either He's still way. There. He got it. Oh, he does get it. Yeah, it was too slow. <laughs> he gets it. He just hops it right away. Nobody checks the bomb. It's up and about as is tradition. We're gonna fly towards that ring, that first hard point, as both teams will jostle for position. New York in first. Over to Selium, who finds two right off the rear. Makes it three. Phase will take those points. Right, champs is solidified. Now it's about getting that championship. We know how that momentum can get you the ring. And look at that trophy. What's it's that? the best in That's Call of Duty history. Care right there. We did pretty good in Black Ops too. I think that thing is better. Let's take a look though at the cast. Get to the window and Shotzi just lying in wait. He's waiting for the call from his teammates. The moment of pounce. He's trying to bait these guys out. And the bait indeed. You got the two players on the flank coming through. They've got the spawns. Now the pressure's on Cammy. Oh, looking for the second. Looking for the third. He wow. takes him down. Classic moments across the history of COD, and not to sound over embellishing here, but we've had a couple in this series with potential for more. Map five, final qualifier, top seed on the line. It's been a series that has been largely labeled for testing out certain weaknesses before the major, but now into map number five, both teams looking primed and ready. You throw away what the rest of the series was. This is just down to now you got to prove you're the best team in the game. Yeah, this is the square up right here. This is the absolute square up between both of these teams. You see the game five metrics, four and two for Optic Texas. They've fallen short in a couple, but on the opposite side for the Sunblinders, completely icy. Five and oh, since the beginning of the season, they have yet to lose a game five, and they're trying to continue that streak here in this game five. Because like I said, it's going to be Karachi. Both of these teams are some of the best teams that we have on this map. We're talking about number one and number three defensive team. Number two and number three overall first bloods for both of these squads. The only big difference is Optic Texas are a lot better than New York Subliners on yes, their attacking side. That's where New York have to put their focus on. We have to try to win a couple attacking rounds by finding that first blood.
Huge stuff. I mean, it looks you can maybe even take away a little bit of inspiration and some patterns from what we saw in the terminal as well. Keep in mind, we saw a lot of New York just running at Optic when they yep. converted that first blood. When they can confirm a 4v3, they're not going to let Optic even have a chance to make an adjustment or any sort of follow-up decision. So for Optic, it's about not just avoiding the first blood, but trying to avoid it in the first 15 seconds, because that was also an issue on terminal, as they will kick things off on the attacking front. It's going to be Dashy finding that first blood. Instantly, Hydra there to response. Already a 3v3. New York have gotten a read on where the pressure is coming in. Yeah. Skies was able to get early info onto Shotzi, but still a 3v3. A minute to go. Optic Texas is just waiting. Waiting because their bomb carrier is all the way across the map. This is nothing more than a show of force here for Optic. This was never a dedicated call towards trying to work in towards eight, because like you mentioned, the bomb was never a part of this play. Yeah. But the thing is, Hydra just won with the grass. Does it make a difference? Didn't execute on the trigger to the point of staying down. Shotzi able to save a life. And now Sib, the sole defender towards B, gets a read on the play. Skies slid back on, confirms the information for Pred to follow up. And now it is just down to Sib. Able to isolate one. Down low, not going to take the better of Shotzi. And wow, two critical eliminations for Shotzi in the round to keep Optic alive. Oh man, Shotzi just made it happen. Maybe if you're hydrant, you check both sides of the street. I know my parents taught me that at a very early age. <laughs> but he doesn't look left and he commits towards one gunfight. And Shotzi's able to keep Pred alive. And at that point, you have the numbers. You're forcing the 2v3. Someone to try to shut down that B-bomb plant. Skies tries to get it done. He gets cut down and then Sib left in the 1v3. Optic Texas is just in a perfect position to find the trade. Secure the first attacking round. 1-0 for Optic. Huge. I mean, Hydra legitimately going unchecked right there. Could have just won the round immediately. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Full four-man hit now for New York. Over towards B. Trophies isn't keeping any early utility at bay. Kismet, early smoke, crosses. Gets deep in towards tunnel. Stun comes through. That's enough to at least confirm the information for Optic that, yep, there is a threat here. That allows Pred to start to make his move. First blood tallied, and now New York is kind of stuck backside palms. Because they're thinking, like, usually every time I watch Optic Texas play this map, it's usually Shotzi or Pred who love to take over that bridge control. But you invest that smoke grenade, you see it's all cleared out. And Pred changes his positioning to find the first blood through top three. Mm. So now in the 4v3, New York have all B site control, but it's not going to be easy to put this bomb down because you don't know where Optic Texas are watching this bomb from. Yeah, and on the other front, Optic cleared out all of Hotel. Everything got red, everything beyond it. So they know that all three members are playing either in market or this backside bridge position. Pred just kind of takes some focus over towards the top, eventually dealt with Hydra watching through market. Well done. And then Kizza from the front also wins his 1v1. Hello. Oh my goodness. A perfect 3v4 hold on the post plant. And really, it was never really tested. Low through middle. So they were allowing that bomb plant to go down for free. But the setup for the sub was just too strong. One player bottom fire car, one up to the top bridge. And then Hydra playing his slow towards Coop. He got early information, was able to back out, reposition himself, and find a double to close out the round. So sub is already changing the stats. Where they needed to win a couple attacking rounds, they secure their first. Yeah, in a 3v4 fashion as well. Yeah. You take that. All right. We stay squared up. New York, opening nades limited towards mid, but there's still a little bit of focus happening. As Skies gets back over towards that top AC position. Shotzi a bit more delayed on this route, playing in towards top red, just making sure no defenders are nearby, and Pred's right here to assist. So this is all about Optic, trying to clear out red, see if they can force any early engagements with these SMGs in hand. Yeah, this is just, all right, I'm going to crack this door, force a couple players from New York sublines to not get too aggressive on the flank. And just keep them knowing that there's a couple players from Optic Texas still around this red area. But you can see that bomb slowly working its way up through B again. It's Dashi and Kenny at least trying to open up with some kind of information on how they are playing this setup. The thing is, with Shotzi playing so aggressively here at front red, he's kind of pushed Skies further back. So this has created a lot of openings here at B. The only real defense is at a range. And as shots come through, Shotzi now enabled to make the play forward. That's just perfect in terms of baiting and switching out your teammates. Trophy system eventually denied. Smoke will be in place. Skies does find one kill that is on the bomb carrier of Kenny, but easily collected and immediately planted by Dashi. Oh, and Skies is able to find a second as well onto Pred. He was thinking that there was a couple players from New York going on that deep pinch, but now it's a 2v3. Shotzi in a crucial position to at least even up the numbers, finds a kill onto Skies, and now it's all about finessing. 35 seconds left. And this has stopped the New York retake for just a brief moment. They know they need to make sure Shotzi's not hitting through bottom tools and Hydra does catch him through that top side apartment. Just down to Dashi. 
and he has eluded a lot of this defense but the problem is hydra has hopped for the diffuse over the top shots are in but oh. he doesn't finish the kill and the diffuse gets secured hard to say if the last bullet would have been there in time but regardless of the outcome the kill doesn't happen in new york do get the diffuse yeah, I don't know how New York able to walk away with that round. Like, that's just great plays from them because Optic Texas, they did everything early into the round to perfection. You were keeping two players at that A site. You also found the first opening kill at B. And when you try to work that bomb plant, it falls into the hands of Skies, just simply being able to take down Kenny. But as we go back to the replay, it was a split second of shot. If yeah. Dash is able to hit one more bullet, he's probably going to be able to take that bomb carrier down. But... Subliners just stick to defuse. They know who they were going up against. Dashy always plays for a kill when they find the time to secure the defuse. Milliseconds away. Small points of damage away from either side of things. Dashy, sole defender at B. Once again, New York do the exact same thing. Right over towards this top ridge position. This time, though, Sib does get tagged up. Information gained, but this isn't as much force from New York as it was the previous offense. They got a couple members watching for the pinch. And maybe just to assume that if Optic want to retake through market again, they're going to get tested in a different way. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to try to retake, through, at least through the back end. Yeah. Two players watching that deep pinch, but it's only a matter of moments before Kismet decides to lay the bomb down. He actually laid it down in the front end as well. So, bomb is going to be planted for the subliners. Shotzi finds the first kill, 3v4, trying to clutch on up. Yeah, good punish here. Whether it was known or not, Shotzi taking the ladder out through mid. Allows him a chance to open up for this defense and to make this retake start to occur. Oh, oh, good help from Kiz. Hydra now on four. Last one left alive is Kenny. Tough shots versus Kiz mid. And then the teams work so good from New York. Oh, it felt like Shotzi may have opened things up perfectly for the defense getting to top third, but it just did not matter. The kills from New York just too quick. Yeah, that's the number one and number two SD players that we have in the world. They get it done in a 2v4 with those rival nines. Just the read pinches from Hydra. The positioning plays from Kismet to plant that bomb on the front end so he has an easier angle when he jumps up from top three and just keeps his teammate alive as well through the middle of the map. Optic Texas definitely want that one back, but that's a clutch, clutch, icy round right there to the subliners to not put them up 3-1. Yeah. Five in a row for Kismet, four in a row for Hydra. Extra tools. Possibly here to be earned in this round. Opening dates for Optic. Come with some pretty significant force over towards B. Sim takes the front action of a lot of the business out of that, but sends it a lot back in return as well. So everything kind of stays pretty neutral here. Optic still posturing around this B setup. He's trying to get a read on what the subliners are doing on the defensive side. Sib is just changing his position. He's around this foul area, but it's going to be Dashy finding that first one onto Kismet through top red. Now you work the bomb plant. Sky's trying to at least contest it as much as he can. At least the Dashy finding this second. Another 4v2. This time, Sib and I. Oh. Hydra immediately diminished. Sib, last one left. Nothing to do there. Absolutely nothing. Wow. It really does start with the opening engagement again. First blood converted on nicely. And New York's defense over towards B, which has largely been relying on retaking, may need to try to find a different response here because Optic has found a lot of success getting plans and nearly winning rounds almost every single time they've gone this way. Yeah, the thing that's more difficult is that the fact that Dashi finds a first blood onto a player that's playing over towards the A side. Yeah, so true, true. You find that first kill, you already know that you're in the man advantage. You take control of bridge, instantly pop the smoke, put the bomb down, and you're 4v3. <laughs> And then Dash, he's also able to find his second onto Sky. So a great response right there from Optic Texas to secure the attacking ground. Back for New York on their attacking side. You can already see the adjustment from Optic Texas. We're not giving up B anymore. We're going to send Pred to his playground at the bridge. Thing is, I don't know if he's got the ability to actually get there. Nades tag him up. He has to duck for cover. And now if he pops up, he may just get completely obliterated. I mean, you don't know what's up top third. You've got Dashy watching for the close side of the platform, but... Skies is just kind of wiggling up here, trying to scout things out. And so Preds kind of have to stay down pretty much for the rest of this round until we start to see action somewhere else. Yeah, Preds got to stay down and at least the shots he finding that first kill onto Hydra. As you saw him and Sib were trying to at least get some information done through red. But Optic now with the first play, you're going to force New York to try to make a play. It's Sib Massive. trying to be the ISO one over towards the A side. He gets picked apart by Kenny. So it's another 4v2, make it a 4v1. All left up to Kismet unbelievable that is that is just flat out i don't want to use the word but i it's the only one coming to mind it's like borderline lucky for optic because dashy 
and Pratt are in one for one positions. They don't know what's coming. I and mean, if they would have traded out their life for a single kill, that would have been successful given where they were. But you get participation from Kenny on the other side of the map. And then all of a sudden those one for one positions are your win condition. So yeah, really fortunate stuff that the optic defense on the other side of the map were able to kind of help out towards what was a very limited B defense overall. And you could just see what subliners were trying to get done in that round. Two players over towards red. They were trying to at least find an opening kill to allow Kismet to slowly work his way as the only player over towards that B bomb. But once those players get picked apart, you're now forced to try to make a play. And Optic Texas got to read on it to perfection. All tied up at three. Back on the intoxic side for Optic Texas. This time they're full sending it over towards A. Is any of this heard by Kismet up top? Most of this has been dead silent. But at the same rate, Optic's sneaky play down low means that there's a lot of question marks on if there are New York members up top. And how about the timing here? Oh my goodness. First blood good. Kenny tested, pushed out, eventually dealt with by Kismet, but the bomb gets planted. 3v2. 3v2. Now that Hydra finds that second kill on to Dashi. So the subline is trying to retake for middle, but it's Brent on the reflank. Should be able to find a freebie, but is not able to finish the kill onto Sib. Is only able to take him down. Allows the subliners to assist him in that gunfight to trade efficiently. But once you saw Hydra get pushed up through that B side all the way up through Coop, New York knew exactly what was going on. The pressure has to be over towards A. It was Kismet who jumps up from top bus into single window, is instantly able to respond after the first blood came in for Optic Texas. And you just keep the numbers in your favor. Maybe if Pred is able to get that kill with these, you make it a yeah. 2v2, a more manageable play. But the fact that he has to overcommit to get that one gunfight, you allow the subliners to assist him to at least find that trade and now secure the defensive round. It was great teamwork throughout this entire series in the search and destroy for New York. Talk so about it a lot done. in their 4v3s. And yeah, and there again, it's just, hey, I'm going to get tested. Quick help on the way. It's just so much trust in one another. And that teamwork has provided these small windows of opportunity for New York to this point. Nades, aggressive through the middle of the map here for New York. It's gotten Hydra for the first time forward and towards barrels. But remember the last time that Fred was stuck behind barrier? Now he gets over towards bridge because those nades don't get thrown. So Shotzi gets the first blood at mid, and now Pred is completely unguarded bottom side bridge. Yeah, you have no info that Pred is going to be in that position, so especially playing the position that he's currently in. This has already been 35 seconds knocked off of the game clock. Subliners looking like the push is going to come in towards B, but you see Kismet throwing shoulders, trying to check the lower scaffolding, trying to check this close left corner, but eventually he's so going good. to send it right into the pre-aiming Pred. This was what it was supposed to look like. Last time around, they were on defense. Decent trade, though, from Skies, and him staying alive afterwards, actually super crucial, because Dashi should have been here. Try to pick him up, and he was on rotation. Doesn't matter, still finds the kill. Bomb collected by Sib, but can't do anything with it. Yeah, that's the way that play was supposed to work two rounds ago, and you can see why it's in the playbook. It's just a great defensive setup. Great adjustment right there from Optic Texas to go back to their bread and butter. You're not going to be able to work this bomb plan over towards B. You take bridge control, but then all in the back of Shotzi, who finds the timing again to find the first blood onto Hydra. Once you get that first kill of about 20 to 25 seconds into the round, you're forcing the attacking team to really slow down because there's so many positions you have to now account for your deep yeah. flank, the middle of the map, and also the back side of the map when you're trying to work that bomb plan. It's just not enough for New York to secure that one. Optic tied up again. 3-1 split off. Fred going by himself over towards A. The rest of Optic spending a lot of their utility over towards this B site. New York playing aggressively with two defenders over the top at this B position. And Dashi, who was trying to search out info, does get cut. Skies back up towards top AC. May have also seen shots. He kind of dancing in and out of bricks up top here. So New York will have some information that Optic are not done at B at the moment. And now if you are Optic Texas, you cannot waste a lot of time to try to retake yeah. over towards B. Because you know Hydra was being aggressive and Sid was sitting towards top catwalk. So you have to now hit that rotation over towards A where it's only going to be Kismet. And now Skies is off the rotation here to assist them. 45 seconds remaining on the game clock. You're getting a couple sound cues of players working their way in towards red, but Shotzi again oh finds God, the timing dude. up to the ladder. 3v3. And he gets on to the second. <laughs> Kismet just gets completely caught. He thought he would have been safe, but didn't expect Shotzi just to YOLO off top AC like that. Bomb planted. 2v3 situation. Hydra's already consumed the dead silence and is likely to expire just as he starts to hit the wall. Shots his little pop-up, sees it, gets the kill. Now down to Sib, 1v3, not a lot of time remaining. Shotzi also off four. Sib takes the first pretty cleanly. Resets, 22 seconds. 
Sib now making his play forward, but Pred has seen him. Got to see that all from Shotzi's POV, but tough premise for Sib to pull away with that 1v3. And I just think if you are the subliners right there, you get the first blood over towards the B point, and then you have two players holding down that site. So at that point, you know, B is nowhere going to be there for Optic Texas to even try to contest it. You have to put yourself in better positions around that A bomb, or A bomb to at least give up the bomb plant, but not initially drop in these situations. Shotzi just <laughs> does what Shotzi does. Finds the timing to climb up the ladder, the second jump shot onto Kismet, and the third onto Hydra. He's been getting the better to him these last couple of rounds in this search and destroy. And now that puts Optic Texas at game point. Yep. What's the defense call going to be, Pred? Once again, same setup. If it works, no need to fix it. But this time, a little bit of extra team fire coming through. Pred just hoping he can survive a little while longer, but the first blood gets tallied. Dashing also pushed off this position. Wide open B site for the time being for New York, but not committing to it yet. They've backed off. Look at Chassis, though. He's already taken a lot out of ground behind enemy lines. There's no way New York are going to get a read on it, but now they are with positioning being known. So this is where New York needs to just isolate Chassis, but the smoke grenade is going to make it a lot oh more God. difficult. He's able to find the kill on the skies and get out with his life. What a play out of Chassis. And New York is trapped. They have to commit to playing over B now. There is no exit back through market with Chassis in that forward position. He even rewraps just to make sure that New York has committed through that smoke. Kenny playing up. Trusting he's going to get a call from one of his teammates. And they know. They know that they're positioned and stuck here. But Kenny pops up and actually gets taken down quickly. Shotzi, though, not done. Around the back. Does he get timing on this? No. Oh, I don't know if he saw Kismet off the plant. Surely he's seen Hydra deep, but it doesn't make a difference. Hydra cleans him up nicely. And now it's just down to Dashi. He knows where two positions are, but can he find the third off the regen? Hydra just dancing with them. Dashi moving forward, but Sid comes from behind, finds the kill, and we're going round 11. Whew. Man, I thought when Shotzi pops that smoke and finds that kill on Disguise, you find yourself on five in a row, you're probably going to play a little bit safer to earn that cruise missile. But the subliners, once they were able to locate where Kenny was around that bomb, you take care of him, you put yourself in the man advantage, you're able to find the second, or at least allow your teammate to work that bomb plan. But then you also shut down Shotzi off of earning that cruise missile. I wouldn't want it to end any other way than a round 11 between either. two Titans. Here we go, Alan. Lock in, fans. Maybe sneak to the edge of your seat if there's any room left. New York going back over for the same B offense. Pred, first time he's played here. Similar aggression. Trophy system down. Pred trying to hold the front door. Shotzi working on another flank opportunity. Does he get timing again? Oh, sure does. He finds Hydra. Pred went one for one, but the trades are decent. We're going to go 2v2 early. It's 2v2. The ARs of Optic Texas versus Kismet and Skies. 55 seconds left. New York is just going to throw that decoy smoke out to force oh. Optic Texas to hit the rotation over towards B, but they have read this to perfection. Kenny's stun not hitting anything means that Dashi knows that he very well may be tested here at A. Does he catch the timing? Doors pop. There's the first. Skies tries the battle back. Not going to happen. Optic take the round 11. The reverse sweep complete. And rock the number one seed next to their name heading into Miami. Hoo-wee! That's how you get it done if you are Optic Texas. It wasn't the prettiest. You're going down 0-2. But they have been able to complete a lot of reverse sweeps all throughout this stage. And they add another one to the tally. It all starts with Pred finding that first blood. It's the trade. But the fact that Shotzi in the first 15 seconds is already in your spawn, he found that kill onto Hydra. Every single time Hydra tried to make a play, it was Shotzi on the other end taking care of him. And then once it turns into a 2v2, I have to get the perfect read that that is a decoy smoke over towards B. But when you really get all the information is when Dashi cranks that headset up a little bit because there was someone on the side of Subliners not rocking Culver's sneakers when they were working their way in towards top red. Dashi with the repinch up through the ladder, finds the free first kill, and then you know that guy is not going to lose that second gunfight. Optic Texas rally back after a great map number three, a really close map number four, but then a game five round 11 ice up. Now you add that one to the tally, you give New York their first loss in a game five, and now if you are Optic Texas, you are the number one seed going into the event.
What a way to finish off qualifiers and set us up for what is going to be a lot of anticipation surrounding Miami. Everything had been locked in except for the number one and the number two seed. Optic with the win will be looking like the potential favorite jumping into Miami. That'll do us for here on the casting side of things. Back to the desk to finish the day. Thank you so much, gentlemen, and congratulations to Optic Texas. You clutch up once again, but also can we just recognize the greatness of this matchup that is now two times they have matched up in online qualifiers. Both times we've gotten game five round 11. And it's been Optic Texas in the position to reverse sweep in that first time. It was New York Subliners going up 2-0 and then a handed control by Optic Texas into a very close game four and then a round 11 search and destroy. And this time it is Dashy with the play of the game getting those two players in the background 11. Yeah, you want to talk about superstar plays? Well, let's talk about it. Shotzi on Woo! the sub base hard point gets up and through, back around through the water, finds the break to stop the 60 points there from the subliners, and then they end up rotating and winning that game. Massive play out of him. And then in the search and destroy, the biggest round was round number nine. They hit a, they get first blooded, and then they have to wrap all the way back over towards bus. Shotzi takes the space, yeah. gets up top AC, finds skies, locates Kismet for the two piece, and finishes it off Hydra for the three. Just massive plays by a playmaker when you need him most. Another crazy thing about this series is all of Optic went negative. Every single one of them. That's Teamwork insane. reigns supreme. Teamwork reigns supreme, which is funny about Optic Texas because we talk about Shotzi being the playmaker, but his plays wouldn't work if his teammates didn't take the inch that he, that he gives them and make it into a mile and turn it into these giant plays that ends up clutching them these maps. I'm about to get a Shotzi tattoo. Okay. Where are you yeah, kid's it? a superstar. Where's it going? One of my cheeks. Okay. On your face? Yeah, I think I think on the right one it would look Face good. tats are the new rage, Allie. Ask Post Malone. Okay. But I yeah, man, uh, for, for Optic in New York, these are just two favorites going into the tournament, man. They both look incredible. New York as well, they had a massive opportunity, obviously, to win that sub base. And even in that last s &E, they got a lot of first bloods, man. Just yeah. Shotzi getting elusive. Shout out to Dashi as well. He contributed 10 and 8 in that final round. He got the final two kills and that was the difference maker but I hope this isn't the last time we see this matchup I need to see this on land next week down in Miami yes I completely agree with you that's easily a grand final matchup question for me nameless is Shotzi able to continue doing this it's your scuff play of the game from map number four the man turns the game on its head with some of the biggest plays we've seen yeah, yeah honestly this entire series sorry excuse me into that sub base the biggest moment for me was when Shotzi had the play to break that p5 and that's when they chained into P2 and got the biggest lead that we had seen in this entirety of this game. I 100% agree with that. And then there's also like a lot of disruption plays towards the end with subliners. You know, Optic like sort of overcommitted over towards uh, P3 and then they ended up spawning bad. So somebody had to make a huge play and this is the one I'm talking about. Shotzi gets through, finds a couple kills to spawn New York out and then they're able to go put them in a trap and secure this win. So it's like these little plays that are huge going forward in the maps. Absolutely. Optic is still number three overall on our standings, but they're number one in the major two qualifiers. And we have the number one seed Shotzi right now live in our monster winner spotlight Shotzi congratulations a big round 11 you guys didn't get it done last time you get your revenge tonight how did it feel uh definitely good and you know it's actually crazy is that it actually ended up the same way round 11 um yeah. this time it was in our favor so that it definitely it definitely feels good being on the winning side this time around Shotzi, congratulations on the win and the undefeated split. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen Optic Texas being the number one seed heading into a major. How are you guys feeling? And what's the first thing you're going to do when you land in Miami? AG said he's going to the beach. Uh, you know, he said he's going to fight a shark or something like that. Uh, <laughs> he, he thinks he, this guy thinks he's bulk. But anyways, uh, honestly, I actually have no idea. First thing to Miami, probably, probably try to find a iguana or something. I have no idea, to be honest. But... Uh, to your first question, yeah, honestly, it feels really good, obviously, that we went 7-0. Um, I feel like the biggest thing this stage we was, like, obviously our S&D, and that's one thing that I personally think that we improved on. So, uh, I mean, I'm just happy for the team to, uh, yeah, we just worked on things, and, yeah, we got it done. Uh, Shotzi, outside of New York, obviously, is a very close match. Who do you think is your toughest competition at this next major? Uh, toughest comp, I'd feel like honestly any of the top three. I feel like any given day, like any of those guys could win, obviously including us. So uh, yeah, I'd say the top three from Bays, Toronto, and uh, yeah, New York. 
chat's going wild still. Okay. Mad trash talk back and forth for all the Optic fans that will be cheering you on in person in Miami. What do you want to say to the supporters? Uh, shout out the supporters. Shout out the Green Wall, of course. Uh, hope you guys are there at Miami. If you guys want to, you know, get a picture and all that, I'm here. So, uh, yeah, I just can't wait for, for Miami. I can't repeat what they're saying in here, but I can tell you they're excited and so are we. Congratulations <laughs> on a strong finish. You guys are the king of clutch. I appreciate it. Later, boys. That's Optic Texas with another dub and Alley Cat. We had a fantastic day of we action. Did. How are your predictions? My predictions are actually pretty good, although I think we all kind of bombed out in that last one. But if we rewind to the beginning of the day, we all hit a big banger. Yeah, we also bombed out. Yeah, Let's we take also a look back out. at this one. Atlanta <laughs> versus LAG. We were so confident. We were saying DoorDash challenge in favor of Atlanta. After the first 20 minutes, Nameless is like, yo, bro, it might be LAG with <laughs> The now I have to dye my hair purple. Yeah, LAG, I mean, just turned the world on its axis today. These guys really came to play. I thought Estriel had the best series of his career so far. The man was feeling comfortable frying, and, you know, that's exactly what they need, just, like, to feel loose, man. Get out there, make some plays. You get some big search and destroy plays from Diamond Con, and now they can go into this next major feeling good, like, hey, we actually do deserve to be here. So they did some damage at Major 1, too, man. If they can get confident, maybe some can happen. Purple hair, don't, I do care, okay? I do care about my hair appointment that's happening tomorrow. By the way, Atlanta Faze, I'm sending you that bill for the company card. You think so, I'm spanning it? Yeah, actually, I think, yeah, I might be on MC. Uh, here's Allie's reaction okay. <laughs> to can't. the final game. <laughs> This whole round, I, our producer is just sitting next to me with his phone in my face, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so embarrassing. This is gonna be so embarrassing. And now I'm gonna feel like Ben J when I get my hair done tomorrow. <laughs> ben, with some great advice, take it from my experience. Don't take bets <laughs> involving your hair. You might regret it yeah, involving Ben's, face. Ben's never grew back, so. <laughs> <laughs> he did it! Sorry, guys. Uh, let's recap what happened. Boston's matchup, shall we? As we pivot over to Priestess, Slasher, Snoopy, and friends finally finding success. ASIM seemed to be that missing piece that Boston needed to compete with the top dogs. They played close, but they weren't able to pull off any major dubs. Against teams below them, they showed they definitely belong in the top eight. Absolutely. I cannot wait to see Boston on land. Obviously, we didn't get to see them really when it came to Major 1 and what they were capable of doing, but we did see a little bit from Slasher. So, seeing that they're now coming into it with a winning seed, I'm excited to see the underdogs that could be. And, of course, we got to hype up our boy Snoopy. Another fantastic match and the fans in Mexico were cheering his name. An awesome watch party hosted there by the breach. Yeah, and probably the best clutch of the day came from Snoopy in the plane between a rock and a hard place. So Is this I, it? I know they were going absolutely nuts. Wild stuff there in Mexico. You guys can join us at the next watch party. And of course, reminder, we are going to be in Miami for the biggest of all parties. And you can see the entire bracket now filled out officially. Optic versus Heretics. Round number one. Miami, what a way to start your host event. Yeah, I'm fortunate for your, uh, the Miami Heretics fans, but of course they have two opportunities because it is going to be a double bracket, but I'm kind of excited to see that phase versus like these men. Man, what side is harder, Optic Toronto side or Subliner phase side? Uh, I'll probably go with New York phase side. I just think uh, Breach can be a dark horse in this tournament. I also think New York versus Breach is a, is a banger of a matchup. For sure. Can can I make a weird call right now? Go ahead. LAG's finishing top six. What? Yeah, it's wild. That my hair purple. All right, let's go into our tickets. Of course, you all can pick up your tickets today. Scan that QR code. Come out, party with us in Florida. Why not? Next time you see us, we're going to be sunburned on the beach of Miami. So make sure you scan your QR code. To make sure you see it in person. Yeah, I don't and get burned. So. And of course, we've yeah, got the right. schedule ready for you. Too, Screenshot so. this one. Send it to all your friends because we are starting earlier than usual as majors kick off at 1.30 p.m. with Toronto Ultra versus the Vegas Legion. You know we're coming at you before that with the whole headquarters crew. An epic day of showdowns, all from winner's bracket round one. Going to have some bangers, man. We all love majors. I can't wait to get back in front of an audience. Final thoughts here as we wrap major two qualifiers. We're done with five weeks. That was a really long time. I, I didn't even realize it was five weeks until I'm writing in my notebooks. I'm like, major two, week one, two, three, five. Five we're already weeks. for land. I think yeah, we're, all ready, for we're all ready for it. I'm ready to party in Florida. We are going to see you there, Spring Breakers. Bring your sunscreen and something for the hangover. It's going to be a party in Florida. Can't wait to see you all on Thursday. Bye. Yeah. 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 AK, let's go. Let's go. Woo! 
Estoy cansado de lo falso si les puedo ser sincero Por eso mi enfoque es solamente en el dinero Ya no quiero más relajo, ya no más amigos Porque lo único que hicieron es desviarme del camino He retomado el control, tenía que tomar un receso Para averiguar lo que en verdad soy yo He retomado el control I'm family to think about, no I don't need no clout The game that y'all talking about I've been doing shit late night Just trying to look into something That'll get my kids paid Killing every verse I put my voice on The jokers come out here to play Guarantee y'all slept on me for too long I've been known to just rip shit Optimist in my prime Oh, Bron Bron in Miami I'm fired up bringing the heat It's time to show y'all the new vibe Show y'all this new wave This young cat is my kind Estoy cansado de lo falso Si les puedo ser sincero Por eso mi enfoque es solamente en el dinero Ya no quiero más relajo ya no más amigos porque lo único que hicieron es desviarme del camino He retomado el control, tenía que tomar un receso para averiguar lo que en verdad soy yo He retomado el control, el rey ha llegado, esta es la nueva era 